Dallas Cowboys Radio Network is on the air. On the air. Touchdown, Cowboys! With Sean Sharif, Bobby Belt, Kyle Yeomans, Aisha Morrison, and Brian Broaddus. Here we go. Draft night number one from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Thank you, announcer man, for introducing all of us. We're live on all the platforms, and we're about an hour away from pick number one. We got Kyle Yeomans, Brian brought us, and let's start off. By the way, congratulations, guys, all your hard work paying off to this point. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it's nice to be it. here. Yeah, the journey is uh, always interesting, and this is what makes it even. I guess even funner about it. Is that a word, funner? No, it's not. Funner. More fun. More fun? Yeah. But I'll say funner okay. because this is my show. <laughs> because you went to LSU? Yeah. yeah, because I went to LSU. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're wearing a bow tie. But, it, yeah, it's funner to me because, I, like I say, you do you do all this work and you get it to this point. And the fact that the Cowboys are picking really kind of late – but in all this chaos in front of you, and you're, and you're, I'm sure they're sitting in their war room right now, looking at their board and going, "How's this thing gonna fall?" Yeah. I mean, how? I mean, we've heard so many different names, so many different names as possibilities at 26, and I kind of feel like the Cowboys are in the same same boat right now, trying to figure out those names. And I think that's what has to do with the the quarterback situation, because right now you look at pick number one, you look at this first overall pick, it's Bryce Young to the Panthers. We can we can go ahead and. All Almost write that in Sharpie right now. But after that, anything can happen. What do the Texans do at two? Does somebody flip-flop with the Cardinals at three? And then every single pick after that is a domino effect. So from the second pick moving forward, anything can shape out. So that way, whenever the Cowboys come around at 26 or maybe even get into the early 20s, you start getting on the phone, you talk about going up and getting a guy that you feel like can make your football team better. That's what makes this draft so specifically an under, uh, just a, an unpredictable, unpredictable draft oh. and something to look at. Two words that aren't in the dictionary. So, Bobby, you're up next. Uh, but <laughs> I remember a year ago at this time, I was driving over here, and you all started talking about Tyler Smith out of the blue. Yeah. And I was like, what are they, where is this coming from? So, Bobby Bell, Cowboys insider, take us to the very latest as of a few hours ago. Are we getting some Tyler Smith-esque rumblings out there? The, I know a lot of people feel like we were today when you started seeing Jane Slater and Todd Archer start talking a lot about Sam Laporta, uh, the tight end for, from Purdue. I, I don't think that this is the same sort of discussion that Tyler Smith was in, in terms of where I, I think they there, there was a much better shot heading into that draft that Smith was going to be the pick than Laporta is. Laporta is an option, I think, based off of what happens in front of them, not knowing what's going to happen in front of them. I still think if you look at other tight ends in this draft, I think if Michael Mayer from Notre Dame is there, they yep. would take him over Laporta. I think if Dalton Kincaid from Utah was there, they would take him over Laporta. I, I just think Laporta is here as a hey, if we get really cleaned out in front of us, then we could take him here. Or even we could go back a little bit and we could look at taking him there, pick up some extra capital. Uh, but but I don't think that this is the same scenario that Tyler Smith was. A couple other names we've heard. We just mentioned the tight ends. Uh, I, I think we've all consistently heard Will McDonald from Iowa State mm -hmm. could be a guy that they'd be interested in. I think that that's a, a strong point. Todd Archer just recently mentioned uh, Mozzie Smith, the defensive tackle from Michigan. I think they like Mozzie Smith. I, I feel like Smith would be more like Laporta, where it'd be they're wiped out or they, they want to go back and that he would be a target if they went back a little bit. I don't know that 26 is, is where he would go. But you've got Darnell Wright, Tennessee. That's another one that I think they've shown a lot of interest in, the offensive lineman. But this is really... I think this is tough on these teams, too, where I think they have a better sense usually of what's happening in front of them than they do this year. Bobby, I you know, and, and Kyle and, and Sean, I... I'm looking at this, and I know when we started this process, you know, and people were sending me mock drafts, and I was going through them, and it, it was like Nolan Smith was always like a second round guy, mm -hmm. and now you're hearing about him in the in the top ten. You know, the same thing I, I think could be said, you know, for for Forbes, the corner from Mississippi State. I I, I just I know the Cowboys really like him. I think the thing about it is though, he went from being a guy that maybe could be a wipeout type of a player at 26 to okay now you're looking at the commanders you know when with at their pick so there there are guys like the nolan smith uh the, the emmanuel forbes guys like that 
that are now in a position where they were you were talking about them maybe late in the first, maybe second round guys, but are now kind of pushed up to the board. This is, I think, where now the media scouts are starting to catch up to mm-hmm. really where the scouts uh, around the league had these particular players. So you don't think it's a changing of the mind? It's just catching up info. I think I think mm-hmm. I think everybody's catching up information wise. And I, really I think do. to that point. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they think Will McDonald may not be there. Yeah. Sam Laporta and, and and these tight ends, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, may not be there at 26. Even Laporta might sneak in front of them because there are very there are teams that are very high on him earlier than the Cowboys pick. So if that's the case, then it goes to what you were just talking about. Who's falling? Because there's only a certain 25 picks in front that can be had. Who is falling? Is it Joey Porter Jr. from Penn State? That's a name that's been mentioned as a potential slide. Even Jackson Smith and Jigba, who had the 10-yard split and is coming off of some health concerns, could he fall a little bit? Even I'm hearing today there's a Darnell Wright comp- or a compilation of, of injuries throughout his time at Tennessee. There might be a knee issue there. So I think there's things here that teams are looking at that are saying, okay, we have a better idea than the media does ahead of us. So we may not have the same kind of selection that we first anticipated whenever we're looking at these mock drafts and we're looking at these I, I would include I would include Darnell Wright from Tennessee into this mix too, the guys that sure. that everybody kind of thought like, oh, maybe he's a second round guy and now he's in the middle of the first round. Yep. You know, you start to uh, you know, Green Bay talking to them, they're looking at offensive tackle. Maybe it's talking about, whoa, wouldn't that be just like Green Bay now that Aaron Rodgers has gone to draft a wide receiver? Sure, they could take Jackson Smith and Jigba at that spot, but you know, it sounds like to me that Broderick Jones is the guy that they're really kind of holding on up there. So, you know, Wright, Jones, I mean, Wright's now put himself, the more that people have watched the tape, he's put himself in the conversation with the other top tackles. So you guys just ripped off a bunch of names. Stephen Jones said 15 to 18 first round grades. Is this an instance in a case right now of just sit back and if all these guys are, you know, equal level, we just sit back and wait for the one to fall to us? Unless you have that one leftover first round grade that you think about moving up for. It sounds like. You know, you you sit back and wait at this point because a lot of people are not talking about trading up with them at 26. It would have to take one of those those first round grades. And I'm hearing also 11 to 14 might be more of the number. It's a little bit lower than in years past. And so if there are 11 to 14 names that they feel like are first round caliber players, then go up and make a pick and maybe trade up. But if those 14 to those 11 to 14 names aren't there, then, yeah. Why not? There's a ton of names there that we just rattled off that you would feel very comfortable with making the pick at 26. goes back to what we've talked about in the past. When you're picking at 26, a lot of times you're picking your first players at, with second-round grades. Media scouts, if they take Laporta tonight, if they take him from Iowa, there are going to be people that are saying that's a reach. Yeah. But you know, there were the same people, and you were talking about earlier with Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith on a lot of on a lot of media scouts boards was probably somewhere between 70 and 75 on the stack. Great yeah. point. You know, and so all of a sudden it's like you take Laporta who is 60 on my board, then it's like, you know what? They deserve the benefit of the doubt because they have taken players. Like they have taken Sam Williams and they've taken uh, you know Tyler Smith and guys like that. Travis that might, Frederick. Yeah, that might have third round grades, and all of a sudden they end up to be really good plug and play players. Yeah, they, like I mean, pretty consistently. I was talking about that this week on Twitter. Is that they have, regardless of how fans or anybody else feels about how this night goes, whether you love the pick, you hate the pick, you feel whatever about the pick. Pretty consistently, regardless of the reaction, the Cowboys have in the last decade been shown to be right about what they do. And so it's one of those things where give it a chance to play out, give their evaluation a chance to play out because they've earned the benefit of the doubt at this point. This staff has earned the benefit of the doubt. David Hellman tweeted this yesterday. This is Will McClay's 10th draft in taking over. Of the eight picks they've made in the first round, six have been named all pro. Mm. That's not including Tyler Smith, who's played – one year. Right. So that's a round of applause and benefit of the doubt for yeah. the guy running this thing. Most all pro draft picks since 2010, the Cowboys and the 49ers. Most all pro selections by draft in players since 2010. Kansas City's on top with 17. Dallas is one behind at 16. So, yes, 
they were right up there with any other the any of the other big names of these draft and develop organizations. They they've earned that right. They've earned that confidence. I think they're going to need to get a little lucky tonight, though. You know, if they're if one of those fourteen players, I I, th- I think it's going to be it's going to have to be some luck, because I kind of feel like we all have the same potentially fourteen players. Do you guys all have fourteen first round grades? I have twenty. We have more. I've got twenty one. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's that's you know, but that's it, like I could say I've I've got two running backs. You know, same. I don't know if every I don't know if every board has Gibbs from Alabama in the first round. I do. You know, the quarterbacks, Do, do maybe these teams always think, oh, there's only really one first-round quarterback or two first-round quarterbacks. You know, some boards might have four quarterbacks, you know, as being. They might have Richardson up there in that mix. I personally don't. You know, the wide receivers, let, let's, let me be honest. If you found a way to sort the wide receivers, I don't think anybody in this room has the same four wide receivers. And I will challenge teams – to present their four wide yeah. receivers because I think there's teams like I say the Giants ahead of you and talking to people at the Giants they're they're looking for a receiver and and they're thinking that you know they've got Flowers up there you know Zay Flowers. I don't have first round grade on Zay Flowers mm-hmm. but that's what I'm saying Te- some teams might the real challenge tonight well I think the Cowboys are going to have to get a little bit fortunate you know that Jerry Jones tonight after this first round can stand up and said oh, we got our guy who we had a first-round grade on. Did They said that last year. Do you think they got lucky last year with Tyler Smith specifically? I think that they had they had Tyler Smith absolutely right. Mm-hmm. But I had my, myself, I had Tyler Smith at, at 72. Yeah, I had him in the 50s. And, and they had him, you know, they had him on their board, what, at 13, 14, Bobby? 16. Something? Yeah, 16. And I'm they so, were right. Yeah, and they were right. Sean Shreve, Kyle Yeomans, Brian brought us. Bobby, who do you know that they like in this class or amongst these options tonight? Like in their range of twenty six, not just generally just who they, that they, they like. like. Just I, like give, us, I, give us some dreaming. So, so, somebody who is not going to be there, just flat out. And I know it was fun to dream about it forever. Somebody who's not going to be there that I think they absolutely would take if he felt them is Bijan Robinson. Don't say the that. Like, he's not going. He's going to be there. Bijan Robinson. We're going to manifest it. Bijan Robinson's not getting out of the uh, top ten fair. tonight. I don't think. Uh, that's Ooh. fair. And okay. so Robinson is a guy that I think they would absolutely take if he fell to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the the names that we've talked about a lot at tight end. Michael Mayer and Dalton Kincaid. I think they think really highly of those guys. Can I ask you, Bobby, who do you think they have higher between the two? If Mayer and and Kincaid were on the board together, do you think they hand in the card of Kincaid? I think so. I think so, yeah. I think Kincaid's probably higher for them. Um, But I – and see, that's the thing is that when we talked about Laporta, I think Laporta, while they like him, I do think there's some space there. Between Laporta and then Mayor and Kincaid. But sure. Can I can I throw a wrench into it? Please do. What happens if Laporta is higher on their board? What what happens? Because then you well, draft they take, him. They you take, take him, him right? Take him. Yeah, but that's board. what I'm saying. You yeah. need a tight end. You well, went and got why one last year. That's why he's been brought up. I think that's he why is we're higher. talking. Yeah. This, that's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. I think he is higher on their board, then? which is shocking than Dalton Kincaid and Michael Mayer. Oh, I think he is higher than both of those guys. Where? Now I don't know that confirmed. This is just off of conversations. I haven't seen the board, of course. I wish I did. That'd be Jerry nice. will show it to you at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. We'll get yeah, it just tonight, wait until right? like ten forty five yeah, tonight. We'll, find we'll see it. it. Guys, but look, zoom in. I don't I don't zoom think it's it, it goes back to what we were saying right off the top. And Brian, you it's said about it. the it's about the media scouts as opposed Catching to the team up scouts. informationally. Yeah. I think yeah. I think there's a chance a chance. I don't want to discredit discredit anything that's right. that's said throughout the media. I think there's a chance Laporta is higher. Bobby, really anyone do. else you know that they just love tonight that's gonna get picked? Uh, I mean, I think that they are big fans of Darnell Wright, the tackle yeah. at, at Tennessee. I think they, like the, the personnel department, as well as your defensive coordinator, are big fans of Will McDonald, uh, the defensive end from Iowa State. I, I think they think really highly of him. And, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they would love to get uh, some of these guys to fall down the board to them. I'm sure, like, Christian Gonzalez would be great to them, and he's he's probably going to go in the top 10 or, or 10 to 12 or whatever else. There are guys ahead of them that I think will go. But in terms of the guys that will be – right around that area it's these tight ends it's will mcdonald it's darnell wright the tackle from tennessee there could be somebody here that they're just completely throwing misdirection at us maybe a name pops up here at the end and we're just like oh okay here we go here's a name we weren't even thinking about and so I, i think that part of the part of this feels like total misdirection from the cowboys i think for some people Part of it is also I think they are just as unsure about what's going to happen in front of them, and so they don't know necessarily 
where are we going to be able to zero in on somebody? And they, they can't anticipate that. But there's two types of unsure. It's like, no matter what, I know I have an option. It's like when you pick a fantasy yep. and you're at three and you're like, there's really three players, right? I'm going to feel good no matter what. I'm going to feel good. Or there's panic and freak out that the board is going to dry up on us. Which one do you think that is, Kyle, more so tonight with the depth in the round? I think they they like their options. I think no matter what, at 26, they're going to have somebody there that they feel good about, which I think is is encouraging because either way, you're going to take, take a step back if you want to trade back because you have multiple options. That's on the table. I don't think they're going to dry up as uh, as you get into the latter parts of the first round. I don't think you're going to get to a spot where this war room is going to look at each other and say, all right, we're, we're out of options. What do we do from here? I think they've got names. All right. One of my favorite things about tonight, my favorite broadcasting night of the year, all the rumors, all the buzz, all the trades, all the noise, all the hype. Let's catch you up on all of that. Lamar Jackson got paid. Mm. Let's look at the top of the board as well. And Showtime with Goodell is, is about 45 minutes away. We're just getting started. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. All right, guys. Uh, are you looking at your phone for something important? I just, you know, at this time, at this time of the day, you just keep looking at your phone. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I, I, I he I, gave Bobby a look there. No, I, 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 the thing that's interesting to me right now, and I, and I think what Kyle said is really important. That do they have? I, I want to focus something on. And, and if you look at Daniel Jeremiah's draft from uh, yesterday. And the fact that they, everybody was talking about uh, a Musgrave, the tight end from Oregon State, as being – there's p- people mock drafting. If you look at Daniel Jeremiah's grades, his top 150, he's got Washington, the tight end from Georgia, above Musgrave. Darnell Washington. Darnell Washington. And, but he picked, he picked for the Cowboys – Musgrave over Washington. Do you think he told he told Haley Sutton yeah, he did. Uh, in Kansas City told her uh, yesterday that that he thinks Musgrave would be playing. I I do think that the three tight ends we've talked about so far today, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, Sam Laporta. I think those are all much more likely than Luke Musgrave is for them. Just you, personally, you like Musgrave? I love a lot, I love a lot. Musgrave. I, I think Musgrave's my second tight end. He's right there with Kincaid for yeah. me. But I I just I don't think that for them. I think those other three tight ends are or more names. I think that that's probably a knowledge from Daniel and from Todd McShay too, sure. who mocked him here. I think that's an understanding that they probably like him. They, they, they think he's a good player and it's DJ probably just trying to pair here's need with player. I, I know they, they kind of like, and, and it's just, there, there's something missing there because I think there are different tight ends that would be, they'd be in favor. Who of. would you think based off of those names, Darnell Washington out of Georgia and then Luke Musgrave from Oregon state, out of those two guys, who do you think they would value higher? Do you think the size of of a Washington and the unique, the unicorn sort of skill set he brings to the table would be enough to overtake a Musgrave? Then, and this might be a second round conversation. Right. This might not be twenty six. Right. Uh, see, I just when you hear, especially Stephen earlier this week talking about complete tight ends and like blocking and and other things like that. That's not Musgrave's game. And and, and like, I mean, there are some people who think. Washington's frame and his ability as a blocker is enough that like, oh, he might be Jason Peters one day. He might be a tackle. Yeah, like, I mean, oh, that, yeah. that's something that people have chatted about. And so there are those aspects of it that make me say they would be interested in Washington. But I just think Musgrave is, is so when you hear when I go back to what Jerry said on the bus in Indy, which was, boy, the Travis Kelsey mismatch and what you can get there. That sounds more like. Musgrave to me than it does Washington in terms of like that. being polished and ready to be that type of a guy. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I wonder I wonder if there's any injury history with Laporta or not. And I probably need to get on the phone right now. And there think, is with Musgrave. Yeah, there is with Musgrave, but I wonder if there's an injury history with Laporta let's, let's, that we need to figure out about. I'd like to hear y'all's because there's a lot of tight ends to keep track of. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to hear y'all's top four or five tight ends and just a sentence to go ahead and preview their games because we're talking about the new school tight end, yeah. right? Going down the field, your explosive tight end. We've had these Meyer, Jason Witten comparisons. How much is blocking going to be valued? 
Uh, you got something here, Brian? No, I was just saying that we're going back. Ten here. seconds. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's let's get ready to go down your tight end boards, uh, and then let's get caught up on what else is going on uh, around the rest of the draft at the very, very top. Oh, he said 30 seconds. That's what happens when I trust brought us to do the radio technique <laughs> stuff. You know? I just heard uh, we're going back. <laughs> we're about to. Here we go. It's the 2023 NFL Draft with Sean Sharif, Brian Broadus, Bobby Belt, and Kyle Yeomans from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, brought to you by Miller Lite. All right, let's kind of, uh, we covered the Cowboys in the first segment. We'll get back to them coming up in about 20 minutes. Summarize for me, Kyle, what this draft is about in terms of strengths and weaknesses. This 2023 class is defined to you how? Uh, by deep positional groups at different spots because you have a deep wide receiver class not a top heavy wide receiver class you don't have those those three or four wide receivers that are destined to go in the top 15 you have some names with jackson smith and jigba jordan addison quinton johnston zay flowers that could certainly go in the first round but it's not the locks that you've had in the past but then you look at tight end you have the top heavy and you have a, a little bit of depth there. Same thing with corner. There's a lot of corners that these teams really like up at the top. Christian Gonzalez from Oregon, who played his high school ball at the Colony just down the street. Uh, you've got linebacker that's not very top heavy. Edge, that's got a couple of guys. You've got Tyree Wilson, Nolan Smith at the top. Lucas Van Ness, he's kind of a question mark, too. I, I think there are specific positions along the way where you look at it and you say, okay, that's a complete draft class at this position. But then you look to its counterparts, and you're going to say, okay, there's holes here. There's holes in the draft where you won't find a starting caliber offensive lineman after pick 20 until pick 40, or at least it seems that way. There's just a little bit of holes, Swiss cheese like that here and there throughout different positions in the draft class. All right, Broadus, you've been calling uh, your gang of seven and GMs and all your buddies over uh, the last few months. Let's just start at the top. Well, we, I guess you can go at Bryce Young if you want with Carolina. But everyone thinks, most people think the draft is going to start at two with the Texans. So Carolina, Houston, Arizona, what are you hearing? What are you thinking? Well, I, I, to me, the, the big question is what's going to happen with Houston at two. Mm -hmm. And that's the, if you believe the guys like, uh, you know, the Lance Erlines and the John McClains and guys like that that cover the team. The problem with the Houston Texans is that, and they are a big, big believer, and it's the, really the coaching staff that's the believer. We've uh, With D'Amico Ryans being the new head coach uh, with the Texans, he brought several assistants on the offensive side of the ball from San Francisco. Mm. San Francisco is a big S2 testing team. And all of a sudden, no, we're, we started to hear the last couple of weeks about the situation at, at, at quarterback with Stroud, with C.J. Stroud. And so it wasn't so much a slam dunk about Stroud being the second pick of this draft yeah. because of the low, uh, the, low, the low test results from him. So here you have people within the Texans organization, maybe not so much the general manager, uh, you know, Nick Cesario over there, but the coaching staff. You know, the offensive coaches are like, wait a minute, we believe in this S2 stuff. How, why are we going to take a player with a low S2 uh, score right. at, at the second overall pick? Why don't we back up and try? So I think that's the issue right now. Will Nick Cesario, the general manager at Houston, tell the coaching staff, hey, I've got this handled. You guys stay over there, and I'm going to pick the quarterback I want. And so that's, I think, the problem that's going on in Houston right now. Now, we'll see what happens in Arizona. Brand new general manager, brand new coach. You got the ownerships kind of like he's getting sued for harassments and stuff. There's a lot of things going on that, that, that Arizona has to pull this draft together. I think they want to blow the hatches and go. I think they want to get out of there if they can. But who is willing to come there? It seems like the team. Tennessee seems like it. Early in this campaign, it appeared 
that the that the uh, Vegas Raiders were a team that were interested in dancing up there. Yeah. So there's a lot going on at pick two and pick three right now. And then, Bobby, you take it to the Colts at four. A lot of Will Levis talk there. Seattle. Uh, a lot of people today, all their mocks had Jalen Carter five to Seattle. We know that that regime is not afraid to take risks no. and take gambles. Uh, and then the Detroit Lions at number six. Yeah, I, I think that the Levis chatter has gotten really strong. So it's to the point where if as long as Houston doesn't bail out or, or somebody doesn't bail out and come up and get a quarterback, I think Levis makes a lot of sense uh, to uh, the Colts. Now with Seattle is there. That what, is that what Reddit had to say? Yeah, that is Reddit. Reddit, <laughs> man, they're out here breaking all the stories. Hey, about I, Chat GP, GPT, what is that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the what AI? the AI's written up. We'll, we'll have to ask them for their mock draft F- later. Forty years on Earth, and I still can't figure out how to read a Reddit message board. And Bobby's like, Reddit is, I'm telling you, the power of it. And here they are changing Vegas odds for the number two or number off one. Off of pick. Reddit? Off of Reddit? No, that's yeah. what moved the line on Levis. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was a that's Reddit post. Yeah. So I think Levis. I'm not a Reddit guy. I, I think Levis four to Indianapolis makes a lot of sense. I know there's been a lot of talk about Carter to Seattle. There's also been a lot of chatter if you talk to people around the league that like Seattle does like Anthony Richardson. Ooh. The the Florida quarterback. And now they have two picks here. Another gamble. Do they think they could go up? Do they think they could go back? I mean, it just depends on how they want to use that. But I, I think Richardson could at least be a consideration there at five. Uh, and then I think Detroit, there's been a lot of chatter about them going and grabbing. They, they had a lot of success last year uh, with their third round pick, Kirby Joseph, the safety out of Illinois. There's been a lot of talk about them going and snagging uh, Devin Witherspoon, his teammate at Illinois, to play corner, and I think that that would make a lot of sense for them there. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of projection of Carter to to Detroit throughout this process. Not every mock. I mean, like you said, Seattle's been a lot of it. I wonder if just the no nonsense way that Dan Campbell is, if he would put up with the Carter type of attitude even or, go or, through it yeah would he do it or would he instead look at it from the angle of i get the most out of people i can fix this guy and i get the number one talent and player in the draft at six possibly yeah. i mean that's he was number one on everyone's board throughout much yeah. of this process no jalen carter's a, a dog i mean and not to to make a, a bulldog, a, a bulldog oh. pun yeah but he is he's a, he's one of the top players he's number two on my board uh overall and i know he's number one on brian's i believe yeah. he's number one on bobby's two. and you're number not, two yeah so and your number one is uh bryce young bryce young. yeah bryce young's number one on mine i think the thing with Detroit, too, are they one of those teams that you could see them pulling the parachute and getting out if a team wants to come up? Let's say Anthony Richardson makes it past five, and there's a quarterback sitting on the board at six. Could you see Detroit, a team that nearly made the playoffs last year, feel like they have a core nucleus of young talent, take a couple extra picks and try and go up or get out of there for a team that wants to go up there? I don't think it's out of the equation. I mean, there, there's a lot of just interesting in general about the fact that you've got three of the teams in the top six that have another pick in the top 20. Yeah. Like Houston's mm. got 12, Detroit's got 18, Seattle's got 20. It just opens up for a lot of possibilities of movement. And then when you include Philadelphia in the top 10, how they've got that pick at the back end of the, the first, it just opens up to And I think that's part of this uncertainty that we've been talking about is the fact that we don't know what kind of movement's going to happen ahead of teams. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah yesterday in his mock draft, that he, threw out, he had Houston moving up from 12 to then pick at three and get back-to-back picks on two and three. Yeah. And so that they could take the quarterback and the defensive player that they wanted. That'd be fun. And so that, that'd be great. I'd love <laughs> it. We, we, could, we could throw the whole thing into chaos. But I think that's the thing is that you don't know how some of these trades are going to play out. You don't know how much smoke screening there's been. It's just it's completely unpredictable. And then brought us to round out the top ten. You're going to have the Raiders picking at seven. Yeah. The Falcons at eight. A lot of Bijan talk here with Atlanta and Chicago picking at number nine. And then Filthy at ten. Mm. Yeah, I think I think Philadelphia. I mean Philly. Yeah, I think Philly's sitting in a really good spot. To be honest with you guys, I, I, I you know they're they're in that they're in that mode right now. Where they're they're clearly with Howie's background, it's about offensive lines, it's about defensive line. You know, me personally, I am not a huge Lucas Van Ness fan. The uh, the defensive end, the edge from Iowa, not a huge fan. I would be okay if Philadelphia took him at ten. I'd be I would I would feel much better about Van Ness ending up playing for the Eagles than I would Nolan Smith playing there. If Nolan Smith ends up with Philadelphia at 10, and Nolan Smith is a guy that I mentioned earlier, 
and all the mock drafts. We first started this journey even before he uh, before the combine. He was always a second round guy, second round guy, second round guy. Well, now he's potentially going to be a top ten guy. The workout, the film, and all that. He's the twenty first best player on my board. My fear would be that he ends up in Philadelphia. Lucas Van Ness is the 41st player on my board. I would feel much better from a standpoint of, of him ending up there. Nothing really huge against Van Ness. I just think Nolan Smith's a bu- much better player. You think the NFL is higher on Van Ness than, than media I talked to are? I talked to a guy, one of my gang of seven guys, mm-hmm. and he made me actually feel good about Lucas Van Ness. Your thought. And then I talk I talked to the next guy and he made me feel absolutely terrible about Lucas Van Ness. <laughs> so that's the way I think that the, this is going. I think there's a lot of players this way. I, I Murphy, the kid from Clemson, you know? I mean, th- there's to me that's a top 14 player on my board and I'm thinking about him being past Dallas at 26. You know, the people talking about picking him, you know, 28, 29, somewhere around there. So, I, man, I, again, the, the swings on some of these players, I think, is uh, is really, really huge. And I think that's where Philadelphia is going to benefit, right? Just sitting there watching what happens in front of them, the fireworks that might happen, these teams moving up and down. And then at some point at 10, they're going to sit there and they're going to pick a really good player. There, there's going to be a player there. That they're going to really like. I mean, there's or they talk. can move. They I mean, could. this is the you Carson. Can package those two together. This is the Carson Wentz pick, right? You're sitting there at 31 as well. Yeah. We know Howie Roseman is not afraid. We know Ooh. he's not scared. If they were going to no. package picks, who would they go get? Are they going to go get a Jalen Carter? Are they going to go get a Nolan Smith or a Tyree Wilson? I think they're nervous about Atlanta potentially drafting Nolan Smith. Wow. I think they are. And I mean, Atlanta. Peter King said that Philly loves Nolan Smith. See, the thing about it is, when Howie, the one thing, when he sees value in a draft, he's going to move. He's not going to sit there and hope for the best. If somehow, some way that they took Nolan Smith at 10 and B, and B. John Robinson somehow gets to Dallas near 26, he is going to get on the phone with everybody ahead of Dallas. And if he really thinks that much about, yeah. He thinks that much yeah. about him. Boom. I mean, I think he'll. I think he'll go make a deal. What do y'all think about the Bijan Philly talk at ten? Forget twenty six. I don't like it. Of course, I don't like it. He's the he's a number five player, number top ten player on my board. I think he's probably a top ten player on their board too. I would hate to play against Bijan Robinson for years to come. I think that's something to keep in mind when they get to ten. He very well could be there unless, like you said, there's a lot of buzz with him possibly going to Atlanta at 8. Atlanta likes him a lot. That would be interesting. I would love that. Let's get him out of the way. I that, know that, you end up playing him, though. That, that's probably – Well, Atlanta's done it before. They took yeah. a tight end, what, top five last year, right? Yeah, uh, three years ago. Pits, Pits. 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 Two, yeah, years. Two, two years two, ago. Two years ago. Yeah. See, they're not afraid to do something like that. They, people say, oh, well, why would you take a tight end in the top five? You might take that kid from Georgia next year in the top five. But, but, I'm, but I'm saying right now, that's a team that really is not looking at the metrics of, well, you're not going to get anything out of this guy. Why take a running back that high? You know, they, they, they really don't care what you think about that. They really don't. I rely on you guys, obviously, for all the scouting and, and the player info, but – the thing that this draft encapsulates the most to me is the total unpredictability starting it too. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like it's totally unknown. Complete and that's exciting. Uh, because you're gonna get surprises, you're gonna get deals, but it feels like those mock drafts, I'm gonna predict this year the mock drafts done are the most inaccurate in the last five years. That's what it feels like to me in terms of what's going to happen. I don't think anybody feels good other than after the first pick. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, Which I is awesome for, for me. Yeah. <laughs> it, no, and that's the thing. I think it's going to – I mean, somebody's will be right because that's the thing is that it's like there's no two mock drafts that are even the same. Nobody's built any consensus. Nobody is putting up the same picks after pick number one. Uh, I mean, you've got people who are saying – Tyree Wilson could go second. Tyree Wilson could go ninth. You've got C.J. Stroud going second. C.J. Stroud falling towards the back end of the top ten. You've got all these different things that are – and that's just in the top ten. The top ten is not usually the one that we have all this trouble trying to nail down what's going to happen. And so, yeah, I mean, that's something where somebody may be right, but that's only because we're literally getting – it's like the bracket challenge every year on ESPN. It's like there's a million different combinations being submitted, so maybe somebody will get close, but – it's there's nothing that's alike. How'd you do on your bracket this year? 
Uh, I didn't finish last in, on our show. That's there all that go. matters to me. That's good. That's right. Uh, Very nice. Who I, finished last? Uh, the loudest one. Well, I uh, might be the loudest the one. The basketball expert. The basketball expert. <laughs> the college basketball expert, Ralph James. All right. I want to show off y'all's work. I want. I want to go up and down y'all's boards when we return. We are getting closer to the first pick coming from the Carolina Panthers. Uh, let's see. Based upon the different positions you want the Cowboys to take, who these guys say would be those best selections. Let's go up and down the boards with all the draft homework that has been done. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. All right, we were we were just talking about the Eagles, and of course Jalen Hurts got paid. Bobby, the news broke right before we came in here. Lamar Jackson got his new deal. Let's go through the reality. Well, I guess we don't know the true reality of all these numbers, but what does it look like for Lamar, who's staying in Baltimore? Yeah, look, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll be professional here because we're on DallasCowboys.com, so I won't do my normal bit of talking about that's a lot of money for a running back. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, no, Lamar Jackson does get his deal done, and it's, it's funny. All the reports that have been out there today were that the Jalen Hurts deal getting done is what kind of spurred this and finally gave them the framework for it. Uh, but it's five years, two hundred sixty million dollars. Uh, it's close to one hundred ninety million in total guarantees. Don't have all the structure yet, just like the Jalen Hurts one took a couple days. Uh, but fifty two million annually. So basically, it's just all right. We're going to go just above Jalen Hurts, and it's this continued market reset at quarterback. Uh, but I mean, this is uh, ultimately I'm kind of surprised this is where it got done. Because with Lamar, like it felt like I know we talked about uh, just locally here in Dallas on the show, we talked about how it was having that as an NBA comparison, starting to have that Kawhi Leonard feel to it in San Antonio, where it's like, man, this seems like hurt feelings. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know the the chatter out in Indy about that deal is like there was a lot At of uncertainty. Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty yeah. with people about we don't know that this is gonna this is real. This might not get finished there's a lot of frustration here and a lot of angst um but ultimately getting it done and uh yeah the the new highest paid quarterback in the nfl and the deal got done but does this say that that baltimore was the first one to buckle is it because going into the draft they wanted i think to they know. had the framework they wanted it. I think know. the framework, I think that's I think the the hurt steal I think did it for them. Yeah. That gave them the idea like okay, we're not wrong about this. We held our ground the best we can. The the Jackson did a great job of holding his ground. You saw what happened when he wasn't part of the lineup. Yeah. They weren't the same team. And so uh, I think that that uh, that gave them the framework to make this thing work. What is this going to mean for the decision makers in this building hmm. when it comes to number 4 moving forward? Bobby <sighs> <laughs> ass i don't know I, look i mean I, there, there's isn't the obvious and only answer is look, look matched or jumped okay that's the world of paying quarterbacks in, in theory but i mean here's the thing again we don't have the framework of of the lamar deal yet mm -hmm. it, it's usually what gets reported obviously is here's the five years here's the raw amount here's the guaranteed money and it's always so much deeper than that i know there are a lot of teams and a lot of agents that view the value of the deal, the the true measure of how rich is this new contract, how do, is new cash flow in the first three years of a deal, guaranteed new cash flow in the first three years of a deal, or uh, new cash as a percentage of the cap. And that there's just different ways that they break that. We all see it on the surface level. A lot of times these agents and teams dive into it in a much different way, and that's just a number for the public, basically, and a, a number for reporting of, look at this, I'm the highest paid guy, when in reality, when you break it down, it's like, oh, these are all very similar deals. Um, the, the guaranteed money that Deshaun Watson got, for instance, is very similar to the first three-year structure of what Jalen Hurts got is that it's pretty much the same. It's fully guaranteed about $45, $46 million annually for those first few years. So it's a piece of the pie as opposed to a flat number. Is, is a that lot of times, of yeah. A, a lot of times that that's what at. it is. And so it just it, it depends on what is Todd France, the agent for Dak Prescott, what is his measure of this is what it needs like to be the richest? What is the Cowboys' measure of this is what is fair compensation based off of what other guys around the league are getting? And if there's disagreement there, how does that split it up? But I do think the likeliest end game is they get an extension done at some point. I don't think it's tomorrow or anything. It may be something where we're deep into the summer. But I do think they get an extension done because I just think it makes the most financial sense for them. Brought us how much thought have you put into the Cowboys drafting a quarterback this weekend, I have. I've actually have, and I. This is one of the organizations that 
their general manager is not going anywhere. This is the organization that I felt like would not pay a quarterback fifty million dollars. So I, I'm kind of one of those guys, but they will. I think that you know, but there, there's a couple. I, I know that Mike McCarthy is a big fan of Aiden O'Connell, the the quarterback from Purdue. But I think where they want to draft Aiden O'Connell is probably too early for them. So that's I think where you know that they'd like to get a guy like that. They'd like to maybe bring somebody in, but it's going to be probably not this weekend. All right, let's get ready to go through y'all's boards. You can take it by position or from the top on down as we get closer to the draft. Sean Sharif, Brian Broadus, Bobby Belt, and Kyle Yeomans from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Uh, on behalf of everyone that's been following you all, DallasCowboys.com with all the different draft shows, our local radio station, uh, thank you uh, for putting I really feel like Broadus, and I know you're going to be Mr. Humble about it, I wonder how many other cities and media markets have done this to where you just have a stable of training people to become scouts like what we've been privy to dallascowboys.com and what y'all do i don't know how many other local media markets do it and all the hours all the sweat all the information the guts that y'all put into commenting when people in the building here who are paid to do it are listening and evaluating and reacting to it Fantastic. I really think it was kind of revolutionary in terms of uh, radio and local media coverage. There's, there's a couple of people, actually, and this is not self-serving or anything like that. I'm not trying to you know, kiss any butt here or anything like that. But the Jones family allowed you – know, when we started the draft show 11, 12 years ago, they, they – they, and Derek Eagleton, we all you – know, Ed Cahill – there was an idea of how it needed to be done, and the Jones family allowed us to do it in the right way. They gave us access to tape. They gave us access not to reports or anything like that, but they let us go to the combines. They let us go to the Senior Bowl. They, you know, they, they made the effort to allow us to educate ourselves. And so, you know, yeah, it's not always been perfect because, yeah, there's a lot of people in the building that are probably going, you know, what are you doing? You know, I think the fact that I was a former scout, I think, helped things. Yeah. But everybody was really willing to step up and study and put their and, and put it all out there. You know, it's it's some everybody. A lot of guys had first jobs paying bills, but then they would stay and come by and visit. And we'd work till 11, 12 o'clock at night learning about these players. But a lot of this is because of what the Joneses did as a family to allow us the access to be able to study these players the way it needs to be studied. It's the Brian Broaddus School of Scouting. Yeah, that's what it is. And and you you've you've had such an impact on 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 people around not only the business that have been able to work with you and, and me being able to do this with you the last four years has been phenomenal, but on the listeners too, because you see it as much as we all see it at the same time, yeah. people are doing their own scouting work too, based off of our shows and based off of what's going on through, through yeah. Rodis's Twitter and Bobby's Twitter, Aisha's Twitter. There's so, so many different elements to it that it is people build their own boards. Yeah. I think that's, that's my favorite part about it is because Everybody has a different flavor of ice cream, but you at least know to go find that ice cream yourself, well, which is fun. The longer you, the longer you're involved in this, you know you're going to be wrong about guys, but you're going to be right. And yeah. it's the the, the 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 really the thing that's awesome about it is when people during the season remind you, like they're watching a game, the Dolphins are playing the Buccaneers, and they say, "Yeah, you guys on the draft show, you were talking about that Ali Marpet." You know, back in the day. Yeah. You were talking, boy, he's blocking his ass off today. You know, and then, so that's where you get the satisfaction of, because like I say, we're at a, really at a disadvantage because we don't get the medical information and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But the film watching and stuff, that's been a big, big all part right. of what Enough with all the getting. Good, <laughs> you <laughs> asked the question. I know. It's I just meant a 10 second compliment. Enough with all the pleasantries. Let's get down to business. Unveil your board. We got three days of this, bro. Well, <laughs> There's going to be a lot of time. Have I you figured out how much talking we do here? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, talk during the breaks, so too, don't you? Yeah, it's a lot of talking. Mm-hmm. A lot of talking. All right, let's unveil the board and all yeah. the homework that you've done. Start it however you want. If you want to go top three by positions, you want to go from number one all the way down, I, I go just, ahead. I've got my stack, and I think that's something I've always done, and I think this is what the Dallas Cowboys will do as their well. And, you know, if you if you look at – and, by the way, on 105.3, the fan, my I, I, they, I think they've got it up as my stack. They've got it up. 
But I went with Jalen Carter as one, the defensive tackle from uh, Georgia. Bryce Young, number two, uh, from Alabama. Bijan Robinson, number three. Will Anderson, number four. C.J. Stroud from uh, Ohio State is five. Peter Skaronski at number six. Tyree Wilson, number seven. Paris Johnson, number eight. I'm just doing my top ten here. Yeah. Uh, Joey Porter, number nine. And then Will Levis, number ten. And so, you know, but that's what that's what you want to do. You want to be able to put your stack or have how you would take these players because that's what the Cowboys are going to do. They're going to start pulling these tags as these names come off, and the stack is going to tell them who they're interested in doing. Yeah. Kyle, yours? Yeah, so I'll start with it's a lot of the same names in the first six, anyways, and then I got a wrench right at the end. Bryce Young is number one, Alabama. Jalen Carter, number two. CJ Stroud, number three. So I have Bryce Young and Stroud kind of bookending Carter there in the top three picks. Will Anderson, number four. Peter Skaronsky, number five. I like Christian Gonzalez a lot. He's my top corner. I have him at number six. Then it's B. John Robinson. Then Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. Paris Johnson Jr., the offensive tackle from Ohio State. And then here's the wrench in here. I really like Brian Branch from Alabama, oh. and I have him at number 10. I'm way higher on, mo- on, he, on Brian Branch than most people are, but I'll own that because I think he can play safety. He could be a starting corner. He could do whatever you want in that secondary, and I think he's going to be a baller. Aisha, you got any major surprises on your board? Oh, we got the mic? Is I think we me? got it. There, there we go. go. Hey, yeah, there you go. Okay, sounds good. That sounds better. Okay. Uh, so my wrench is I have, I don't have Will Levis in the first round. Okay. Oh! I don't either, actually. I'm wow! Right and I actually have Anthony Richardson at it, 10. At okay. 10? Okay. Yeah. There you go. At 10. Just because the traits and stuff. If he can figure out how to throw it to his left side, maybe you'll have some success out of him. <laughs> that is the nicest insult I've heard. If you can figure out a throw to one half of the field, maybe we can use you. Uh, no, it's a, it's an important part of what he needs to improve on, but with the traits and everything, yeah, I I don't know. I'm not super high on Will Levis. Bobby? Okay. Uh, my top ten, I've got uh, the the one that everybody gets upset about because of positional value, but I don't care. Just like in a vacuum, the best player in the draft is B. John Robinson. Yeah. He's he's the best player, so he's one. I've got Jalen Carter two, Will Anderson three, Bryce Young four, C.J. Stroud five, Tyree Wilson six, Peter Skaronsky seven, Christian Gonzalez eight, and then it's Broderick Jones nine and Paris Johnson Jr. at ten. Are these quarterbacks this high up, except for Will Levis with Aisha? Uh, are these quarterbacks this high up there? Because of their skill, their ability, or because of positional value and need? I think it's positional value added with ceiling. You you throw the ceiling and the potential from these guys in there, too. Because Will Levis has a rocket of an arm. He's got a cannon of an arm. But he has some accuracy issues. But he also threw from a dirty pocket quite a bit at Kentucky. And there were some some issues in terms of turnovers and decision-making and things like that that teams think that they can coach. Anthony Richardson is almost all a projection because there's the same thing, accuracy issues. He only completed 53% of his passes, but he's got a great arm. He's fantastically mobile. He can do everything with his legs that any quarterback has done in the past. But, man, those two guys, I'm not as high on those those guys as, as Aisha said a moment ago. I have them both in the second round, early second round. But I expect them to go top ten because of positional value and because of the the ceiling that both of them have. The 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 thing that I've learned about these quarterbacks, and it took me a long time to do this. I mean, been doing this since '92, and it's and I've missed on a lot of quarterbacks. I tend to look at the guys that have played the three or four years and have been a starter and started 35 games, started 38 games. I can't tell you how many times the one year starting quarterback has killed me. You know, yeah. like, and I, I go back to Paxton Lynch and how beautiful he looked playing football at, at Memphis. And he's like slinging it around. He looks good. He's mobile. Didn't play a lot of football. But you know what I didn't know about him? He hated football. Yeah. He didn't want to be the first one in. He was, a, he was, a, he was the first one out, last one in. You know, there's something about to me the Will Levises, just personally. And, you know, look, Anthony Richardson is a beautiful looking player. I mean, you can't draw him up any better than that, yeah. the way he physically looks. Maybe, not maybe, I'm dinging him because of the lack of playing experience is what I'm doing. Because I'm trying to think, okay, I'm going to get this quarterback. I'm going to take, take Will Levis. I'm going to take 
you know, Bryce Young, I'm watching him in these games, in these, you know, SEC games, and everything's on the line, and he's just, you know, and it's like nothing. It's But he's played in a lot of huge games. Yeah. And I'm thinking he is not going to fold when he gets into a pro game. He's not. And he's playing with pro players, pro offensive line, pro runner handing him the ball, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's where my new, if my quarterback, I tend to look at the guys that don't play very much and kind of go down with them as opposed to the guys that played a lot, three-year, four-year captains, and are moving up. You messy. You messy. I, uh, yeah, we've only known never, each other for five minutes. Listen, I can see it in your <laughs> eyes, man. You're literally looking at me like, what am I going to say? So my my thing, I think that's a relevant conversation. We've had it on the draft show a yeah. couple times, yeah. is um, especially with the amount of backup quarterbacks that ended up ha- having to play extended snaps this yeah. past year, you do maybe want a guy that does have more experience. But then when I look at what – what right now we do have an influx of mobile quarterbacks. Yeah. Why is that? I think a lot of it has to do with offensive line play yeah. and how difficult it is to get a steady offensive line that can pass block for you or whatever the case may be. But also, too, it's, it just feels like right now the mobile athletic quarterback, yeah. say what you want to say, <laughs> Lamar Jackson has come into the room, yeah. is something that is a value right now. And so for that reason, and we just talked about it, it's it's kind of the situation at hand, I think a Will Levis is going to have success. Yeah. It's just the fact that right now, I think that that mobile quarterback is something that teams are really very more towards, I, yeah. and that's a thing. I don't personally. think she's wrong about Richardson. The thing that the thing is, and I would have done the same damn thing. I would have said Will Levis. Well, maybe there's things he he's not he's not as athletic as, as Richard. No. He's tough. He's tough, and he you know the arm strength, the arm talent, and all that stuff. I'm just trying to I'm trying to limit my my bus factor because Mitch Trubisky was a one year starter, Trubisky right? Was a one-year guy. And what did I do? I Zach shoved Wilson. his I shoved his rear all the way up the board. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh Mitch Trubisky, he's he's accurate. You know? Yeah. He played one year and then you get him in Chicago, it's like, oh, okay, he looks okay. But the, look what look what Brock Purdy did like I don't know Brock Purdy is a seventh round guy. Yeah. But Brock Purdy, a four year starter at Iowa State, captain. You know, Iowa State was a top twenty five team because a Brock Purdy. Look at the guy that plays across the building in the career that he's had as yeah. opposed to his fourth-round grade. Yeah. I mean, Dak Prescott was the same way. Had a ton of experience yeah. True. coming out of Mississippi State. Tons of it. True. It, there's, there's an aspect of experience in high-level situations as for, for a quarterback specifically in college that's going to elevate your stock. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I, I, I take pause when I look at a guy and say, okay, one-year wonder, wonder at quarterback – bothers me far more than it says one-year wonder at a, a separate position, running back, wide receiver, tight end, whatever it may be. Well, and Brian, if Paxton Lynch gives you PTSD because of limited starting experience and questions about the work ethic, then I would guess you'd want to stay far, far away from Anthony Richardson. Because Anthony Richardson, it's limited starting experience. It's not a lot of polish, and people have questions like, does he love the work? Does he love the work? Does, is he because like I saw the son going to do a backflip after his at two hundred forty four pounds. I'm thinking <laughs> I might take him number one overall if he keeps doing backflips at two forty four. Like when we talk about the guy across the hall, like yeah. part of what the guy across the hall has done that gives him the career that he does is because he loves the work. Yeah, True. he loves it, and he's committed. And that's the question is that I had somebody tell me they said the question is, does Anthony Richardson not want to do the work or does Anthony Richardson not know how to do the work and he needs that guidance and the person I was talking to thought it was he just needed the guidance I think he needed the guidance like you say there's plenty of time there's plenty of time where you can like you know you watch him play against the against the Kentuckys and out doing Will Levis and out doing the guy at Utah you could see him you, you could see what exactly what she's talking about I think it's more difficult to evaluate than ever because now you Hell can yes. just throw an athlete. In. I didn't think Jalen Hurts could throw the football no. before last year. No. I watched him in, I believe it was the Tampa playoff game. I watched him in college. They're down 14 to nothing. They couldn't do anything offensively. Couldn't do anything offensively. And then you get a coach in there. You got something, Bobby? Yeah. The uh, Adam Schefter reporting yep. that the Eagles and Cardinals have settled a tampering investigation involving Jonathan Gannon being hired as that coach. The Eagles are trading pick 94 in this draft and the fifth round pick next year to the Cardinals for pick 66. Wow. As part of the tampering. They didn't got in trouble? Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they had to give them a, a, 
a bad trade. So this is Philly getting, getting punished. No, this is this is Philly getting Philly. 66 benefiting in, in exchange for a, th- a late third and a fifth oh, next year gosh. to get 66 this year. Oh, what a way to start. What a way to start off the night. Um, all right, so we have the entire squad. Glad that you're joining us. We're about to get the Carolina Panthers on the clock, and we're going to get this thing started. We have to get the annual introduction of Roger Goodell and that crowd reaction to him, and then we'll just keep working our way down to the Cowboys, how the board is going to play out for them, are there options to go ahead and move up for, and we're going to start this thing. All the hard work of the scouts in the room about to pay off, and then we'll get Carolina, Houston, and Arizona on the clock right here from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Merry Christmas. Y'all getting ready to get it going? Merry Christmas. Let's go. All right. Let's get ready to go ahead and do it. Will it be Bryce Young? What's going to happen at number two? How is the board going to fall and play out for the Cowboys? We're all about to find out. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. How about .com side? I love the .com side. I do too. Yeah, friends. So the, you, you, like the Levis thing, what was the thing that bothered you the most about Levis? I'm interested. I don't know. I I trust what you're saying there. I really do. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out these quarterbacks. I'm trying to limit my bust factors. Yeah. And I think experience now has something to do with the limits of bust factors. And then, But then at the same token, I would say that upside – is more like like we talked about yeah. is these guys are allowed to get better and some and some of these guys I think can get better I don't it's not that I don't think Will Levis is no I be just good was yeah or, or I mean I think his pocket presence is steady I mean I feel like he's a smart player I think his decision maker is, is decision yeah. making is good obviously he has the booming arm that yeah. people care about like he looks the part yeah. it's another he. He 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 looks the part as a quarterback, yeah. Yeah. and so I think it's easy to convince yourself that that's that's the guy, and he's the safer guy to take to take in that situation. And he's going to be successful. I, but know, what are the buts? I was waiting for the but. Dot, but dot, about dot. him, yeah. I'm looking at the relevancy of of what happen is happening in the NFL right now. Yeah, that's it. That's that's what I'm looking at. I'm not. I don't think. I'm not saying I don't think he can't be um, a starter and and be successful for yeah. you and be steady. It's I I personally just feel like what the league is right now, he fits, but for how long and how much success is he going to have? Maybe he played in another era, that he's more of like a 90s guy, stand there and throw the ball. I know that's probably way before we your just time. Talked but about, we just uh, <laughs> <that's funny. laughs> but we just that talked about it. That was a compliment to you. Right, that right, was right, a right, right, right. But we, we just talked about, y'all, like how – I mean, we over talking about tackles. We talking about most of these tackles possibly being converted to guards because there is a lack of guard in this draft. Like yeah. the offensive line feels like it's it's becoming um, it's it's a luxury. It's it really is a luxury, and to have depth on your offensive line, to have a good offensive line, is a luxury. And I think a lot of that has a lot to do with why mobile quarterbacks are kind of booking right now in the in the league. There's just so many different schools of thought. You got yeah. brought us, and then who, me. <laughs> yeah, no, but look, you have everyone has a fifty percent chance of being right. And a 50% chance of being wrong. That's a draft. You, you're talking about, Broadus is talking about the safe pick. You know, At that position, I am. Well, I, I, and that's but fair. It, but, that's but, it fair. Ta- but, it, but she's right in the, way, in the way she's putting it. Sometimes you need Pat Mahomes to well, win these damn games. Well, that's, the, <laughs> that's, you know? that's supposed to be the goal, right? Do I yeah. want to draft Alex Smith or do – yeah, we want to draft Pat Mahomes, but the goal to go ahead and find yeah. Pat Mahomes and not make the safe and steady pick. And now we have size where you still want the 6'4 quarterback, and now we're talking about Bryce Young and Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield. Uh, and then you're talking about the athleticism. Do you even want the pure pocket passer anymore versus Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson? I, there's there's I, sometimes I, when you can have a copycat league get you in trouble. Tracking. And then there are times whenever you can have a copycat league – actually set you up for success. I don't know. It that. happens all the time. Because everybody this year, what's going to be the big trend? They're going to want their Brock Purdy. They're going to want yeah. their late day three quarterback that's going to come they don't in want to bust. and start games. And they're going to yeah. be safe with it. Yeah. There's not that so, many of those, though. There and might be, though. Where? I mean, that's what I'm saying. 
it's going to show up. It'll just pop up there. It'll be there for us whenever we get around the, the latter right. parts of day three, and we're saying thank you for sticking around if you've stuck with us. I got a 5'10 long. quarterback as my second best player on my board. What if you hold him <laughs> hostage? What if what if a team takes him, takes him just to hold him hostage because somebody might need a quarterback later on? Yeah. I Teams mean, have been petty Shanahan, like that before. Shanahan did that with Cousins in the RG3 draft. Yep. Uh, he went ahead and took Third both round. of them. With all that Fourth said, round. Fourth round. Every, sorry, with all that said, all y'all feel great and fantastic about Bryce Young? Being the number one pick? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. no. As, oh, just in general? As, as legit. I think he's, yes. Yes, yes. he's legit. Okay. He's going to come in and he's going to be a what free. He's that, only short. What's that specification there that you that you just did? Which one? As a player? No, like I'm saying, like as a player, not as like the where pick. he's going to go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like as a player, yeah. Yeah. No, Bryce Young is the most, uh, by far the most advanced quarterback here he has the best eyes i think of anybody in this draft in terms of he knows how to like yeah. move defenders off i yeah. think he and cj stroud are right there in terms of how they're able to get through progressions yep. I, I think bryce young is absolutely the most pro ready could step in and go to a team like carolina carolina could be a playoff team next year with a quarterback like bryce got young. some guys yeah. yeah i like it the ability to improv he's he's fun to watch all right, we're about to get this thing officially going. I just want to hear how Kansas City welcomes Roger Goodell. Yeah. I just want to hear how the uh, commissioner. They just want a Super Bowl. They, they might be okay. You think they're going to boo them very well? They might loud? be okay. A little barbecue. Like, yay! All right. Let's get this thing officially on the clock. Sean Shreve, Aisha Morrison, Kyle Yeomans, Brian Broadus, and Bobby Belt from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the NFL draft on the Dallas Cowboys radio network and DallasCowboys.com. And as usual, every year, we got to see how the Chiefs fans welcome the commissioner, Roger Goodell, to the podium. Kyle thinks maybe they'll be in a nicer <laughs> mood because they just won the title. Maybe they're a little barbecue fat and happy. We got the war room up on all the different platforms on DallasCowboys.com. I, I love that. I love that daggone view. I love trying to analyze what's going on with phones ringing, who's talking, who's in the room, who's out of the room. When we see someone pop in here and put on a headset, you you never know, right, Broadus? What's That's it right. like? What's it like in there? Well, I'll tell you what. I think there's uh, this is the, the the calm aspect of things, and you know you're just kind of getting yourself prepped. You want to make sure that uh, you have all your notes ready. Uh, you see everybody lined up or around the table there, ready to go. Uh, you know, Will McClay, there's going to be – he's going to handle the phones uh, for the Cowboys. The pro directors are in there. The guy, guys, you know, they, 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 everybody that they need to know of information that they can quickly gather, like who who's needs this, who needs that. Where do you think they're going to go with this pick? There's a lot of guys in there that, and gals that have a lot of experience doing this. So they will be ready. They won't be caught short. But they have to, I think personally, they have to be a little bit leery of what's going on with Philadelphia behind them, too. You know, if in fact some players start to fall their direction, that maybe Philadelphia jumps up there, you always have to be on your toes and ready to handle those situations. There are very few instances in sports where it's as intriguing as an NFL war room. And you're lucky enough to have yeah. been in, in multiple war rooms. But, I mean, for me specifically, I would I don't know if I would pick another room to be more of a fly-on than, than a war room on draft night because of how much conversation and, and intrigue and possibility yeah. is on the board. I mean, even looking over there, you see, you see John Stephen Jones, who's, of course, the son of Stephen Jones, played quarterback at Arkansas, won two state titles at Highland Park. He's up there sitting there, and I'm sure he's learning valuable information too and having him as a part of that for, for what could come in the future. All of those little tiny things are just really cool to go back and look at because of the possibilities at hand. Are they going to be sitting back and chilling and drinking iced tea brought us to about 13, 14, 15, or are they going to be glued to 1 through 10, I think, even though they're picking at 26? Yeah, I think they're going to be glued, and that's the thing. You, you've got, it's, a, it's, a, it's a working environment in there. It'll be very quiet. There'll be some discussions you know, about you know, maybe the direction that uh, teams will go. If, there's, if their stack starts to show that maybe a player is sliding down to them, now they'll start working those phones and see if somebody might want to give their pickup. You might get a team. The only way I really think Dallas would go up in this draft is if, in fact, that they were that somebody be willing to bail out of there and give their pick up, and it might not cost them very much to do this. So you have to be alert 
of what's going on ahead of you and working those phones to see, hey, you're going to you know, call up, hey, Pittsburgh at 17, you're going to make this pick? Yeah, we're going to make it. Okay, thanks. Boom. You just, you just work the phones. Detroit, 18, you're going to make this pick? Yeah, we're going to make it. Okay, thanks. You just keep calling and kind of be, be, stay on top of things in case an opportunity comes where you can grab a player that you kind of like. Cowboys insider Bobby Belt is typing away on his phone right now. Bobby, reset us on all the latest. Uh, one year ago, Tyler Smith kind of came out of nowhere, and we're starting to hear some rumblings a couple of hours ago leading into tonight for the Cowboys. Yeah, the, the trendy name, of course, through all the reports, uh, Todd Archer, Jane Slater, two people who are very, very good at their jobs, is that uh, Sam Laporta, the tight end uh, from Purdue, is of, of big interest to the Cowboys. Uh, you, you get Again, it's it's reflective of how this draft is going right now that we're, we're getting some of the conflicting information. You get David Moore, who said just five minutes ago, had tweeted out and said, hey, look, this is, uh, this, this is somebody that they would like to take tight end potentially, but I also get the sense they'd be just fine taking a tight end on Saturday yeah. and that yeah. they could take something completely different tonight and that Jane reported just a few minutes ago that Dan Quinn would like a nickel corner potentially tonight. <laughs> and so there's a ton of options this could go. This could go corner, tight end. This could go offensive line. This could go edge rusher. There's just a million different ways that this could go. But the big buzz tonight is just in general the tight end group. Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, Sam Laporta. Uh, Aisha, I think that they would look at Forbes from Mississippi State if he was there. I think they would hand that card in. If you know, Dan Quinn talking about potential cornerbacks, I know he could play on the outside. That it might allow Bland to play more on the inside. The kid is an outstanding player. I don't anticipate him being there, but you know, this is a guy that you talked about quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, and we talked about. I mean, it was funny because Dan Quinn and this defense. They've really established something here to where when you look at guys on film, you say, oh, he fits. Like there's an attitude. There's a way that they play on that side of the ball that I, that I really, when I initially saw him, I was like, oh, he could fit. Mm -hmm. Like he could immediately fit because the, especially how much they emphasize ball skills and those are natural for him. Some of these guys are still being taught. And then I think on uh, 105, you guys talked about the other day, we never talk about it because nobody wants to say it. I don't want to say it out loud. But if Trayvon Diggs were to get injured last year, yeah. you would have been, it's done. Where do yeah. you go? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so whereas we talked about it where I was like, if you get a cornerback, does he just play behind? Even even that early, does he just play behind Stephon Gilmore? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, because he is just here for probably a year or two or whatever, that a cornerback is is something that would be smart to do it, given the fact that you have depth there but you don't have depth there two of your three starting cornerbacks went down jordan lewis and anthony brown and right? when you went there you had to go so deep into the roster that you had to call some some corners some off veteran players off of the street to yeah. just fill your roster yeah so I, I think corner is certainly a need that that has has been talked about but you look at the defense as a whole just because they were so good on the defensive side doesn't mean you should stay away from bolstering Dan Quinn's unit. Also, not to mention, he's here. Dan Quinn is here for another year. He very easily could have at least been in the conversation, and he was in the conversation for a head coaching job. Maybe one of the ways that he sticks around and he's even here in the first place is to say, okay, let's make sure he has every tool in the toolbox so he's able to be successful on that defensive unit moving forward. So maybe it's a reward for Dan Quinn, but I think fact of the matter is, even if you're good at a position, go grab another. Go get one more guy yeah. and continue to bolster that side of the football. I, I think we're all in agreement that the acquisitions that everyone has given the Cowboys a grade of A's for in the offseason, Gilmore and Brandon Cooks shouldn't stop you from doing anything tonight or this weekend. No. no. Correct? Correct. Correct. Like Correct. you just keep you just keep adding depth to Aisha's point. Let's go to the commissioner getting introduced in Kansas City. It was a short-lived dream. Yeah. He's egging him on, too. <laughs> I got him staring. Okay, welcome to Kansas City and the 2023 NFL Draft. For the first time since we took the draft on the road, we get to celebrate the draft in the Super Bowl-winning city with fans. That'll, that'll make them happy. And the Chiefs kingdom. As you can see, I have some friends on stage with me that you might recognize. 
They are Kansas City natives and love this community and their Chiefs. Give it up for Eric Stone Street and Heidi Gardner of Big Slick, Kansas City. All right, let's get out of this. Eric Stone Street, they got to get one more person to represent Kansas City. Besides, I, I love Eric Stone Street. Great show, fantastic. Uh, but we got to get another representative. Paul Rudd was busy. Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd was busy. All right, he's, he's talked, Brian. I can loosen this now, right? You can absolutely okay, talk. Oh, is that the uh, Brian brought us tie band date? Yeah. That's the rule. After That's Goodell, the deal? After yeah. Goodell speaks, you can go ahead and, uh, and loosen up the tie. So let's go around the room before we officially get Carolina on the clock. Needs. If you're going to have top three needs – for the Cowboys in order, no particular order. How would you run it down, Bobby? Left guard, tight end, linebacker, linebacker. Yeah. yeah, left guard, tight end, linebacker. Aisha, left guard, DT, linebacker. That's a good one. Uh, I would go left guard, linebacker, and then tight end. That would be where I'm at. What if I put kicker third? How how Noah how Brian. Are you take one of the How, third? Er, how Noah early? Brian. I'm just saying it's a need. They uh, they all came up with great needs. At some point in time, you better figure out the kicker. I'm just I I'm, agree. I'm throwing that out right now. Well, what's the earliest you ever drafted one or, or third really? round? Wow, who was it? Brett Conway uh, out of uh, Penn State. Did third. it work out? It did not. Uh, it did yeah, not. It worked out elsewhere. Wasn't yeah. it good in Washington? Jeez, uh, I don't remember him being good. <laughs> I don't remember him being good anywhere. Do oh, you, they brought out Pat. Yeah, yeah they got Mahomes with the trophy. Do you guys? I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit surprised that left guard is at the very top. I understand why they need to fill it, but Connor McGovern. I mean, they developed him. I don't think anyone would have thought that he was going to get another deal in Buffalo like he did. Is that is that a position you just feel like you can put someone in there or? At number twenty six, that's kind of the range where you're like, I can feel, I, I can feel good about drafting a guard here versus. Have they had top a 10. good one since Ron Leary? They haven't had one as good as Ron Leary. No. They've had ones who have been passable at times, but I don't think they've ever they've had one as good as Ron Leary. The problem here is that if you're going to address guard, it gets really hard to do it if you're waiting until round three, there like it with is. this Correct. class. There it is. And so I, I don't know. It may have to be the first round. The latest, I think, would have to be in terms of for you to find somebody who could start next year or be a plug and play would probably be the second, and that might be stretching it. It's now officially open. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock. Well, here we go. All right, there it is. All right, here we go. Tanner McKee. <laughs> What's your, what is what is that? It's his guy. Somebody got to clue me in. What we, Y'all got to tell me. That's He's the number guy. one prospect in the draft. Stanford. Wait, it's a I'm Stanford. It's a sta- it's a Stanford He's quarterback <laughs> that like he. I, I watch him play, and I'm like, yeah, and he was like talked about like super super high, and he'll probably be a great player one day. But I had a hard time evaluating him. I know it's it's kind of a running joke on the draft show. So Sorry. guard would take till round three. In no. terms of the depth, guard no. would not reach round three. Would not, three. Would not reach round three. If you're at, is, if you're maybe at, 90. at most two. Well, yeah. if you depending on where you have Zavala. You know, we're depending on where you have Zavala mm-hmm. from North Carolina State. Now, we could talk about Torrance. Torrance, to me, is somewhere – I mean, I know I have him 30th on my board. That's the Florida State. Uh, Avila from – Florida. From, I said Florida. You said Florida, Florida State. State. Florida, sorry. I probably did. Go Here Gators. We are. Yeah, go Gators. You shouldn't have let him unloosen his tie, Brian. I know. But, <laughs> look at him. Look but, at him. Yeah, but – Get loose. Know, with our TCU guard, I mean, I have him at 34. So I'm, you know, and then, you know, North Dakota State, where do you play, you know, our guy? Uh, Malk. Malk or Malk or whatever yeah. it is. I mean, that's, Malk. so to me, I kind of got him at 30, 34, 48, Zavala at 72. I'm I'm okay. I'm even thinking about what Aisha was talking about sometime on the draft show with, uh, with Steen from Alabama. And I'll tell you another name that we need to keep an eye on. At 26, potentially, is Bergeron. That's another name that I'm kind of hearing from uh, from Illinois or Syracuse, right? Syracuse. Syracuse. Yep. Syracuse, right? Syracuse. I got a bone to pick with you, though, because you messed up and taught me about, what is it, the, the reaching? Or what is it doing? The, what they Catching. For? Catching. 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 <sighs> and it just ruined it for me when I went back and looked at some more of his tape. Can, can we Which explain one? that what, just for those who might not Steen. know? Steen. Oh, Tyler yeah. Steen from you Alabama. Heard me. You, the, my feelings was hurt when I went back and had to watch it, and I was like, "It's a powerful guy that plays on a national championship team." It's too inconsistent, though, and like 
I realized even watching, I went back, went back and watched Emil Echior too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kitchen, a cat. You have your Brian. You have your guard list up. I, I suppose it's my guard list. I can tell you that after uh, Zavala yeah. in the third round, it gets it gets iffy. It, it gets it gets iffy. Now I will say that uh, John Gaines is somebody that I'm a little bit. I'm becoming a little bit higher on. UCLA. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my bad. Yes, yeah. yes, UCLA. But um, we talked about Mafi as well. Obviously, we got some things that you got to work through with him. I yeah. guess. But. He's he's in my fourth round. He's in the fourth round for me. Kyle, give us your offensive That's line good rundown. List, by the way. Uh, for the guard specifically, I have Torrance and, and Avila as second round grades. Now, now, just let me ask a favor. Yeah. For dum dums like me, mm-hmm. just give me the school with it. Oh yeah. I know, I know you guys Florida. are the draft experts, but give Sorry. me give me if you can full name in the school. Yeah. Yeah. Just, a just since we had room. already <laughs> since we had already <laughs> talked about I it. I know. But Torrance from Florida, Steve Avila from TCU, those are the two second round grades for me. They're at twenty eight and forty on my board respectively. But then there's a deep drop off in the from the second round to the third round. I go from forty in Avila to Nick Broker from Ole Miss at one ten. Okay, that's that's what Bobby's talking about. Because if you don't take one of those guys early, or you don't take a guy who could play both tackle. And guard one of these guys that like Tyler Smith last year. You brought in as an offensive tackle, and then you made made the switch. You pushed him inside the guard. There are some names that are on the board. Maybe by the time you pick at thirty, but it's so thin because after that, I have Nick Broker from Ole Miss in the third, Warren McClendon from Georgia in the in the third, T.J. Bass from Oregon. He's in the fourth round. McClendon Curtis from UT Chattanooga, fourth round. I, and then Chandler Zavala is in that fourth round conversation as well. Yeah, I've, I, I've, he's right about the drop off because Malk is forty eight and Zavala is seventy two. I technically that, have Malk as a tackle, but I know. Yeah, he's got I know. That flex. I, I, yeah. yeah, I just I put him at guard. I kind of feel like he might even be a really good center one day. That'd be to fun. be honest with you. But but in that pocket in the third, Zavala, North Carolina State, Bradford, LSU at eighty nine. And Echior uh, at uh, at, uh, at ninety four for me. So I'm kind of in that mode right now where uh, I'm just you know I I think if I don't I, this whole thing we started was they got to go get a guard and it and it was all about it was all about Torrance and 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 that crew and then we've kind of like hmm maybe some of these tackles that you can move over to guard became a little bit better options. I think Wright from Tennessee was that way. Yep. And then all of a sudden, people figured out, oh, wait, Wright's blocking uh, Will Anderson. Oh, wait, he's blocking B.J. Ojolari at LSU. Oh, well, you know, now nah, we're not going to get him at 26. So, yeah, I think that's where I we're th- at. I think another name to throw in there with Darnell Wright, if you wanted to talk first round or maybe trade back scenario, if he's there, Broderick Jones from Georgia – might be a guard tackle flex. I look at him as a guard. I think his future in the NFL is at guard. But if you wanted to play him inside, I think across the hall they would do that yeah. to make it fit. I talked to the Packers. That that seems to be like yeah, he's going to third. You think he's think, gone? I don't think yeah, he's, he's going. Down, I like him a lot, so yeah. I'm not surprised. That's you the case. Thirteen? No, he's the Packers are talking about him going at thirteen. Mm, the yeah, Carolina 13. Panthers are applauding. Uh, Bryce Young has just stood up and got the <laughs> final. Outfit touches. So it looks like it's going to be the Carolina Panthers quarterback, as everyone expects. We'll wait for the official announcement. I, I, I know it's not the sexiest thing, but to start off talking offensive line, I still love it because back when this team uh, was rolling, before they have been right now, you built the, the, this version of the Great Wall up front and just go ahead, protect your $40 million until he's a $50 million quarterback, uh, your run game. But Bobby, besides guard, a lot of Cowboy fans said, just go give him more weapons. Just go get more offensive weapons, whether that's all these tight ends we've been talking about, whether it's the receivers or whether it's the running back. Is that where your number one priority would be for them to add? Yeah, I'm just – I'm out there saying it, do anything to strengthen the passing game is what I'm in favor of right now. So how does that play out? That could play out either through offensive line. That could play out by giving him tight end receiver weapons. Maybe they view that as strengthening the passing game by – giving him a stronger running game and bringing that to compliment. But either way, I think the end goal here needs to be strengthen your passing game, strengthen your quarterback with whatever you do. And Kyle, you fall in yeah. line with that? Yeah, I'm right there with you. They've talked about wanting to run the football too and 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 establish the run game and, and come out of that. I, th- I don't think they leave this weekend without drafting somebody that can block, so tight end or offensive lineman, 
or go and get a running back as well. I think they they come out of the weekend with a maybe even with a premium pick at running back. I think both of those are certainly in play. Aisha, how do you feel about the tight ends? We've spent a lot of time already talking about all these different the options. Cowboys tight ends or the tight ends in the draft tight ends in the draft the, mm. the prospects mm. for the Cowboys how do you feel about this class possibly at 26 for them he knows I'm not I'm not a fan of I'm the not, group of the tight ends it's not a, no 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 not of the, I'm talking about that that high I'm not okay. a fan because the, the value of that position yeah I I just I struggle with the idea of getting one that early uh, just because we've seen that you can, they can be successful later. Yeah. Um, but out of the ones that we've talked about, um, y'all's teammate Zach has been talking about. He's been talking about uh, Michael Mayer and saying that he's yeah. more Gronk like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I went back and watched. Like I'm, I'm fairly young, y'all. So I, I missed. We I know missed, it's been pointed out. We're the geezers over here. Please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> but I missed. I missed uh, a lot of Gronk's prime. I didn't understand football. Yeah. At that point, so I actually went back to watch him, and he's he's right. Is he's he does look like a he's just bouncing off of people, and it doesn't always look perfect, but he's he does produce. So I'm I'm still kind of what's up? The pick here. Let's go to the pick, okay, Carolina. Get us started with the first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. The Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young, quarterback. What? A shot. <laughs> what color's the tie? Oh, no tie. Oh, he looks fresh, though. No there it tie. Is He's got Nick, the double-breasted suit on, yeah. There it is with Nick Saban and family. Let's react to that. And a lot of people think the draft is officially starting right now with the Texans on the clock. Glad you're kicking off the coverage with us. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. All right, Aisha, back to the tight ends and your evaluation of the class. You don't, you, you don't, you don't love the pick that early, but what player do you like? Uh, so I, I feel like I would be, I'm a little bit more in favor of Michael Mayer than what I, I was at first. If he is at 26, I don't think I'm not sure that's going to happen. But I am also not as opposed to Dalton Kincaid as I thought I would be. Also, to I actually have him at 30, pick 30. Okay. That's well. He's thirtieth on my on my, on my on my stack. Yeah. And Bobby, you have been the Michael Mayer hater. Uh, so not a hater. Go ahead. But and, I'm in the same boat as him. We've I, so we've we've talked about it. I'm, I'm not a hater. To to just reset for anybody who's listening, Michael Mayer at Notre Dame. To me, the issue is what is the skill set relative to like the modern tight end. When they talk in Indy. Uh, when when Jerry Jones talks in Indianapolis at the combine about how he wants the the advantage that like a Travis Kelsey gives you, Michael Mayer is not that. That like even if you like him and you think he's really good, he's solid all the way around. I just don't know that he's going to be that seam tight end. I, I don't think that's going to be his game. He's really good. It's just the the comparison I make is he is a mid range shooter in today's NBA mm-hmm. and he can be really good at it. But what is the value of that? And he could grow into a role like that, but I'm right there with you. That's why I have Dalton Kincaid higher, because I think Kincaid as a receiver brings that down-the-field mismatch, that that take the top off, the, the ability to get behind a defense, run in space. The one thing I have Mayer above Kincaid in, though, is a blocking ability. Yes. I think Mayer is a better blocker, a more polished blocker right now than Dalton Kincaid is. Uh, but even that's not enough for me to say – Okay, one, he's a better player. I think Dalton Kincaid's got a better career ahead of him. But also, fit-wise, maybe since Michael Mayer can block a little bit better than Kincaid, maybe he's a better fit for this football team specifically if he were to be the selection. Are we sleeping Are we sleeping on, on the uh, – is it Darnell Washington? Yeah, but th- to me, it, it seems like that with Washington, there's these whispers you're starting to hear that they wouldn't – take Darnell Washington. Mm -hmm. I think there's injury concerns there. He wasn't on the field consistently. It was kind of up and down, had a rocky up and down throughout. I still think he's a top 60 player. He might be there at 58, but in the 26th realm, I don't think it's a possibility. I wanted to mention to you, though, you mentioned uh, Dalton Kincaid and the blocking ability. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's uh, that's actually one of my knocks on him. But the same could have been said about Peyton Hendershot. Um, sure. As an undrafted guy, obviously, yeah. and he came in here, got with Lunda, and you saw the gradual improvement on his blocking and what he was able to do uh, as an inline blocker later in the season. So, yeah, you can do it. Which one's easier to to teach somebody, Brian? Is it a receiving ability or a blocking ability? 
I think the the blocking ability is it. That's a little more about desire. It's more about technique. Effort, yeah. yeah, I mean, you comes know, from the heart. Like I say, when you watch, I, I'm just going to give you a name. Luke Schoonmaker from Michigan. It's okay? a great name. Schoonmaker is like to, on my board, like a third, fourth round type of a player. Okay, but I watch Michigan run the football. We watch big. Big noon football, you know, yeah. big down, <laughs> and you're watching Michigan, and they're just hammering people running the football, you know, just down after down, and they're running the ball behind Schoonmaker, and you're and you're going, oh, look at that point of attack. See, that's where I think some of these top tight ends don't have that. They don't have that willingness to get their nose bloodied and be an inline blocker and like go flat back, lift and turn and all that. It's a lot of fit run with, and shield. So that's where I think that, to me, there's some tight ends in this draft that could block. I think it's later in the in the, in the the round. Third, fourth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brenton Strange, Tucker Craft. I mean, yeah, those guys. I agree. And now the draft officially starts. Bryce Young to the Carolina Panthers, and the Houston Texans are on the clock. Sean Tree, Brian Broaddus, Bobby Bell, Aisha Morrison, and Kyle Yeomans from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, brought to you by Miller Lite. Bobby, sort out all this noise surrounding Houston. Well, we know one answer. They didn't trade the pick. They made the pick. Wow. Because the pick is in, so Houston didn't bail out of there. So Has all been, this been... Dang. There's been Will Anderson, Tyree Wilson. There's been or has chatter been about a, the is, quarterback, C.J. Stroud. It's just, it's been all over the map with them. This is why people were curious where this... There was a lot of building momentum in the last 24 hours on Anderson, the edge rusher from Alabama. And has it all been a C.J. Stroud smokescreen? And what have you all made of all the C.J. Stroud slander that we've heard in the past week? It doesn't affect me a whole lot on on the player. And, I'm, I, I mean, speaking for myself, I think he, he has the ability to step up in the pocket. He had a clean pocket a lot of the time at, at Ohio State, had a great offensive line, arm strength to go to each part of the field. He was a leader in the locker room. There were some off-the-field questions just in terms of his, his maturity and some of those things. Does not bother me at all. I think he's a ready-made NFL starter. He was the number three player on my board. You so. might draft him first overall if you just watch the uh, the uh, Georgia game. Georgia that's, Clips. That's, that's the best game. That's the best any. That's the best game any of the quarterbacks put on tape. One hundred percent. I one hundred percent agree with yeah. that. Yeah. You guys have a guess on who this is. You think it's Anderson? You I, think I, it's I, mean, I, I worry. I worry about that S two test. Let's I go really find do. out. Here we go. It's in quick. Wow. With the second pick in the twenty twenty three NFL draft. The Houston Texans select C.J. Stroud. Wow. I did it. <laughs> it's the right move. It is. It is the right move. All this misdirection, all the rumors, and, you know, when teams make a pick, brought us, you're the expert in this field, but when you go up that quickly, you're kind of sending a message to the player, uh, to his family. Yo, there was no hesitation. You're our guy. Let's go ahead. We're not going to screw around with this. We're not taking calls. You are our guy, C.J. Stroud. Aisha, how did you feel about all the questions and all the all the Stroud slander as of late? I didn't I didn't like it because I I talked to these guys about it. You know, especially being you know former military. I, I felt like I was the first time I heard it about it. I was like the testing. And the way that they do it, I was like, oh, that sounds like some of the cognitive stuff that, you know, you would do for security. And Can you like give that. us a little, because I'm ignorant as to what the S2 actually is. I know I can't pass the Wonderlick. I've tried taking those test questions. What is the S2 test? I, so Haley explained it very well, but it's... <sighs> I guess it's it's recognition, yeah. it's it's patterns, it's, it's sometimes shapes, and they're they're trying to see how quickly you can identify the differences and stuff. And and I understand the nature of it and how it could be useful. I just don't, with it being so early in, in the usage of it, I just it makes me. I didn't like that C.J. Stroud had to feel they had to even come out and speak about that. And you could tell in his response that he felt a little insulted by it. Of course. And he should be. And most of these players should feel like that. I love the numbers and stuff, and, and I'm starting to get into that. But we have to... We have a job to do to stay balanced with those things, especially as analysts, reporters, etc. Yeah, I think this was clearly, though, Nick Cesario, the general manager, I think he won this battle. Yes, he did. He's got a new head coach, and I bet you what he did is he told uh, D'Amico Ryans, he's like, listen, I know you brought all those cats from San Francisco and you guys are big S2 guys. 
I don't particularly think I'm from the New England Patriots. We watch tape. <laughs> We're kind of old school in the way we do things. I think that what happened is he told D'Amico Ryans, we're taking C.J. Stroud. Mm. We need a quarterback. I sat here last year and played with Davis Mills, okay? (laughs) I sat a whole year without my quarterback even playing. He goes, I am not going through that again because you know what? I'm going to get fired if we don't get a quarterback here. And he told D'Amico Ryans that. And you know what the message was to D'Amico Ryans? You go tell your coaches that we're taking C.J. Stroud. And you better find a way to coach C.J. Stroud, okay? <laughs> he is our quarterback. Yeah. And I think that's how this went down. You could you could talk about all that testing stuff and all that. The general manager won this battle. He and did. He won this So do you think this this all this smokescreen, all of the I don't the think rumors, they were sure. I don't think they were sure. I think it, it came, was It was actually an interior battle going I on. I think it was an interior battle. And wow. people were talking about... To, you know, th- there's a little bit like I say. You have a general manager that is does not. I mean, he they've struggled since. The, the, there's rumors he's going to New England after this. Yeah, the, this, <laughs> the dysfunction, the dysfunction that they have yeah. at Houston is like, like what? Yeah, I, I think that to me, this is a this is him stepping up and saying that this is my guy. If I get fired, it's because I picked him. And look, as Mike Florio told us this morning, Bobby and myself, don't rule out a, a lot of this slander and these insults from another team that wanted him. Yeah, yeah. you, you want to get him to drop. No question. He has been, it's been one and two this whole time. It's been Young and Stroud. Now all of a sudden we're talking about Stroud at eight, Stroud at nine. That's probably – I know we feel bad for him because – and he's breaking down right now emotional. That's fantastic to see it all hitting him. It could be a compliment with another team wanting to put that stuff out there in order to get him to drop to them to get their franchise quarterback. Uh, Bobby, why is it the right move? You had no hesitation in saying it. Yeah, because, I mean, again, I think this was a, an issue of overthinking things a little bit on Stroud. Um, whether, whether, whether it was an attempt to push him down the board, slander, whatever else, or if it was just overthinking the guy like i said he put the best game on tape that any of these quarterbacks did this entire year he did it against essentially an nfl defense in georgia no doubt and i think that when you talk about okay what is cj he was, Stroud, he was behind he was working with an nfl offense yeah well, sure. yeah and then that's what he's going to be working with at the and, next level well maybe not that well good. i mean not at houston <laughs> ohio state might beat houston absolutely they'll get some guys around him at some point they, though but that you got to start with some place and you got to start with some they're, quarter stone they're gonna try so if you I, look at cj Stroud and say like okay well what is what is C.J. Stroud do that puts him at the top of the quarterback class or near the top of the quarterback class. It's the fact that he is incredibly accurate. I think he's the most naturally accurate passer. I think he's the the most the effortless. Motion. Yeah, the he's the most. Motion he is the throw. most effortless, yeah. naturally gifted passer. I think in the class. I think he's shown. Something that is always a question with quarterbacks coming out of college is like, how simplified is their offense? How do they get through progressions? Stroud showed an ability to get through progressions quickly. I think he's NFL ready, this, just like Bryce. This guy likes to stay in the pocket more than he likes to run. Yep, he's not interested in just taking off and running like some of these guys. He is working with some of a trade. A trade going up here already. DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins has received permission from the Cardinals to seek a trade. Now, right now, it's got Arizona on the clock still at three. Yeah, this is Ian Rappaport saying this is going to be the Texans coming up to three. Whoa! Which is what Daniel so, De- Daniel Jeremiah's doing for two so far. Yeah. Who would this be for? Probably Will Anderson. Anderson. Thinking Will Anderson. 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 Yeah. Which or is I mean, my... it could be Tyree so, Wilson. So did they did they not actually win the battle? Did they actually come with a compromise? Wait. So the you Texans are going interior? two three right Texan, here. Yeah. Texans jump from you talk twelve about up to a, three. You talk about an interior battle. Did they just pull off both of these? And they're trying to get better. That's phenomenal. If that's in, if that's indeed the case, and they go with Will Anderson here, that is. Fantastic! Wow, that would be unbelievable. So that way, the GM gets his way. D'Amico <laughs> could get, get his way. His way. Uh, I'm trying to remember the last time. Last time, top three, you had a team making back to back picks. I remember Courtney Brown and Lavar Arrington in DC. But now, what did the Texans give up? Go ahead, Brian. No, I'm just saying they're showing Daniel Jeremiah, and he had this in his mock yesterday. He's he, got he, a smirk on his face. He had Bryce going one, it. Stroud going two, and then he had the Texans trading up and taking Will Anderson. He knew exactly here. what was happening here. So good for him wow. having the, the connections that he does in the league. But, yeah, I, if I could go back on Stroud real quick. You know, just the thing about him is this guy, he never a plays rattled. 
He's always in control of the way he's played. He's made some huge starts in his in his in his career, and he's come up big, very big. And so the ease of motion, the way he throws. There's a lot of times he's throwing to wide open receivers, but he's able to fit the ball in some tight spots. This, like Bobby's saying, this is the absolute right move for the Houston Texans, who, again, I admire them for what they're about to do. They've got a general manager. I said it earlier. they got a general manager that's got one foot in the parking lot, you know, and he's trying not to get fired. And if this is one of those bold moves you have to make to save your job, go for it. And I think he's doing it today. Do we have the compensation yet? Not what would he yet. Not I'm yet? watching for it. It hasn't come out yet. Wow. The breaking news. The Houston Texans are on the clock after taking C.J. Stroud at number two. You guys have no doubt that it's Will Anderson? I'm I'm almost certain it's Pro- Will Anderson. Probably Will Anderson with a caveat that maybe Tyree Wilson. Because okay. Houston has loved they, they Tyree do, Wilson. They, do, they, do, they have. Zerline talked about that last there week. There was late yeah. discussion. Okay, so it's the Cardinals are getting 12-33. Uh, here comes the pick. And Let, we'll talk let's about get it. the pick, and then we'll get the compensation. Roger Goodell, Houston, back to back. The Arizona Cardinals have traded the third pick to the Houston Texans. With the third pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Will Anderson Jr. Linebacker, Alabama. Wow. Let's talk about the compensation. Let's talk about the player. And let's talk about what else is going to happen with Indianapolis. Are they going to make it a third quarterback in the top four picks? This is the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. This is why I love this. This is why I love this night right here. Yeah. Okay. Card- Cardinals got a ransom. Okay. And it's, ma- it's matter a massive fa- hole. It's a huge hole. Matter of wow. fact, the Cardinals are going to be back to back in the top of the second round. Okay. Yeah. They got thirty three and thirty four that they're going to pick. Card- so. Cardinals get twelve, thirty three, Houston's first rounder next year and Houston's third rounder next year, Whoa. and they're giving up three and one hundred five. Holy so cow! Twelve, thirty three, a one and a three. They get the twelfth pick, the top of the second round, and Houston's first and third next year. Look. Uh, I think it was Daniel Jeremiah who said Arizona arguably has the worst roster now in the National Football League. This is how you reload that, isn't it? Yeah, and, and like I, I keep <laughs> saying this, the Houston now trading next year's one, this could be somebody else's problem. This could be the general manager could they like listen Houston's bad again and now Arizona ends up with the top three pick and here we go. You know, Nick Cesario is fired and you know what he says. Ah, did the best I could. Now the new general manager comes in. He's got no first-round pick, no third-round pick that he has to work if, with. If the, if the chatter is right that Arizona wants Paris Johnson, he he could be there at 12. And so with that in mind, I mean, this is, I think, a great haul for them if they can still potentially get the guy they want. I mean, either way, whoever was a part of this trade, because you could say the Texans won this trade because they just got their franchise quarterback and a cornerstone player on defense to build around for the future. So you talk about the aggressiveness that it took to even get to this spot. Yes, they gave up a haul. Cardinals are feeling great about where they are right now because they can sit back, they can watch the draft unfold in front of them, just like we talked about with the Eagles in the pre-show. Once that top 10, top 11 picks rattle off the board, they're feeling pretty good about it. And if they really have a guy inside the top eight, you don't think they could package those top two picks in the second round and go get a guy if they really wanted to? I think they are very happy with this deal, and you know Houston's happy with this deal. That's a huge – that's a a franchise-altering move – from Houston to go either good or bad either way I think it's great I I think they can both I think both teams can feel good about it exactly Will Anderson's the number four player on my board CJ Stroud's number three and you just had them back to back in the same draft I think this is a a home run for Houston and it's a a, maybe a grand slam for for yeah I got yeah I got him as four and five Will Anderson four CJ Stroud is five why are you shaking your head I just it's just so crazy how the Cardinals got bad so fast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I totally agree. No, it's not. I mean, I'm just being serious. Like, yeah. it's crazy when you think about, like, a couple years ago, yeah. people were really looking at them as contenders. They were really building that roster. And now for them to quite look like they're in a total rebuild. Yeah. 
And that's crazy. It, it has as much as we talked about Kyler Murray coming in and what we thought he was going to be able to do. It looks like they're in. A, they're either trying to rebuild around him, or they might be trying to do something totally different. Totally agree. That's crazy. They're one of the toughest teams for me to always, to, to figure out in the past couple of years. You know, we do all these Dak comparisons. Mm. Dak. Kyler, Arizona, you know, Kyler comes in AT&T and runs around here like he's at freaking Allen High School. And it's like, it's all there, right? He's Mike Vick with a cannon arm. And then you got the off the field stuff. And then you got some of the drama. Uh, and now you got the new coach that's in there. And by the way, so Arizona lost tonight with a tampering charge with Philadelphia, right? That's also true. So how do we now factor in? All their picks after they had to give that up to Philadelphia so for they, hiring Jonathan Gannon. Yeah, so they will. They had to go back from 66 and pick up 96, I think it was, from Philadelphia. So this is them getting a second back at the, at the top there. And they have two picks in the third round. Now, what's not been— And the Eagles clear, get a third. Uh, they, no, they get, the, they get the second round pick, and then they get a fifth round pick. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's not been made clear about this trade here with Arizona is if Houston is giving up their pick or they're giving up the pick they get from Cleveland. Because they've got the they've got Cleveland's first rounder next year, I think. Oh, okay. They haven't they haven't dis- or so it, it hasn't been, it, it hasn't it hasn't yeah. been reported yet which first round pick they gave. So up. look, the Colts pick is in. If you follow the timing of the Houston pattern, Aisha, this can be your boy. Will Levis, maybe. Maybe this is the no hesitate. Or they're just running up to go get someone they absolutely love. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. It's okay. That's what they want to do. It's, it's yeah. okay for them. The Colts know everything about quarterback. All right. Well, <laughs> they have a uh, they have uh, the, the genius GM that the media has anointed there, the untouchable one, who's now maybe sweating a little bit mm. uh, in Indianapolis. Uh, he's the media darling, the media favorite. Uh, but the Colts pick is in. Whew. Let's get ready to get some Will Anderson recap as well. Woo! It's already started, baby. This is why it's my favorite broadcast night of the year. The Houston Texans making the most noise. They take C.J. Stroud at two after Bryce Young, of course, to Carolina. And then they trade up with Arizona to take Will Anderson. Bobby, give us the compensation. Brought us. Uh, tell us about the player, Bobby. What happened? What did both sides exchange? Texans are uh, giving up pick 12, pick 33, and then a 2024 first rounder and a 2024 third rounder. And the Cardinals are giving up pick three and pick 105. With the fourth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Anthony Richardson. Oh, Aisha coming through already saying, no, don't believe Will Levis to Indianapolis. Mm. All right, brought us. Let's break out the player profiles. First, Will Anderson. Will Anderson, by the way, I'm proud of you, Scout. <laughs> I, really, <laughs> I really am, man. There's a tear in my eye right now, what you just did. <laughs> I am so freaking proud of you walking in here and saying that. Okay, Will Anderson, let's go. Uh, if I could get to my uh, my notes here. He'll line up on both sides of the ball. He is comfortable rushing from either side. He's an outstanding physical talent. The ability to make plays all over the field. Impressive the way he plays the run. He's not going to let the ball get outside of him. He does a really nice job of keeping his outside shoulder free. When he faces his shares of double-team blocks and stuff like that, he's good with his hands. He finds the ball. He chases. He can beat blockers on several ways on the pass rush. He wins with quickness. He wins with power. I think this guy right here, you, you know, when you talk about explosive power and flexibility, complete player dealing with the run or the pass. Do you feel like he was the top defensive player because of the Jalen Carter drama or just on film you had? Uh, I, had I had Carter higher than him because when I read Carter's notes, they're going to be just as good as Willie An- Will Anderson's. Kyle, your take on Anderson as a player? Yeah, I mean, you talk about broad shoulder, shoulders and a relentless pass rush. I think he's there. I think he has the run-stopping ability where you go laterally at the line of scrimmage. He can scrape off of blocks. He has a toolbox that's already very deep and ready for the pro game. Uh, I mean, you talk about the 2021 tape. He was unblockable. There was no way you were getting past him. 35 tackles for loss and 17 sacks as a sophomore. That's one year. 
Most players don't get that over the course of a career. And he had that in one season. And then he backed that up with 17 T- TFLs and 10 sacks in a quote-unquote down year in 2022. I think he's a phenomenal edge rusher. He's a cornerstone defensive player, like I said earlier uh, in the show. I, I think he's going to be feared in the NFL very, very soon. Seattle's on the clock. Will this be Jalen Carter? But Aisha Morrison. This is your moment as you hit the early home run oh. with the uh, Will Levis quarterback talk. So talk to us why you weren't totally buying Levis to Indy and your take on Anthony Richardson, who is now a Colt. Well, now now I feel like well, I knew that a team would take a chance on him, but now the Colts do, do make sense. They're in a place to where they, they are looking for some explosiveness on that side of the ball. They're looking for a jolt of energy on that side of the ball. Their offense is for the last couple of years have been difficult to watch. And <laughs> you also, I mean, let's just, let's keep it a buck here. You know, so I feel like for them, a Will Levis wouldn't cut it because they had a Matt Ryan type guy there already. Yeah. And that didn't work. Mm. No offense. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's talk about Anthony Richardson because this is the most polarizing guy of the first round, the most fascinating, the biggest intrigue, the biggest boom, the biggest bust. Who's got a strong feeling, uh, love or hate prospect talk about the Colts' new quarterback, Anthony Richardson. Bobby, what were you feeling on him? That's the the hard thing about it is that I don't know how strong a feeling you can have on him because it's going to all be about what is his work ethic like. The, the tools are all there. The traits are all there to do it. It's just a matter of what is his work ethic and how do you transition him from just traits to a football player? And, and how do you turn him into a pro-ready quarterback? This is going to be a process. This is not a guy is going to step in and be ready to play football. Uh, but look, I mean, there was a lot of criticism about uh, Jalen Hurts when he was coming out, and different guys, obviously, but athletic quarterbacks who were considered to need some seasoning. And Shane Steichen helped contribute to getting that out of him in Philadelphia. He's there in Indianapolis now. Uh, so they're clearly believing in him. But the biggest thing to me still is going to be about does he does he have the love for the work to become that guy? If he does and he's got the work ethic – and they can bring it out, it's going to be a home run because he's got all the traits. And, and that's why I knocked him, because he is going to be a project. He's not a start-in, step-in, ready-made quarterback at the next level right now to lead a franchise. Could he get there? Certainly so, absolutely. I still had him as a top-30 player. But with Richardson specifically, he's got to find a way to have the right touch on certain short passes. It, not everything can be 100 miles an hour. He's not throwing across the diamond in baseball. He's got to have the right touch. He's got to have the touch in the back of the end zone or on a lob pass. There were a lot of times when he just tried to throw his way out of trouble, and instead it threw him into trouble. Mm. So because of that, I, there's decision-making into it. There's the, the motivation, like Bobby's talking about, that's into it as well. I, I don't feel comfortable at four taking a project quarterback, which is why I had him rated so much lower. But is he a good player, and does he have a chance to become a, a, a legitimate franchise quarterback? Sure, he's got all the tools, and like Brian said earlier, he has built the right way for it. Yeah. You just got to get it out of him. Man, this guy's got some serious body armor. I mean, he is a, <laughs> he is a big dude. He's sturdy. He's tough. My alma mater, LSU, wanted nothing to do with him tackling him one day. <laughs> I watched. That I think game. he ran like 80 yards, and nobody wanted anything to do with him. There are he could put the ball on on the spots. He really can. You watch the LSU, uh, Kentucky, Utah, Florida State game. He he could throw the football. He's a physical player. You know, uh, I, I think the thing that they're going to work on him is that accuracy. He's going to have to improve the footwork a little bit. The, but the awareness in the pocket is outstanding because he'll drop back and things will start breaking down and he'll go, whoop, I'm out of here. Yep. Or he'll move and slide and then do something, you know, to kind of make his team have a little success on the play. But, man, I'll tell you what. The, the part, the physical part of it, he's got everything you want in a quarterback as far as the size, the, the talent that way. He's just going to need some work. And you know who his new coach is in Indianapolis? Where was he previously? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. Steichen. Yeah. So you talk about an athlete. You talk about some Jalen Hurts comparisons with the physical ability. Uh, Ian Rappaport says the phones are ringing in Seattle. Brian brought us. This is your boy. It's my 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 former my former intern, <laughs> my three and a half million dollar intern, John Snyder. John right? Snyder. Yeah. They made the pick. What's he thinking right now? He is thinking like how he can fleece somebody for this fifth pick. <laughs> <laughs> Just like he, t- he fleeced the Denver Broncos to get uh, Russ. Detroit Russ so he could get this fifth pick. Or is he thinking, we just got the best player in the draft that fell to us. 
yeah. at number five. Yeah, I, I think and, – and I'll tell you this about John Schneider. John comes from a program in Green Bay where, like, the character stuff and all that is all, you know, off the field, all that's important. But Johnny told me one time, he said, listen, I got a coach that convinced me that I don't have to draft choir boy type players. Yeah. He goes, I, you, he goes, don't, he goes, if you want to give me the bad guys, if you want to give me the character guys, I don't have a problem with that. I'll coach these guys. Mm. So, yeah, if Jalen Carter is a guy that people think might have some character issues, then, then, or maturity, I'm not going to say character, I'm going to say maturity issues, yeah. that ain't going to bother Pete Carroll. And it ain't going to bother John Snyder because yeah. the head coach has convinced him that he can take these guys and they can win with them. Well, it's like Bobby was telling me the other day your Randy Moss stories that you almost – am I allowed to say this? That your, your, your opinion on Moss and the trouble it almost got you in, you were willing to toe the character line Absolutely. when making a Randy decision. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Lurie, the owner, I sent Butchie, uh, my, my security guy, down <laughs> to, uh, to West Virginia – and Butchie, he came back with a big old folder. And Mr. Lurie, the day before the draft, said, Brian, please, we can't take Randy Moss. And I said, Mr. Lurie, he's the best player, uh, the best wide receiver on our board. He says, please, I'll, I'll acknowledge that we had him as the best player. And to this day, if you ask Jeff Lurie, he'll say that, that, yeah, we had him as our guy. But, yeah, we, we, we moved on. We took uh, Trey Thomas, and it worked out. He played like 14 years. In the yeah. League, so we're, we were good. We were good. Bobby, any feeling on what Seattle's going to do here? Picks in, though. I wondered if, that, like, because they were on the phone, I wondered if that was them getting Richardson snatched out from under them. I, I wonder if they, they I wonder were, if they're going to take – they're showing Will Levis here. I wonder if, if Snyder's going to – He doesn't look like he got a call. Okay. I love that they're not focusing on Carter. the kids, though, getting the phone call. I, that ruins the drama. I want the – here we go. Let's find out what Pete Carroll and John Snyder brought us as intern are going to do. With the fifth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Devin Witherspoon. Wow. Whoa. Back, Illinois. Why whoa, Kyle Yeomans? I, you look at the guys that are available here with Jalen Carter and Christian Gonzalez. I We kind of expected Devin Witherspoon to go off the board early and possibly as the first corner, but we thought we, it was going to happen right now with pick six in the Detroit Lions. They, I mean, they went out last year. They, they made a third-round selection with Tyreek Wilson uh, from uh, UTSA, and he ended up being in the conversation for NFC Defensive Rookie of the Year. He had a phenomenal season. Now you have kind of a pairing between the two of them, but you also jump over the top of a Detroit team that was certainly looking and shopping at corner. You go and get what you think is the best cornerback in the class. It's a good pick. I just didn't expect it to happen at five. Bobby, you stunned? Yeah, just because again, it's the same sort of thing. I didn't expect that Witherspoon was going to go here. Uh, like, I mean, for for several months leading up to it, it seemed like the consensus, the chatter out there, obviously, and it's media scouts, and so mm-hmm. they don't always know what they're talking about, but a lot of the consensus has been Christian Gonzalez was the number one corner. And, and for a little bit, even before that, it was Christian Gonzalez and Joey Porter and then Witherspoon. Witherspoon started to slide past Porter. Then in the last few days, you started seeing Witherspoon sliding past Gonzalez, but even with Witherspoon sliding past Gonzalez, like this was not a common pick here. Most people, I think, the earliest you saw him going was six to Detroit, and so I, I think Detroit just got their guy taken from them. Where was Devin Witherspoon on y'all's boards on the corner board? Where, where thirteen? Did... Well, I mean, oh, never, overall, uh, th- uh, third, third best third. corner. Yeah, third second. on mine too. Thirteenth best second. player. But let me give you an idea. He's the thirteenth best player on my board. Ninth on Dane Brugler's board, fifth on Daniel Jeremiah's board. Wow. Once again, Daniel Jeremiah probably talking to John about Witherspoon and where where he was going. He's a vicious player, dude. Yeah. He's like up in your face. He immediately wants you to know that he's going to be there with you all day long early in that game. Tackles in open space. I, he makes plays on the ball. I I, I think he's a, a really good addition to any team he goes to. Um, yeah, I'm I'm, I, I I had him at 13. I didn't think he was gonna go this soon, but I get it. I get it because he's also he's a tone setter. Yeah. He's a tone setter. He the can word really... they just put on TV was feisty. Yeah, that's yeah, about the, right. And the Illinois defense, I, I don't know who their their D coordinator is, but man, they that defense 
was is well coached. I know you guys had the pleasure of watching them, and that it's a well coached defense, especially on the defensive side, on the DB side of the ball. It, it creates a, a one two punch now in that secondary that could rival what they had back in the the Super Bowl winning days. Not saying that these guys are going to end up being Richard Sherman or anything, but I'm just saying it's probably the best secondary they've had since then. So they have some young pieces to build around. I, I, this is a defensive line that was not very good at stopping the run last year, though. And, and sitting there with Jordan, or excuse me, with Jalen Carter there at defensive tackle, the fact that they passed up on what could be a number one need for them is this an early indication on what could slide for a Jalen Carter? I think, I think your I think your guy got his quarterback taken. That's what I think. I, I think Seattle is uh, going to take Richardson? Richardson at five. And and, and then they, phone did they back panic? And then, and then they, I don't know about panic, but I think they I probably think, they're stacked. They probably had Richardson above Witherspoon, and they just went down their order. Yeah, I'm getting, but but like I said, I don't know that it's panic. I just think they, I, I think they were anticipating they were going to get something else. So are the Lions scrambling now? We got the Lions, the Raiders, and the Falcons. Glad y'all are with us. Just getting started. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. All right, so reset that, Bobby. You think who got what stolen from? I, I think the the fact that Indianapolis took Anthony Richardson, I think that threw off Seattle. I think Seattle's ready to take Richardson at five. Mm. They, they, that was the one that was starting to gain. We had seen Carter so consistently yeah. at five in the mocks, but the chatter you were starting to hear today that was growing was Richardson might be Seattle's guy. Richardson might be Seattle's guy. And so the fact that it's Witherspoon, I just feel like it's the, – hey. the, the, and the fact that they're on the phones working it, I think they expected to be there. We have another trade. Oh, the Cardinals went right back up. The Arizona Cardinals oh, what are— what did I say? Arizona and Houston. Recap what you said. So with the trade that they made earlier, they were sitting at three. They traded out, took the, the top pick or the second pick in the second round at pick number 33 from Houston as Houston goes up and gets Will Anderson. They were sitting at 12, which was kind of the, the meat of that deal. I bet you they packaged one of these second-round picks. They packaged 12 to the Lions. The Lions just had their guys stolen, like Bobby just said. And then there's Arizona popping them right back up in there because they like a defensive tackle, maybe? It's, it's 12 and 34. Yep, so for, there you go. Six. One of the two second-round picks and then the, the 12th pick now, overall. Now, I'm about I, to I, upset. I think – Seattle got their guy taken out from under them. I know from talking to people, the Lions just did get their guy taken out from them. They were going to take Devin Witherspoon. Witherspoon? Six. Yes. They were going to take Witherspoon at six, and that one just got snatched from them. Where do you think Arizona goes here then? Because they traded back up into it enough to go get a guy. I mean, I don't know how many times Kyler Murray has to scream at them to pick an offensive lineman for him before they okay. do it. So, I don't know. Skaronsky or Paris Johnson's the one that's had all this chatter, but maybe this is Jalen Carter. Where? Do, you think, do you think they're worried about losing Paris Johnson? Do you think they're they were worried about Chicago? Could Chicago be. absolutely could have taken him. Yeah, because Chicago was one of those teams that was kind of holding on. I felt felt like was holding on an offensive lineman there. Where are y'all with the tackle board? Tackle board. Everybody's still available. Everybody's still yeah. everybody's still in play here for us. If you if you look at uh, yeah, I know they're still available. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> uh, I am watching the draft. Everybody, I haven't lost my mind yet. Kyle. We're no, six picks good. in. Just wait give until your, day three. Give me your pa- board. Paris Johnson. Paris Johnson for me eighth overall. Uh, Brandon Jones at uh, Broderick Jones. Broderick Jones. Excuse me at twelve. And then my guy, Darnell Wright, at 19. And you have Skaronsky as a guard, right? I have Skaronsky as a guard. He's my sixth. So if you if you said, take the best offensive lineman off your board, I'd take Skaronsky at guard is what I would do. Same. He's my number one guard, tackle, whatever you want to call it. He's best offensive lineman. Uh, you look at Paris Johnson Jr., the same names, I think, throughout the board. Broderick Jones from, from Georgia is up there. Dewan Jones from Ohio State has, of course, got some size to him. I don't think he would go this high, yeah. but offensive line is up there. Yeah, I have him later. I have Dewan Jones at 28. Who would you take here if you were the Cardinals? Um. Well, yeah, their offensive line did look like Tinker Toys last year, so I would definitely <laughs> go that route. I mean, and if anything to just help. Kyler, we don't know what he's going to be like coming back from an ACL, um, and we don't know if he's going to want to stay in the pocket a little bit more. So 
an offensive lineman, like you said, he has been screaming for it, cussing even for an offensive lineman Bobby, on the sidelines. What's your uh, why? You, why is the tie going what, back what up? What you doing? You Brian and I just up? got Brian and I just got a text instructing me to tighten my tie, so I'm tightening it. <laughs> yes, I love it. So, anyway, <laughs> who, who what, what's your that? question, Did Jerry? Like, I, I can't think now with Jerry. all the uh, bl- circulation cut off to my brain. Jerry, Jerry oh, wants ahead. you to go ahead and uh, look professional, Bobby. What's your tackle board look like? I th- I, I believe Skaronski can be a tackle in the NFL. I, I think yeah. guard yeah. may be his future, but I do think he, if he needed to play there, he could. So Skaronski, Broderick Jones. Let's and then... go to Gode- Goodell on the Cowboys.com side. Have traded the sixth pick to the Arizona Cardinals. With the sixth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Paris Johnson Jr., Ohio State. Brought us. There you go. How about that? Where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, you guys did say that you looked at Peter Skronsky as yeah. a guard, so yeah. maybe Paris is your number one, your number one tackle. Yeah, I, I think that I think that they were clearly thinking about. Uh, I mean, I watched this guy on tape, and I, I, I'm s- super, super impressed by the way that uh, that way that he plays. When we come back, and we give a scouting report on him, you think we got what? absolutely? Yeah, we got to reset the trade reset. too. Yeah, so. Aisha, nice job. Uh, you went uh, for some Kyler Murray protection there, so that is what Arizona made a priority. So I'm scared to say, but the, the the Raiders are on the clock as of right now. <laughs> but the Texans and the Cardinals are the early story in the first six picks, making multiple deals. Texans and Arizona owning the early portion of this draft. All right, y'all. We got more fireworks. While we were away, the Arizona Cardinals made their second move of the night. The Texans have made two moves. Bobby Bell, what was exchanged for Arizona to move up to number six? Yeah, the Lions lost their guy in Devin Witherspoon, so they bailed out of six. They traded back to 12, which was originally the Browns to the Texans to the Cardinals, and the Cardinals give up 12 and 34 to give up go up to six. And then Aisha Morrison said, are they going to get Kyler some help up front? How many times does he have to scream for an offensive lineman? So Brian brought us. They go and get Paris Johnson, Ohio State. I, I tell you what, man, this guy was a converted guard. Outstanding athletic ability and movement. He's very light on his feet when it comes to blocking. He can easily work in front of his man without any issues. He's able to kick outside to keep his man wide. He makes the cutoff. The reach is no problem. He'll find himself off balance some when it comes to his sustain, but he's not one of those guys that's on the ground. Aisha hates those guys that are on the ground all the time. Get up. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he'll carry his hands a little low as a pass blocker. But, you, you know, you like to see him have a little bit higher in position. But I'll tell you what, though. He 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 can he can get after a defender, and I feel like that he'll need a little work on the power. But man, you talk about when he can when he gets movement, he can make it happen up front. Really good run blocker, really good pass blocker because the athletic ability. Yeah, he's fast off the ball. I think he's really fast off the ball. His initial attack, initial punch. He has a good base, yeah. which is something I'm really learning a lot more about. Um, which is why I think he is sturdy in, in the run game. I th- and also his awareness is is pretty good. He helps out his buddy a lot, and which I I thought was dope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what my bad? Yeah, but uh, as far as the run game too, he actively wants to be. Yeah. He, he's active in the run game. He's looking for a body. He's looking. <laughs> he's trying to put somebody on the ground, and that's one of my favorite things about him. Like you did mention, you mentioned uh, the pass pro stuff, just his hands playing a little low. He kind of struggles with some of the speed rush, speed rushers uh, at tackle, but that's something that I saw from him at the Senior Bowl that he looked like as he was going on with reps. Imp- he's he's improving on that, going up against some of the best. So, so just to reset, all the chaos so far. Bryce Young, number one. C.J. Stroud to the Texans at two. The Texans then move up to three to take Will Anderson. Anthony Richardson to Indianapolis at four. Uh, Seattle, did they get robbed of their quarterback? They take Devin Witherspoon, the cornerback, and then Paris Johnson to the Arizona Cardinals. Things wild enough for you so far? Throwing ah, you off? I love it. Right? No, it's fantastic. It is kind of nuts, dude. I told you mocks <laughs> were going to be destroyed. This year, more than any, I got, mocks are going to be destroyed. Out of the draft magazine that we published here, the Star Magazine Draft Guide, I got four of the first four mocks right. I got all four of the first picks right. But then Witherspoon screwed it all up, okay. and I guarantee I won't get another one right. Okay, it, so happen. if you're in the Cowboys war room, let's just do a little Cowboys reset. 
what are you thinking so far? Or are you like Kyle and you're like, yeah, we knew the names in order. We just didn't know exactly what teams. Anything changing up your game plan whatsoever? What are you thinking? Yeah, I, I don't think the names that have gone would be surprising to them. I think this is about the collection of guys you would expect to be gone. Uh, where they've been assigned is maybe a little bit of the question. And, and some of the movement, how does yeah. that change things? What Philly does at 10 might start changing some things up. Uh, if anything, maybe the, the surprise would be that, uh, and again, we'll see how far it goes, but the surprise might be that you've gotten out of the top six, Jalen Carter's still there. Because um, I think a lot of people thought maybe five, six range he could he could get taken. So, But overall, I, I don't think they've been impacted by much yet, but it's, I mean, it's going to start heating up here soon. All right, now we have the Raiders on the board with the number seven selection, then Atlanta, Chicago, and the Philadelphia Eagles at number 10. Brought us any feel on where the Raiders maybe needs. ending up? Yeah, they uh, were they were trying. You know, they were one of those teams early that was trying to figure out a way to get a quarterback. You know, so that that seems to kind of be out of the out of the loop. Now, I, I wonder if though, if this like, I wonder if if maybe that Will Levis might be in play here for them. So we'll we'll see. I mean, the pick is in right now. Yeah, but this was a team that was actively trying to go up. At one point, and it just seemed like they were kind of getting blocked in that uh, in that regard. So we'll see if they if their quarterback is actually there. So in the pre-show, you were talking a lot about you know stability, getting me a safe pick. This from Warren Sharp. Total, and this is a compliment to the Cowboys too. Total snaps played in the last five years by the draft picks of the teams who took them. The Cowboys are number one by a ton. Ninety-two thousand snaps played by Dallas Cowboys players in the last five years. The second most is Minnesota. That They're 6,000 snaps behind. The team with the least amount of snaps? The Raiders. 11,900 snaps compared to 92,000 yeah. for the Cowboys. The least amount of snaps because all the legal issues and all the problems – you might want to be safe and stable here with your pick. They, they they had a situation with the Raiders that that with Mike Mayock and they're driving John Gruden there. John and I known each other a long time. They've busted on a lot of first round picks. Yeah, and they've busted on some second round picks along the way too. That's robbed them of any opportunity to uh, to be really to be really good. And they've they've tend to to err on the side of traits. I mean, we've seen them take tradey yeah. players that have the the overarching length or speed or strength. Who's that guy right now? It might be Tyree Wilson, who's in terms of a safe pick. If you wanted to, to yeah. put the traits along with being safe, I don't think Carter would kind of fit both of those. Yeah, we got to eliminate Jalen Carter. You yeah. think, right? Yeah. It, Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech would fit that mold. Peter Skaronsky from from Northwestern, not a tradey guy, but he's fundamentally sound. He doesn't have the long arms that you would anticipate. Wilson would make a lot of sense. Wilson, there's there's been some buzz too though about him and his like some teams have medically flagged him for okay. stuff. Um, but Wilson's good. Um, I, I mean, I know there's a lot of people who are terrified of the run defense, but like I mean, he he is a he looks like a lab designed pass rusher, right? There's everything that you you would want oh, physically he's, to pass he's rushers. He's a beautiful Tyree looking Wilson. player. Yeah, gosh, he's beautiful. It makes yeah. me mad because I it's feel like every one. position every position has Gorgeous. like in this draft. There's a guy at every position that you're like, oh, that's that's the that's prototype. what he looks that's like. That's what he looks like. That's yeah. the mold. Prototypical. Right. All right. The commissioner Roger Goodell coming out with the selection for the Raiders. That was for you, Chris Berman. <laughs> <laughs> with the seventh pick. In the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Tyree Wilson. Ah, there we go. Texas Tech. You better, you better be on point. Kyle said it first. Uh, well, you better be on point, Kyle. I'm, I'm not looking at Twitter, by the way, just so everybody knows. Twitter. I do not look at Twitter on draft night. But I like Tyree Wilson as a pick a lot. I mean, you talk about prototypical edge rusher. Oh, I love the outfit. Long, lanky. Look at oh, the yeah. shades. Yeah, look at got, the necklace. He's got some swag. Yeah. No doubt about it. Crazy link to his body. He moves with control, has a good get off, strong hands, multiple pass rush moves. Not just the bull rush to his game, even though he, that was kind of his early tape. His 2020, 21 tape was, let me just win with strength and length. Now he can win with a bit of finesse, too, which I think is something that he'll he'll continue 
to to refine as he gets to the professional level. He always put up solid numbers, but once he finally added to that toolbox that we continue to mention, he had a better season in 2022. He had a wild 50 pressures for the Red Raiders. 50 pressures. Wow. He was in the backfield almost every snap. Not really, but every snap you could really look at. He was in the backfield a lot. I watched him against Texas. Good offensive line. Destroyed him. TCU, good offensive line. Got after him. I think Tyree Wilson is a phenomenal pick, and he did a great job uh, not only dressing for the part, but I think he's built for the part to go to to Vegas and, and disrupt some offense. He almost threw Goodell off the stage. I'll tell you what, one day they're going to pick Roger Goodell up, and he's going to hurt his back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet, if we're being honest. What do you have for the Guns Up scouting report? Uh, let me give you that Guns Up scouting report right now. I'll tell you what, I really do like the player here. I, his... This is some really, really fun tape to watch when when and, and Kyle, I feel like got him absolutely right when you when you look at his ability and what he can do and all that. But man, it, it was one of those things where I was kind of thinking at one time like was did he look better than Will Anderson? Playing. We you had know, that conversation. We, I mean, I absolutely had that conversation about him. Six six two seventy one, ideal weight. Height combination. He's listed as a linebacker, but he'll play defensive end in the NFL. He was a transfer from Texas A&M, actually. So mm -hmm. A&M let another guy go. But here you go, man. He will push the blockers right into the backfield easily. Uh, he could stand up. He could put his hand in the dirt. He comes off well. He'll control blockers. He's got the upper body strength. When it comes to rushing the passer, he can change, uh, uh, charge the corner easily, get around it, no problem. Arm over, rip, inside charge, disruptive the way he plays. He's got a feel for how to knock in the ball of the quarterback's hand. You get him in the pocket, he's swatting at the ball right there. And he did that a couple of different times against Kansas State in the tape I watched. Well done. Uh, now, the next four picks, Atlanta, Chicago, Philly, and the Tennessee Titans. Bobby, you got something over there? Yeah, just an update. Uh, there was a little bit more compensation on the Detroit-Arizona trade. So Detroit also uh, got pick 168, and Arizona also got 81. When do we talk about wow. Jalen Carter falling too much? His agent, Drew Rosenhaus, said, we're coming to the draft. We're sitting in that green room. Uh, and you would think someone told him, yo, man, you ain't getting past us. Uh, this was the best player in the draft before a lot of the off-the-field concerns. We're also approaching what some people believe is Bijan territory with the Bears. Bobby, you said earlier that Atlanta, the, too. Atlanta's Atlanta, a, yeah, Atlanta's Atlanta. a threat. I think Atlanta's a threat. And their pick threat. is in, by the way. The pick is in. What are we looking at for Falcons team needs? Uh, are they settled at quarterback? Am I forgetting an addition there? I mean, they have Going Desmond, Desmond Ritter. Ritter. Uh, you know, is there any Will Levis connection or talk here? With Atlanta, you really feel good about Des was Desmond Ritter a third or fourth? Uh, third. third, third. Okay, so you could you could feel decent about trying out your third round pick. You know, is it too early in their process to go get a running back? That to me doesn't make sense in terms of the timeline. Uh, what else are Atlanta team needs, and is there someone just screaming off of your board? Uh, you should go up there and get. If I'm Atlanta, maybe I'm thinking about taking a phone call to move back as well. There, there are ways away. What I, I mean, the the two I think two of the names we were hearing chatter about this. Which, early, by the way, I'm sorry, they're not going to take a phone call because the pick is in. <laughs> we the two of the names we were chatter about here were, would be like we heard some Nolan Smith here, we heard yeah. Bijan Robinson here. Um, which honestly, if you would have said that two months ago, people probably would have said Nolan Smith's not going that high, Bijan Robinson's yeah. not going that high, and they very well could be in play here. So I think those are two names to know. Yeah, maybe they do look at Will Levis and just say, hey, he's sitting here. We thought he was going to go somewhere in the top four. You gotta you gotta take a chance on the quarterback, but I I know I, I was hearing a lot of chatter that this could be Bijan. I, I've also seen edge rusher as a popular pick here. Uh, Bucky Brooks had Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa here, mocked oh, in his most recent. Go for it, yes. Uh, Lance Zerline. <laughs> uh, no, we want him to go with ten. Remember? Oh. Uh, Lance Erline had Miles Murphy here recently. I mean, these are Miles Murphy is the one guy that's gonna. I mean, every I've, I've seen all these mocks now where he's like he's after Dallas picks at twenty six. I mean, which me, could happen. Yeah, I man, I, I do, is he one of those guys? I know we're we're gonna get down to twenty six, but if you're if an edge rusher is the fourteenth best player on your board, mm. don't, don't you? Wouldn't that be the best player on your board? I have a first round grade. I would talk about it. I, I would, would absolutely, absolutely talk, talk about, about it. it. Yeah, I would too. Can I ask a 
probably stupid question. No. For gambler. No stupid question. There's no such thing. For exactly. The, for the gambler, Jerry Jones, and the need at D-tackle, how far does he have to drop to mm. pick up the phone? We did a mock draft yesterday, right? <laughs> yes, we did. We did a mock draft where we, we, we started to sweat it. At what pick twenty? I think it was sixteen. We were talking about. Okay, it. okay, yeah, I knew we yeah. were. We were. It, Bobby, get out your calculator while they're talking about this of what that would cost. It maybe. Would, it was, so in order to no, no, get we up, did this. We in, did this in, as yeah, an we exercise. Did it. Okay. So in order to get up to sixteen, you couldn't get to fifteen without packaging another pick. But you could get your second round pick, and you could get up to sixteen, and it would be a little bit of an overpay, but that's enough for Washington to say we're getting out. So second round pick sixteen. If you wanted to get in the early 20s, it would probably take your third round pick and maybe package something in just for a little bit of an overpay. And how many of you guys in the exercise signed off on it? We All kept trying. Me. We got. We, <laughs> yeah. He was not. Yeah, Bobby wanted against, nothing to do with it, but we're we, on it. But what happened is we kept getting turned down. Those Falcons. All right, here comes Atlanta with the pick at the podium from Roger Goodell. They're not going to go run and pack this early. Watch them. Are they? I was. That's all I heard for the last week. They're not going to go Bijan already. It's a special a special uh, presentation where's of, my pin? of the uh, selections. Do it. Uh, here we go with the Falcons selection. Atlanta Falcons pick. I'm joined by Chris and Shane from Big Brothers Big Sisters of Kansas City. Chris and Shane are a true testament to the power of mentorship. The NFL and its teams work closely with Big Brothers Big Sisters of America as part of our work on social justice through our initiative, Inspire Change. The Falcons are big time supporters of the organization and they're thrilled to have Chris and Shane making their pick. Okay guys, take it away. Y'all, we got some news too. Oh my. With the eighth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select B. John Robinson, running back Texas. Not only that. Don't start. Tom Pelissero has just reported the Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock at nine. Philly has moved up for someone. They went up one or they went up 21? One. Oh, okay. If they went up one, somebody just... Did they, did just they flip were, it? That, they, I mean, if that's what it is, they just held them hostage. They pro, I'm guessing they went Jalen Carter. You think they moved I'm up for Jalen Carter? Yeah. Carter, well, Carter's who had guess. Is that that's Chicago's what I would guess, I would too. guess Chicago's threatening to take him. All right. Let's come back with the Bijan reaction. Who did Philadelphia move up for? It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. All right, guys. B. John Robinson and Philadelphia moving up to number nine. What do you think about the running back, the Longhorn, Bobby's guy, going to the ATL? I don't get it for the process, really, personally, Kyle. Okay. Uh, you're, you're a long ways away. Uh, you know, you, you, you want your you, you want your top round picks, right? As Steven sure. said, your top 15 to the top round to be two contract guys. You know, I'm part of the anti running back establishment that's out there. I've been brainwashed into believing it. It just doesn't make sense to me for the timeline and where Atlanta is. So I disagree with it. There's, there's nothing wrong with the anti running back bias. There's just something wrong with the anti Bijan bias. Bijan Robinson is a special player. He's somebody that deserves to be in the top eight. He's somebody that's going to be a weapon on your offense for years to come. You have the fifth year option. If he makes it to that second contract, which I think he will because he is that type of player, he's a cornerstone piece for your offense. And we live in a day and an age of the NFL right now to where it's not unusual to build around an empty quarterback position and then go find you a quarterback. Look what the Jets just did. Look at what the Rams did a couple years ago by going and getting Matthew Stafford. It happens. Atlanta has some young nucleus now. Atlanta has some pieces. One thing they didn't have on offense was an overarching playmaker, and you get that with a guy like B. John Robinson because now you can build around him and you can be very comfortable with him carrying the workload through at least one season, but then he's going to get some help, and I think it elevates your offense to a whole new level. So, Aisha, you've been talking about your childhood and uh, your your age. Uh, these guys on this side of the table offended me greatly. 
And I think they turned me against B. John Robinson when I heard. This guy's Barry Sanders. When I heard that name <laughs> come out of Brian Broaddus' mouth and Bobby Bell sign off, they turned me and they, they, they scarred a piece of my childhood watching Barry Sanders. Broaddus take it. I'll tell you what, man. This, this guy, he's, he's my third best player in the draft. I don't care what you say, Sean. This guy's got rare ability. I, he really does. He's always going forward. He's got the vision to see the hole. He attacks it. He's got patience. He can allow the blocks to develop. He works right behind him. He's a hard guy to get on the ground due to his running style. He's very powerful in the lower body. He'll just bounce off tacklers. I haven't seen anybody get a great shot on him uh, when he's carrying the ball. He can score from anywhere on the field. He makes small plays into big plays, soft hands to catch the ball. I've seen him make catches lined up wide, finish on the route. He's got really good adjustment to the ball in those situations. I said this. He reminds me of a Barry Sanders type player with his his body control, his balance, and his explosiveness. Roberto, you sign off on that? You agree? Yes. I know. I mean, honestly, B. John Robinson, I mean, when you look at everything in terms of the athleticism, the size profile, the contact balance, the vision, the burst, the receiving ability. I mean, across the board, he is just about as perfect as it gets as at running back. I know everybody keeps saying he's the best running back prospect since St. Quan Barkley. I just I think he's a better prospect than even Barkley was coming out. I just think he's that's why he was number one to me. You know, I can be talked into it more when I hear the Debo Samuel comparisons of Hey, let's just line them up at different positions. The guy is that outstanding as a receiver as well. Are you buying some of that, Aisha? Oh, yeah, especially with the burst, the the vision that, that uh, Brian talked about and just how hard it is, like – he certain running backs understand angles, and I I think he understands how to make linebackers take bad angles, make corners take, and that's a that's a he kind of can see what's happening in front of him, and that's why I think he has the ability to be a home run hitter at any point in time. And now the Eagles are about to make a selection. I'm hurting y'all. Are we all going to be nauseous here? Yep. Yeah, because then you got to go get a inside offensive lineman. All right, Bijan Robinson to the Atlanta Falcons. So the Longhorn fans like Bobby Belt can go and get some ATL gear. And what could be really bad news, the Philadelphia Eagles have moved up. They've traded up with Chicago to be on the clock at number nine. The pick is in Kyle Yeomans. Our nightmare scenario would be what? Jalen Carter. That would be your, your nightmare scenario at, at nine because – you end up having B. John Robinson, right? He's off the board. That's a good thing. You don't have to deal with him twice a year. I don't think it's it's out of the question that this is Jalen Carter. I'm interested, Bobby, you talked about it. Holding the the Bears holding Jalen Carter or whoever this pick ends up being. Yep. Over the head of the Eagles that are sitting behind them. They only get a fourth round next year. That's what the compensation mm-hmm. was. A twenty twenty four fourth round pick to move up one spot. That's all it took. How often does that happen? Because I don't think it happens a ton, right? Where you get the the one pick held hostage yeah. or a pick behind you. I, I most famously happened with San Francisco and Chicago when they wanted Trubisky. I remember that. That, that was the, the most, only and they, and they got I a hear. big haul out of that. Yeah. They've also been tied to Nolan Smith. Aisha, why were you shaking your head over Kyle and Jalen Carter? Well, no, because they because Philly being greedy right now. This, <laughs> I mean, come on. Hey, this is come why on. How you we got to admit. What their general manager is. Here we go with the pick. The Eagles moving up for what? The Chicago Bears have traded the ninth pick to the Philadelphia Eagles. With the ninth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jalen Carter, defensive tackle, Georgia. Great pick. (laughs) That's a great pick. Maybe. I think it's a great pick. Yeah, that's that's the number one player I'm, on my now, board. Now I'm going to side with Bobby. It's a terrible yeah, now pick. That he's, now that's that he's a bad a, pick. Not that, it's not that he's a terrible pick. It's no. the the idea. He is incredibly talented. Like, just on talent alone, he's the number two player to me in this draft. But there are way too many questions about this guy and his work ethic and his football character for – me to have ever felt comfortable taking him in the top 10 or giving up draft capital to go up there and take that risk. W- one thing to, to add to this, though, they with those questions. Four. With, no, but I'm talking about when we were talking about Dallas going up. Dallas I was, I was bringing it back to that. Brian, you know, we talked about this over the summer. I told Brian how much chatter I was hearing that Jalen Carter had problems. This is, this is yeah. something that we've known about for a long time, and it just gets louder and louder and louder, and then you see him 
run into the trouble that he did that almost cost him the combine. Then yep. you see him go into his pro day, gaining weight, not able to finish drills. It's To me, it's just if he booms, great, but it's not a sure thing. He is concerning to me. You're, you're making me feel better, which is great. But, Bobby, does it not worry you – for Jalen Carter's specific situation, mm-hmm. he now has Jordan Davis, who, of course, he spent the 2021 season oh, with, oh, right mm-hmm. next to him. Yeah. So <laughs> that's when he was his his most productive. That's when he had his best tape outside of, of course, he still had fantastic tape in 2022. Yeah, I thought he was. But be- I thought he's better in 21. For the lack of, I'm uh, same here. But yeah. for the lack of a better term. He has a babysitter. He has a guy. He has somebody that's at least been in the year right now for, uh, or in the league for a year at this point. Do you th- does that make his situation a little bit better to you? Uh, no, because I mean, I, I mean, it's nice that he has a teammate who's worked with him before. But I don't know that I would want to put the the uh, his like ride his ability to hit off of a second year player and just say, hey, be his babysitter. Sure. I, I think that that's be a mentor. I, I think that that's apart. a danger. And we don't know that Jordan Davis is some, hey, I can take control of this type of big brother mentor. I mean, he may be, but I don't know that I would feel comfortable giving that to him. Now, Bro- Broadus, tell him why you disagree. And by the way, it was a fourth to yeah, move on one spot. Next, year's next, year's fourth, year's next year, just a flip. He and Roger Goodell just did an interesting handshake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you see that? It was like a LeBron handshake. Yeah, yeah, he had worked LeBron. out. Yeah, th- th- this guy right here. Again, I, I'm sending Butchie to Athens, George. I said I was going to do it. I was in the top ten. I was going to figure this guy out because the tape is just too good. I understand what Bobby is talking about with the maturity stuff. You know, it's like it when that stuff went down at the Combine, uh, there were people texting me saying, I told you about this player. Bobby's right. Bobby was at the Combine. Bobby was talking to people. I'm just going to say this about this kid. He's got power, and the way he plays with that power, it's a problem. It is a problem. You better have somebody that, like a, a Zach Martin that could sit down on him and hold him in place because he can control the blocker. He's going to get his hands inside first, and he's going to win a lot that way. He doesn't play the game very tall. His knees will bend, and he plays with balance, and he'll chase it when it goes away. The maturity issues and all that stuff, it's an absolute concern, Bobby. But when you watch this guy play, when he hits ball carriers, they go flying. And he just plays with so much power that it's hard for me to to not see that and I could try and deal with the other stuff. Aisha, should we be feeling sick as Cowboy fans? I'm not in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not in the mood uh and I understand why they, they did it. Of course, you got Fletcher Cox on that side that's starting to get longer in the tooth. I assumed that Jordan Davis was his replacement, but just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, and so for for me, I, I think it is important for you to start looking at your guard position as the Cowboys because if you got to deal mm. with them, Mike McCarthy talked about wanting to run the ball. I think I don't know if they're going to be doing a lot of like power on power, but again, like Brian said, this guy chases. This guy's not afraid to to pursue the ball. He, I, I think his motor is high too, so I I don't feel like having to deal with him. Where but we where, don't have to sound like. Where was Jalen Carter on everyone's board overall? One, two, two, two. four, four, and you said two, two. Oh man, here we go. He's a good player. He's a good He's player. A really, really good player. Is he a good player. Or is he gonna be a great player? He could be a great player. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't want to put that on him immediately, but he better always, than Jordan Davis coming out. Yes. yes. I, I always thought. I always thought that Philadelphia was going to use this pick on a quarterback. A quarter quarterback. I mean, they they got this first round pick like two years ago. Yeah. Basically, they've kept the ability to have the flexibility to keep the you know they keep having the pick before the before the hurt yeah, season. Yeah. They yeah. kept moving. They kept moving. They kept moving the pick. Yep. And they they made sure they always had a second round pick. Or excuse me, a, a second first round pick yep. in hand. Yep. They went to the Super Bowl last year and they just added Jalen Carter. That's that's. That, to me, is team building right there. With another pick at 31. Exactly. With another exactly. selection at 31. The Bears are on the clock, and the pick is in. 
We thinking anything obvious for Chicago, Kyle? Offensive line, they need to protect J- Justin Fields. Please. They need to get somebody up front. It's been mocked. Uh, I mean, Daniel Jeremiah, Charles Davis, Bucky Brooks, Peter Skaronsky from Northwestern. It's, a, we, it's backyard, we, right? We even had it because he's, he's he comes from Northwestern, played in the Chicago area. It would just be a perfect fit. He's the best offensive lineman on my board right now. I think there's a potential he's the selection here. If they, Oh, they did make the pick. So they the did? Pick, the pick is in. So they may uh, be as quick. Quick as Kyle just thought. Here we go. NFL draft. The Chicago Bears select Darnell Wright. Ooh. Tackle, it's your boy, Brian. That's my guy right there. I'm happy for that kid. And you know what? You watch him play. I said this earlier when we were doing the pre-draft stuff. And if you watch the draft show with all my scout buddies here, this guy right here, you can watch highlights of him just eliminate some of the Will Andersons and some of the best defensive, some of the edges in the league or they're playing in college football right now. It says dominated elite competition. That's him. That's that's that's, that's probably one of the big reasons why they went and went ahead and went up and got him because yeah. of the competition. You can't yeah. deny who he's had to go up against and the experience he's gotten with some of these pass rushers. He's probably going to see in the league again. He mauls. Like, yes. like he he is he is a violent like bulldozer. <laughs> this is the this is the first when you asked earlier said what are the Cowboys doing sit back. This is the first one where they're throwing a pen. Is Darnell right? This yep. is the guy they liked a well, lot. Well, and this was one of those ones. The more that we got involved, the more draft shows we did. It was. It became so clear because we couldn't find other offensive tackles. You know, you couldn't. You're like, well, you know, you're squinting real hard. Well, man, I keep watching this Darnell Wright play, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, man, where does he fit on this board? And so, I know on my board, I has the 19th best overall player. That's probably too damn low for for the way that that's this guy really really plays. But I, I'm happy for him. And what's amazing is Peter Skaronsky, and maybe the short armed, the short armed yeah. guard who everybody really, really likes, is uh, maybe he's taking a little tumble. And maybe Sean, that's one of those guys. If he got to a certain level, that you make that move up to try and maybe go get that would I'd that be all in on that. that I would that, do that too. That would fix your left guard problem for I sure. I would love that, and that would tie us back to the. Warts press conference. Yeah, oh. short this arms. was a Linderbaum. This was a Linderbaum conversation yeah. last year. A Tyler Linderbaum conversation. I still love Tyler Linderbaum. Well, his butt wasn't big enough, or he wasn't he was heavy short. enough. He was short. We were staying away from Linderbaum, and Jerry was talking about <laughs> the Warts uh, last year. That's what I remember from the conversation. Can I, can I, I, I mean, I mean, really? Skaronsky, Skaronsky doesn't have. Like a, a an issue in terms of his bulk or anything. It's just the the length. The arms. It's the, the arms. arms, and so that's why a lot of people. That's a wart. That's a wart. Yeah, right, but right, right. It's just a small. But one. is that as a, but Two warts. if you move him into guard, does that minimize? I'm asking you, Brian, like from a football perspective. Well, yeah, I mean, you like, like I say, it's it's one of those things you want to extend. You want to be able to have that ability to get those blockers off you, but that you know that it it it's it's. Because it's such a confined area guard, you could play it quick and just get your hands inside. At tackle, you got to keep the guys off so you can keep them wide. You know what I'm saying? So you can so they don't get on you to get around. Inside, it's a little bit more about quickness. So if you can fire your hands inside, you can kind of control the guy right there. So short arms are a little bit better inside than they are on the outside. I there. hope you all just got that breakdown on, on TV just then. I hope you just got that. The movement, the movement. The Brian brought us tutorial oh, with yeah. the offensive no, it, line. To me, it's like when you deal with when you deal inside, you're dealing with like more quickness. So it's about quick hands. Yeah. It's not about getting guys off you. Can I read Darno Wright real quick? No. Sure. You, you mind? Is that possible? Yeah. I, just because I mean, he's a massive player. He's more of a bully than a real athlete. He's a mauler, brawler type of player. He'll do anything to finish his block. Not afraid to throw his weight around. He does. He, I mean, he doesn't really get extended on his man, but he's almost belly to belly in order to gain leverage. And he likes to push, shove his guy, and then dive on top of him when he's on the ground. He's a really nasty guy when it comes to that. He doesn't take anything from anybody. I, I used a cuss word there, but I'm not going to do it on air. <laughs> and so, but <laughs> Thank this, you. this is one of these guys. Like when it looks like that he's out of balance, he somehow gets back in balance. And I, I, I just love the way that this guy plays. I I totally get what the Bears did here. Congratulations. You got a hell of a football player. By the way, you talk about flying under the radar from a media standpoint and how he wasn't necessarily looked at early as an, a top 10 pick. Guess who was his head coach at the Senior Bowl in Mobile? 
offensive coordinator for the Bears, Mr. Luke Getze. There you go. So there you go. There's your connection. He had him in, in Mobile. He had him at the Senior Bowl. He got to see all of this power, the technique, the motor ability, the finish, the nastiness, all of these things along the way. And by the way, I had a curse word in my scouting report as well. I won't yeah. use that one on air either. <laughs> but he does bring that, that high motor, that yeah. intensity, and the flexibility. They needed a guy like Darnell Wright. So the fact that he's the pick here, not surprising. I still had Peter Skaronsky rated higher. I don't think the arms really bother me as much, but I still think Darnell Wright is one big-time pick and a great fit for the Bears. Kyle Yeomans, Aisha Morrison, Brian Broaddus, I'm Sean Sharif, and we have Bobby Belt as they're applauding the Titans pick. Look, this has been a very interesting team and a team that's been talked about an awful lot. Uh, blow up, rebuild, Tannehill on the block. Where, where does Tennessee go here at number 11? I, I mean, it's this Levis. <laughs> watch watch Levis brought us, it, brought us again here. with the video. Based, he, he's telling you where to go, where to throw. Based off of that reaction, that wasn't a, we got a really good corner reaction. That yeah. looked like we got a, a, a franchise quarterback This team reaction. is trying to get – this team, they've got a new stadium in line. Yeah. they got a brand-new general manager that's trying to change the culture here. You know, I mean, that's a team that has had some success. Well, they lose like seven or eight straight games. They beat they beat Green Bay on a Thursday night yeah. after Dal- uh, Dallas lost the game on a Sunday there, and then beat the beat the Packers on a Thursday night. Uh, I I just think that maybe the quarterbacks would play here. I had heard they were hoping Stroud would slide some, and that they could go up. Yeah, you think this is Levis? I mean, they were looking at quarterback earlier, so I get. I mean, that makes the most sense, I guess. Just looking Tennessee, at Tennessee, Kentucky, they're like neighboring states, <laughs> aren't they? Let's yeah, see let's yeah, see they if, are. Let's see if Aisha's, Kentucky's on top of Tennessee. Let's okay, see if Aisha's well, yeah. guy goes right here. Uh, Will Levis can make her give us a scouting report when that <laughs> happens. So petty. She she's got to go back to her 12th page she's of scouting. Gonna, she's gonna go. She's gonna go. Like I, I can't believe they made this pick. Yeah. So <laughs> the Titans are about to make the selection. Derrick Henry on the block. Last year at this time, they traded A.J. Brown to the NFC East. Are they going to get a new quarterback, or could they be going somewhere else? What do we know about their general manager and regime there? Yeah, it's the it, new one? It, yeah, it's, it's Rand Carthon and, and uh, his dad. No, uh, the old one, Bobby. <laughs> Tell me about the old regime. We're on the dot-com side. <laughs> <laughs> Brought us... What, yeah, what Grant you know Yeah, new. Uh, uh, I tell you what, highly respected guy in the league. He's got a really good eye for talent. First opportunity here. I, you know, I, I've, I Mike Vrabel is one of my favorite coaches in this league. By the way, he's got to be frustrated. No, yeah, yeah, he does. And well, let's see. Uh, the commissioner's walking this thing to the podium. Let's see what's going on. In the 2023 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select. Peter Skaronski. Oh! Offensive tackle, Northwestern. Well, they introduced him as a tackle. They sure did. Vrabel in the trenches. Let's get the Skaronski scouting report. And who do we have on the clock now after all the craziness? The Detroit. Lions. The Detroit Lions are on the clock, previously held down by the Texans. This is the 2023 NFL Draft. Cowboys at 26. We're on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. All right, Peter Skaronsky. I got him. You talk about play any spot along the offensive line. They introduced him as a tackle. He could play guard. He could play wherever. On the field, he dominated from the moment he stepped on campus, earned plenty of experience after replacing former first-round pick Rashawn Slater. His NFL build is ready, but would probably fit inside at guard better than he would at tackle because of the length of the arms. That was the one thing against him. He works like a battering ram at some times. He doesn't always look calculated in his movements, but he's he's clean in his footwork. He just looks like he wants to go and hit somebody. <laughs> he always looks for that next level, which is a good thing, but you got to keep it under control. And I think with a good coaching staff in a right situation, he would do that. He's got a great body for an offensive tackle. Offensive guard doesn't mat- doesn't matter too much. You got to talk about the the durability too. He played 880 snaps last season and allowed just one sack. I like the pick a lot. He was my number one offensive lineman. You, you got the pick right. We thought he was maybe going – or the, this team was going for a quarterback. I thought the quarterback was in play here but for sure. They they got a, a really, really good cornerstone offensive line piece to, to build against. And we're going guard or tackle? Yeah, it could be either way. Either way. Either way. They, they listed him and they listed him as a uh, 
as a uh, tackle as a tackle here. Yeah. So that's that seems to be the plan for them. By the way, his grandfather was Bob Skaronsky, who is in the Packers Hall of Fame. Packer Hall of Famer. I think his dad. Is his dad? His grandpa. I think it's his grandpa. I can just hear John Madden. Sk- you know, Sk- Skaronsky is just that's an offensive lineman. You know, that's a name. Look, in the trenches. Skaronsky. Skaronsky. All right. How about this though, guys? We hadn't had a wide receiver taken yet. Not a thing. single one. Listen, listen, listen. All right, which uh, it was grandfather, by the way. My first one is at is at twelve. Who do you got? Who's your first receiver? Jackson Smith and Jigba. It's a good player. Now this wide like receiver it. class is what? Short. <laughs> yes. Good <And> luck. <laughs> good luck. Be it, nice. It, no, I'm saying good luck in a way because I think it was a difficult one to have to evaluate. It was. I thought you were saying because to... they were at the end of the rainbow. I thought that's what you said. No. Good luck. Heck no. I'm telling you, man. With the bow tie, too. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I had to move my camera down. I used to get my uh, my face on this thing. But, I mean, to me, th- this has been the problem. Hold up. We got the Lions making okay. their pick. Here we go. Oh, Running back, Alabama. Whoa. So two running backs in the first 12 picks. Two running backs in the first 12 picks. You just heard it. Gibbs, Alabama. Yeah. Honestly, dude, in that offense, it could be he fun. might get busy. Quiet is kept, man. The Lions, the Lions offense really was good last year. Well, <laughs> how does this work with DeAndre Swift? Didn't they lose a guy? Didn't they lose one of the They backs? lost Jamal Williams, but they still have DeAndre Swift. I mean, where do you are you doing a two headed backfield here? What's yep. going Matt on? Matt Millen's back to draft in there where they drafted multiple <laughs> wide receivers and multiple backs and wow. stuff like that. Wow. Jamal Charles has a comp. Jamal Charles has a comp. That's why I'm telling you what, man, this cat I had him as my sixteenth best player. Mm. He's a my, good player. On my board. And I'll tell you what, there's there's things about him that it, if you're if you're one of those teams that like has a screen game and throws to your backs or put him out wide. You can throw this guy tunnel screens. You can throw him swings. You can throw him like he, he has a real feel for how to get out in the backfield. He can break tackles uh, once he gets in the open field. I'll tell you what, I, for, I, hey, for all you folks that are all running back, ooh, we can't take a running back. <laughs> well, two just, just went. Just talked about you, Sean. Yeah, two just went in the top 12. Yeah. Okay? You know what I'm talking about? And they're about? worthy of going that high, too. Yeah. That's well, the other part of it. It's about getting. It's about getting football players. It's about getting guys. It's not always about second contracts. It's about playing with these guys and winning games now. That's what it's about. You know, that we don't play in an era anymore where there's no free agency. and all. I mean, we don't do that. But I'm just saying, though, this kid right here, you watch him catch the ball. You watch him break tackles. You watch him, you watch him uh, pass block. He'll slide across. There's a lot of times where, where Young had the ability to throw the football because this kid stepped up and made a good block. He's a great escape plan. Yeah. Like if you need if you need somebody to come back fight fight to the ball for you make something happen he's the dude and for him to transfer from Georgia Tech and to go to Alabama and yeah. be successful says something about him as a player. Let's get back to the wide receiver discussion. Oh lordy! That we were just about to have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh man, isn't this fun? This is fantastic. We're sitting here at the Ford Center of the Star in Frisco, brought to you by Miller Lite. And in case you're just joining us, the Eagles move up one spot to get Jalen Carter at number nine. Uh, And then brought us his boy, the offensive tackle from the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, Darna Wright goes to the Chicago Bears. Peter Skaronsky goes to the Tennessee Titans. And then Bobby Belt, a second running back, Goes in the top 12, Gibbs out of Alabama, and we have the Green Bay Packers. on The, the pick is in here. These teams aren't wasting time tonight. This we're, might be, we're halfway to Dallas. Yeah, this might be Jones. I, I keep talking about Jones from yeah, Georgia. You mentioned or, it. Or Jones or Smith and Jigba. I think those are the two names that they're looking at right now. I'm Mock Smith and Jigba here. I think that would be a phenomenal fit. You're going to a new regime. You got Jordan Love at quarterback. Go get him a weapon yeah. or go get him some protection. Packers Build around him. Packers don't like to do that. Yeah, ask ask uh, the new New York Jets. What, like what, what type of message would that send to the guy that just left you? 
Let's go get Screw this new you. guy. Exactly. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. We're on the radio. On That's your thing. Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. I could say it on my station. <laughs> I don't know about DallasCowboys.com. Oh, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Rogers would just send out that eye roll emoji, like the eyes up. Like, of course now you're going to go and get a receiver. I think this like I, said, I think this is Jones, the offensive tackle from Georgia, or Smith and Jigba. That would be my prediction. Back to the uh, Lions for yeah. just a second. <laughs> Do they know – they already have DeAndre Swift and just signed David Montgomery. Is he played it, receiver it for them? Look like is that it. what Jameer Gibbs is doing? Is he going to play in the slot? I'm telling you, Matt Millen's back. Matt Millen's back to drafting multiple positions. Are you, tra- are you trading DeAndre Swift this weekend? Yeah, what's uh, That's maybe a good what, point. Maybe it's whatever the plan is with Montgomery. How, how much should they pay him? How much they just they pay paid him? him. Like he was the third. He got like six. They million paid him a lot. Like he was like second to Tony Pollard, right? Yeah. Look, this is an up and coming. People are loving the Lions this year. That there's an opening in this they're division. Gonna win. They're going to win the North. The mm. Lions, I think, are going to win the North. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying Jerry Goff from prediction. last year. I'm not. I'm out. I'm not buying it. Um, but look, let's talk about these. But he's got your Mayor Gibbs that run the football. Do you really need? <laughs> do you need Jerry Goff anymore? Let's talk about the receivers now. We just had a yeah. fun Jalen Carter Cowboy conversation. He's now in Philadelphia. Everyone wants to keep giving Dak Prescott some help. We've talked about this wide receiver class. Let's finish up that discussion on how you would describe the class. No wideouts off the board. What does your board of receivers look like? And when would you start thinking about picking up the phone if you're in that war room right down the hall? Yeah, I got Addison from USC as the number one guy. Smith and Jigba, two. And then Johnston from TCU, three. Those are all first-round grades on my board. Johnston would be the last first-round grade I have at number 20. And I'm, I'm very close to that. I flip Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's number one for me at 14, but Jordan Addison is 15. So this is right around where I would anticipate the first wide receiver to go. I think Jackson Smith and Jigba would be a great fit with the, the, the Packers. Third on my list is Quinton Johnston, and then Zay Flowers is right behind him. Both of those are second-round grades, early second-rounders, 26, 39, or, or where they are overall on my, my board. Oh, yeah. I have uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba at 12, uh, Jordan Addison at 16. There you go. And uh, next on my list is Zay Flowers uh, at 20. There you go. All right, let's see the Packers. Sorry, real quick, Aisha. The pick is in. Let's see if they send a little FaceTime message to Aaron Rodgers. With the 13th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Lucas Finesse. Defensive end, Iowa. Brian? Keep it together. <laughs> Go. I'll tell you what. Your man. former team, baby. <laughs> you know what? All along, uh, they, they, they were talking about this guy, and, I, and I, I was talking with a team that was saying that maybe they use him as an outside linebacker. They have a history of taking Iowa guys. Eric Campman was an Iowa rusher that they had for a long time there, and I'm I'm surprised, especially with well, I should be surprised with Smith and Jigba on the board because I don't they you know, I thought they maybe would take a wide receiver, but and then Jones the tackle they you know they've got a thing with Bakhtiari that they owe him a lot of money, and so I thought that they, maybe they would move on from Bakhtiari after this season and they would play Jones inside at guard, but I'll tell you what this is a guy that I have the possibility of being way 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 wrong about. I think he is a good player. I don't think he's particularly strong. And I see plays where you you see him rush the passer, and he gets there, he's finished, and then there'll be three or four plays where you don't see him at all. I watched him against Michigan. I watched him against Ohio State, two of the better offensive lines in the Big Ten. And I just I just didn't see it a really against really good competition. So I, I, I will be happy to admit if I'm wrong, but uh, I, I'm kind of grateful that he's no longer in consideration for the Dallas Cowboys. Quick trivia question for you, Sean Sharif. How many games did Lucas Van Ness start at Iowa? How many years was he there? He was a redshirt sophomore. Um, I would hope that he started 20. Nope, zero. Yep. He didn't start a game? single game. He never started at Iowa. Yep. Wow. Wow. Did you have Did everyone have uh, – Steelers are on the clock. Steelers have traded. New England has traded out. Pittsburgh has moved up. What is the – Highest or lowest that everyone had Van Ness? 41. 
Forty one. That's probably the lowest. Uh, I had him at eighteen, so I still had a first round grade on him, but it was a low first. Even though he didn't start a game, okay. Uh, he played twenty seven games. He had plenty of production. He just didn't start. Okay, that's about right. Bobby, uh, thirty. Thirty. Yeah. All right. Which he's, he's good. Like I think it was just they, it's one of the things with that rush is when you talk about Lucas Van Ness, it's a lot of it's about the power. Yep. And yep. so that I seventeen times with the weights. And wow. explosiveness, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't see for for when you look at DN. The Cowboys liked this player a ton. By the they way, did. they did. They really Van did. Ness a they lot. did. They Why? did. Yeah. <laughs> look, I, I mean, look, look. Quinn you, went and worked him out. Okay. okay if you, so, so if you want, like, all, like, I mean, I think he's a good player. I wasn't like the highest on no. him. But if you want to be devil's advocate, you would say that I, I think what they probably liked about him is there is prototype size there. He is a smart player. He is somebody who has a lot of like when you talk about the power, the size, the athleticism combo. It is rare. Uh, and I think it's somebody that they thought they would be able to pull a lot more out of than he got at Iowa. Why are the Steelers moving up here? Trading up with the New England Patriots. We know that New England loves to move. Uh, this should be, what, from 17 to 14 yeah. here in the first round. Are they? Who are they jumping? They're jumping, They're jumping the Jets or the, or the Commanders. So what are they? what do they need? A lot. They they do need a lot. Are they hunting corner? Who? Maybe Christian Pittsburgh. Gonzalez so, still on the board. I think Christian Gonzalez absolutely. But could they be thinking about Porter? Do they need they an offensive be. lineman because Jets and Commanders both could have gone offensive line? And so do they want to get up there and get Broderick Jones? Yeah, well, that's a great point. That's a great point. I, I would I would think they're either they're they're looking at Jones. The wide receiver stuff. The Steelers do a great job with oh, their wide receivers. Yes, but they they grow them like. Green Bay, but it, but it, it's funny. I don't know. I mean, do Maybe they better? Do they feel like though that going out and getting somebody like Smith and Jigba might be the best thing for them? You know, a guy that can that can kind of play at all those spots and stuff like that, help their young quarterback with some. So I the offensive line to me, if if you were asking me off my board, take Will Levis out of it, but Jones would be twelve. And then you'd start to talk about those receivers, 15, 17, and 20. There, or, or if you wanted to go grab a corner, you know, would they go up? I mean, I can say Porter, to me, makes a lot of sense. They have familiarity with the, the, the dad, the family, the family yeah. and all that. The, Gonzalez or Porter, either one of these guys would be a super This has got to be an offensive lineman to me because the drop after Jones – and you've got Jets and Commanders who both, I think, wanted offensive linemen. It, I think this is them trying to jump those two. All right. The, go ahead, Bronx. You got but something no, else but on the, it? But, the, you know, the, the, the Commanders have been the last couple mock drafts. It's been about corner. It's been about, five, about Forbes. I, I, I've i got pretty good insight into Washington. The names I kept hearing were Banks and Forbes, but that if there was an offensive lineman there they liked, they would go there. Okay. And so I know they like those two. There you go. That makes sense. All right, so the Steelers are on the clock, followed for now by That's the, right. You texted me that, didn't you? I did. I texted <laughs> okay, you yeah. and Zach that y yesterday, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Pittsburgh, <laughs> the New York Jets, Washington, New England. Cowboys still right now at 26. Here's Goodell with the Steelers pick. The New England Patriots have traded the 14th pick to the Pittsburgh Steelers. With the 14th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Roderick Jones. There you go. Offensive tackle, Georgia. Nice job, Bob. You're so smart. Well, <laughs> it's just it's dots. Like I had no idea who they were going up for at first. It's just it was more who they were jumping than anything else. All right, so let's talk about the receivers. And let's talk about the state of the tight ends. How are you feeling if you're this Cowboys war room with both right now or something else? I am surprised that not one tight end has gone yet. I, I would have thought somebody. I would have thought somebody like Kincaid or Merrick could have gone eleven to fourteen. I well, think watch the command. Well, you said about the commanders yeah. what they're looking for. I know that people had that as a mock, but I believe in what you're saying right now. I think some of the movement has affected these tight ends. I think some of the movement has allowed for the players. I mean, you look at look at the positions that have been selected right now. They are all classified outside of running back as premium positions: quarterback, edge rusher, corner, offensive tackle. That's that's about it. And then you have the two running backs sprinkled in there, but the, you could categorize them as special players, premium players, along with all these other premium positions because you haven't seen a wide receiver. You haven't seen a tight end. 
maybe it's because these classes are deep and you can maybe grab one I, I in the think, second or the third round. I think the wide receiver thing is a mess. And I think people are trying to kind of figure it out. And I don't I don't think people are really – I don't think they're totally shot in the rear about Addison, and maybe they're not totally shot in the rear about Smith and Jigba. You know, I mean, maybe they're worried a little bit about his – the medical stuff with him, you know, him missing, you know, the soft tissue stuff and things like that. But I, I, to me, I can understand why the receivers haven't gone. The corners, I don't know. That that's a has little, it been a single? No, Zal is there is really interesting. N- yeah. No corner. Witherspoon has gone. Witherspoon's oh, gone. That's true. One. But 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 if you if there's been all along there's been three corners. All along there's been three corners we've talked about. Yeah. And 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 two of them are still on the board, and we're into the fifteenth pick right now. So now, if I'm sitting there, what? Uh, the the trade comment. I'm a little surprised it was only this much. Moving back three spots, trying to jump. Patriots get a fourth. Was all it was. This year's fourth? Uh, it doesn't say. It just says they got a fourth. All right, so let me give you a couple scenarios. Hmm. All the wide receivers and tight ends are available. I, I'm the Cowboys here. All the wide receivers and tight ends are available for me to pick. Who's my top name? Who's Who, who am I calling? Jackson Smith and Jigba. A- out me? of the pass catchers? Wide receivers and tight ends. Yeah, Jackson Smith and Jigba. For me. Kincaid yeah. and Jigba. It'll be Jackson Smith and Jigba. For Jackson, me. okay. Now... Brian, would you would yours be Addison? Because you Addison, said Addison, Addison is ahead. would be mine. Yeah. yeah, all the receivers, all the tight ends, and the two other corners. Is it still your pass catcher? Oh, I'm taking Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, me too. Okay, same. I'm yeah. just saying, what if? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now I'm starting to formulate in my mind: Am I going to get someone falling to me? Am I am I good just sitting and chilling, or? Do I have a name that's screaming amongst those three position groups? Go up for? To go up for. Is there someone that's screaming off? Or, I, yo, I got corners. I got wide receivers. I got tight ends. I'm good. See, the thing that I'm kind of – and correct me if I'm wrong. I've been sitting here with you guys. Is it costing a lot to move up? Are, are people mm. are, are people overpaying? I mean, it costs the Texans a lot. But everybody else is not. Yeah, not not anybody else. But the Texans paid a lot. Now nobody's moved a massive jump like the Texans did. The Texans went up what eleven spots, nine. nine spots to go to that spot. You would you would have to go up twelve to go to get anywhere. That close would be to a massive run. Right that would be a massive run. Where, you would have to give up a lot. Where so? Where is Levis's spot at this point? Tampa at nineteen. I'm thinking. Cause, cause you, how about the Commanders at sixteen? I think it, I think they would. Take it'd be him. great if you could get Levis and Hooker off the board to me in the next ten picks. That push, continue to push more guys down. And then you're talking about you've, you're, you've got, what, 10 picks between you and the next spot? And so Which, if you get two of them that are quarterbacks, then there's eight picks remaining. You're talking about you've got both tight ends at the top. You've got any receiver that you want, two corners. Like Eventually, you're going to start looking at the math and go, there are more players we like here than our picks remaining until we get up here. And so like if you can get two quarterbacks in the next 10 picks, I think that'd be great. All right, let me give you some filler here couple of things that are playing out online number one micah parsons uh he's on this bleacher report live draft show when the eagles took jalen carter he said i'm sick to my stomach right now <laughs> and then there's a sean payton video circulating uh that is uh reminiscent of laramie tunsil oh i'm trying to double check the time of it the date of it but people are saying that Sean Payton is loving himself some Denver right now. Oh. Fill in the blanks. I, I uh, oh. And then also, this was the second thing I thought you were going to read. Can I uh, read C.J. Stroud's quote to the Houston media? Sure. The city of Houston hasn't seen a franchise quarterback in a long time. Ooh. Now, by the way, those two share an agent, by the way. Wow. Yeah, I was like, is that S2 proof right there? He doesn't know who Deshaun Watson is or <laughs> shots fired. Boom, boom, boom. Look, Houston said, credit to them, I think. They said, the same agent, is that your boy, the agent? It's Mulugeta. Mulugeta. And that's, that's, He's good. They and said, Mulugeta's that's not, clients are all very close. They said that's not going to stop us from taking C.J. Stroud, and it did not. Can I ask somebody, uh, the panel, a question here? If you could have a position to slide, receiver or corners, if you're the Dallas Cowboys— or tight ends, Re- uh, receiver, tight end, corner. Give me a position you would want to slide. I mean, if I can get out of the top remaining players left, if I could get the top corner to slide down, Gonzalez, I'm taking that. 
But the, yeah. I, I have Gonzalez and Porter rated higher than I do, I do too. Nine and, than and 11. any of the others. Yeah, that's where I'm at, too. Get your get the best player on the board to slide, and so corner, the, the, you've got two of those guys. This has been about a month, though, of building talk that Porter was not going to go in like the top half of the draft. The, and I don't this, know why this people is, are I don't know why. I don't know, what's, I don't know what's dinging him. So are you picking? Or maybe we're just wrong about him. Are you answering your own question with corner or Addison? Of, I'm, I, of your, I'm asking. I'm asking. Like, yeah. Uh, what's your answer to your question? My corners are better than my receivers. Okay. So and I, tight ends. What is it? And tight ends. Yeah. What does it mean to you that at pick 15, there's no Jerry or Steven in the war room? Maybe. Maybe they're that, that they ain't thinking about this whole no. conversation we're having right now. Nope. Who's who's hut? Can we blow up the war room? I'm trying to see who's huddling in the corner. Well, I, is, is Christian Gonzalez worth going up for, and how high? Bones. And I can't see who's in the corner there with Bones. There's Steven walking in. Who's your Who's your top corners left, Brian? I've got Porter at nine, Gonzalez at eleven. Now you're starting to talk about Addison at fifteen, Smith and Jigba at seventeen. So I've got the way I have them stacked. I would take Porter, Gonzalez, Addison, Smith, and Jigba. Yeah. And then I don't have a tight end in this group. I don't have a tight end in this in this group right now. Oh wow! No, no yeah, not yeah. yet. I have a tight we'll end there. at eighteen. But that's the that's the first tight end I have. Did you say Nolan Smith? I didn't. I Nolan Smith at twenty one. Okay, so he's a little bit further down. So I've got Gonzalez, the top five players on my board: Christian Gonzalez from Oregon, Brian Branch from Alabama, Joey Porter Jr. Penn State, Nolan Smith Georgia, and then Jackson Smith and Jigbo Ohio State. All right, let's see what the New York Jets are going to do. They can't get another offensive weapon. Will Levis. They can't get right. Yeah. <laughs> now that would be fun. They can't get another offensive weapon for Aaron Rodgers, right? Who would look? They get a corner opposite Sauce Gardner. Woo! Who would look like a fantastic steal for them at this point? Mm. You know, um, defensively, they might take Smith and Jigba here. They might take a wide receiver. Ohio State, they've got with I bet Wilson. You they yeah. Do yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that makes that's some a sense. Great combo. Great point. Hardman, you're gonna protect Wilson. your guy, but there's no offensive lineman yeah. really blinking at you anymore. That no. guy, that that, that number, that which number. might be why the Steelers jumped up in front, like you said, in front of the Jets and in front of the Commanders. They both wanted to protect their guys. All right, so Jets, Washington, New England, Detroit are the teams that are coming up here. It's the 2023 NFL Draft as we're waiting for New York to go ahead. They're dragging this out so they get the New York ratings as Aaron Rodgers is going to be wearing number eight. Uh, brought us. You feeling fantastic if you're the Jets with Rodgers at quarterback, or do you think like Bobby, he's he's he might be done? I think that, to me, it's going to be interesting to see. He's spent so many years in that Packers system, but he's working with a coordinator he's very familiar with. Yep. You know, so that, that that's probably the terminology, the teaching, all that stuff, I think is going to be fine for him. Are you glad Rodgers is gone, or you are You're going to play him Thanksgiving Day, or you're going to play him opening day. <laughs> I was about Get to ready. say, you're going to play him in a big-time game. Yeah, Sunday night football. Get ready. I bet you it's Thanksgiving. Yeah. I just think that's too too perfect. All right, let's see who they take. Jets with the pick. Is that Zach Wilson going to announce the pick? <laughs> <laughs> that kid's like 13. <laughs> so Zach Wilson. That's the point. Part of the global community that supports the life-changing wishes that make a wish grants. We're World Wish Day, only a couple days away. I'm joined by Kyle Stickles, a Make-A-Wish kid who battled and overcame bone cancer. Kyle's wish is to announce the first round pick of his favorite team, the New York Jets. I'd like all of you to join me in cheering on Kyle as his wish comes true. The floor is yours, Kyle. Go for it, buddy. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goodell. I'd also like to thank the NFL, the New York Jets, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Northeastern New York for giving me this opportunity tonight. Yeah! <laughs> That's awesome. That is great. Let's get it. Let's get it. With the 15th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York J-E-T. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Best pick of the draft so far in terms of delivery. Uh, we're back with the Commanders on the clock. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. Oh All right, Will McDonald, Edge, Iowa State. Kyle, tell us about him. Well, he was very high on the Cowboys' radar. If he would have slid anywhere into the 20s, I don't think they would have waited till 26. I think they would have tried to go up and This is three guys they've lost. I They really liked Will McDonald a lot. He was just a, a wrecking force with the, uh, with the Iowa State Cyclones the last couple of years. He was first team all Big 12 three years in a row. You talk about the finesse game. He doesn't have a ton of power, but he could build it. There's still room to grow on his frame. He has the swim move. He has the 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 bull rush ability. I think on the outside at Iowa State, they didn't really use him the right way. I think they could have moved him around a little bit, maybe maybe stood him up a little more, used him in some stunts and some motion to, to utilize him against some of those weaker interior offensive lines of the Big 12. But for the most part, Will McDonald, solid player. He was rumored to go this high. I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of a smoke screen. I thought he could possibly fall to 26. Cowboys are a little upset here that he's off the board. But at the same time, uh, the Jets got a big-time player, just maybe not where you would expect it to go. Uh, well, I did. I had him at 14. Hey, mm. there uh, you go. I knew. I, I could see in your face when that pick was made how happy you were. Man, it's not even about being being, being happy. It's just the fact that, like, we like we talked about. Sometimes we get so hung up on just what a guy's supposed to look like, what he's supposed to play like. And this is a, a multi-sport athlete. He talked about mm-hmm. um, in a recent interview he just did. He talked about uh, being a martial artist and how that helps him counter. And he goes out and bends the hoop, and you can see that. You can see that how he comes across that uh, comes around that edge, even in his stance. It's 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 aggressive. He's trying to make the play, and I, I really feel like from a defensive end standpoint, you're looking for pursuit. You're looking for who can counter with some of these tackles that we're seeing go like who who can get to the quarterback con- consistently and he can so I'm not surprised that where he, he went um yeah <laughs> I think she I think she absolutely nailed the guy there and I'm happy for her she had him where he was I had him as my 38th best player but I, I mean I have some guys ahead of him uh you know when you look at uh Nolan Smith Ojolari a couple of guys that I would I would uh, take, but I, you know, th- he was kind of one of those guys at 26 that the whispers were starting to happen. That you know, the Cowboys that would be a big time. That would be a consideration. Now, I, I will say this about Will McDonald, and I talked to three teams about him. There are some things that you're going to have to deal with with the makeup, his makeup. It's not on the field stuff, but it's off the field stuff that people were talking about. But it was nothing. That, and I, I asked somebody uh, to ask somebody at the Cowboys <laughs> if they could, if they would uh, take him off the board for the mental makeup stuff. And they said, absolutely not. They were locked in on this player. Mm-hmm. So Will McDonald would have been a consideration, absolutely. I don't think Kyle's right. I never heard about the trade-up possibilities. But at 26, his name was was thrown in there. But Aisha's got him right. I mean, he the, the more he could play on the move, the better it is for him. And he's got some really good bend to his game. He just lacks a little bulk right now. Yep. Right. Jerry and Steven are back in the war room. So, Bobby, you referenced three players the Cowboys liked. I'm guessing Darnell Wright, Van Ness, and now McDonald. Yep. Those are the three. Yeah. All right, Washington's on the clock. Where are we going with another player coming to the NFC East? Forbes or Banks. Yeah, they need I, to figure I had they heard, need a corner. Yeah, if the offensive linemen had gotten here, they were going to go offensive line. But other than that, it was going to be Forbes or Banks. And what they I are Emmanuel from... Forbes, cornerback from uh, Mississippi State. Deontay Banks, cornerback from Maryland. Do you think Will Levis is even in the conversation there? No. Okay. Not from who I talked to. There you go. In, in my heart, he's... In the second round, where I thought he was going to be. Same here. Let's I, see. I had him there Let's too. See. Let's see. I think I think Washington would better benefit, and and I mean it came out earlier today that they're happy with Sam Howell. They're happy with the quarterback situation. Are you even high as on? Much as you're kind of high on Sam Howell. Oh, I like bit, Sam though, right? Howell, but I tell you what, I, if come on, I think I think the Commanders Stop. are a quarterback away. I do like Sam Howell. I know last year in the draft show, been, we did talk you, about. Yeah, it. I'm sure you liked you him. Were, you were like smoking briskets when I was talking about <laughs> Sam Howell last year. He was taking a nap. <laughs> So day three. Uh, you were like making crab cakes over there or something like that. I'm, All right. I'll I'm be honestly quiet. not. <laughs> Forbes or Deontay Banks, CD having to deal with one of them is going to be annoying. 
Mm. Annoying. You uh, like I would em. describe it as annoying. You like them. Yeah. She's been on Emmanuel Forbes from the absolute beginning. Yep. I, I, I think I think this team would be more annoyed about if Commanders took Forbes than if they took Banks. Completely agree. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I think the Commanders actually are a quarterback away from being really, really good, by the way. A court what? A quarterback. A quarterback QB. away. That was my Sam Howe point before the brisket insult. Oh. All right, y'all. The Washington Commanders are on the clock. We are here at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Washington is picking at 16. The Cowboys right now are at number 26. Jerry and Steven are back in the war room. Just to recap what has happened, uh, Lucas Van Ness goes to the Green Bay Packers. Broderick Jones of the Pittsburgh Steelers, they moved up in a trade with New England. The New York Jets just took Will McDonald, who y'all said the Cowboys really, really liked the edge rusher uh, from Iowa State. Uh, so that's where we stand right now with Washington on the clock. And it sounds like y'all think they could be going cornerback right here. Cornerback. They may even need a defensive end after what they did with Chase Young declining his fifth-year option. Here's Roger Goodell with the commander's pick. First round selection. With the 16th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Emmanuel Forbes, defensive back, Mississippi State. I'm so sad. Still no Gonzalez. I know we're not. Maybe are we supposed to say that? I'm. 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 Yes. Yes, that, you can say that. that. You can hurt, say whatever you damn want. That has hurt me <laughs> when you talk about the ball skills on this dude, man, and his ability to just find the ball. I'm. And, out, and he has length. But one thing I said to him at the combine, I asked him about the comp, the comp of uh, of uh, uh, Trayvon Diggs to him just because of the ball skills. And he was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm a totally different player. He oh. is, this is a very confident dude. No doubt. And his ability to play in zone, I think, is better than what Trayvon was when he came out. Like, it's he can do both. And he's a problem when he's pressing you, too. I Best ball skill guy out of this out of this uh, draft to me, and I'm I'm upset. We got to see him twice. So second team All American, he had three pick sixes last year. Three out of his six total interceptions went back to the house. I, I in getting to talk to him as well, he talked about the Forbes list. He has this list <laughs> that he has put together of all of the quarterbacks in collegiate football that he intercepted. And if you had a pick six, if he took it all the way back to the house, he would put a star next to your name on the Forbes list. Oh. And I asked him, of course, coming from Mississippi State, what it would mean to pick off Dak Prescott in practice if he ended up being the pick for the Cowboys. And he said, I respect Dak so much that it would be the top name on my list. Now he has a chance to do that in the division twice wow. a year. Just so you know. And we in the size thing is something that, you know, Brian, we talked about. Uh, Bucky Brooks came on the show on the draft at, at the Combine, rather, and told us he was a surprise. He was like, yeah, he he waiting in at 166. And we was like, excuse me? Yeah. Excuse me? He's but that you big can, around. Yeah, but he's so he's so good. He's tough. Like you said, like we're yeah. talking football player. Is he a football player or yeah. not? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, nice job over there, bro. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. You, so you you've been Nailed on point. And, and nice job to you, like week one talking about this cat. But yeah, this guy he is he's he, he's built like a one iron, like a golf club. I mean he is. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he will he will come forward and hit you. Got, the Patriots are going to make this pick already. With the 17th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Christian Gonzalez, defensive back, Oregon. That's such a Patriots pick. Moved back and still got not lately. Many y'all. That's fair. They made some terrible ones <laughs> lately. Moved back and still got many of y'all's best corner on the board. So look, we had only had one cornerback go so far. Number five to Seattle in Devin Witherspoon, and now we're going back to back here. Bobby, why'd you like Christian Gonzalez so much? I, I mean, everything about him is you want to talk about like somebody who can play uh, press, he can play off. The athleticism's off the charts. The closest athletic comp to Christian Gonzalez is Byron Jones. He's he's actually longer than Byron Jones. Wow. And I think so, he turns better. And I think he's he's better prepared to come in here and play corner than Byron Jones was day one. And so, to me, that's who, who he reminds me of. I think that's his projection is a bigger Byron Jones. But great instincts. I, like I said, I think that he's shown that he can play with the competitive toughness to press. He can play off. This is a, a really good pick. He was my eighth overall player. They just showed a highlight on the the – 
B roll here of him chasing down B. John Robinson a couple years ago whenever he played for Colorado because he transferred yeah. to Oregon from Colorado and caught B. John Robinson. So you talk about athleticism, speed, length. He has all three in the terms of the combination. I think the one thing that he could get better at is the strength category. He needs to, to add some bulk, just like Emmanuel Forbes in that category. He could get a little bit stronger. I think pressing at the line of scrimmage will, will come tough to him at times early on, but he'll grow into that and establish that leverage. He's he's my top corner. I compared him to J.C. Horn because he, he plays with that same kind of a mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, of course, the injury From the colony, too. Yep. Injury conversation, completely different. But I, I think he's a, a, a NFL-made, ready corner. Good pick by uh, New England at the spot. This cat does not play stressed at all. No. I mean, he is so smooth. He's dressed smooth, too. Yeah, he does. He's a good-looking kid. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, he, he's got great ball skills. He has a feel for how to play the ball in the air. He's aggressive as a wrap-up tackler in the open field. He's not afraid to come forward, deliver a blow. Most positive traits to his game, uh, you know, more positive traits to his game than negatives. So I, I was like, I mean, you can't get away from this guy. You know, his because his length, his footwork. You watch the drills at the combine. There's that Raider drill where they pedal and they mm-hmm. flip them and they flip them and they flip them. And he looked like it was like he was one of the, he was like Fred Astaire dancing. <laughs> I mean, it was just hip, 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 hip. You know, and he's moving Aisha, along. Who's Fred Astaire? I, I don't know. He can sing, can he? <laughs> no, he's a dancer. He's a, dancer. Oh. He's a fluid, <laughs> old school enough. dancer. <laughs> and and it, this, but like I said, it was just flip, 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 and no wasted movement at all. Mm-hmm. None. All right, so now we're going Lions, Tampa Bay, Seattle. Back to the Cowboys' war room. You thinking about picking up a phone, or the the board's falling to you, Bobby? No, I'm not. I'm not going up. Not I, I wasn't. I wouldn't want to go up in this draft. But I, I mean, especially now with some of the stuff falling the way that it is, yeah. there's not even a tight end off the board yet. Let so. me let me ask a follow up. Do you can you wait on a tight end at this pace? Yes. I mean, I mean to tomorrow. Well, yes. It, the first, t- the first tight if you end. You haven't graded close enough. Yeah. The fir- depending on if you're believing what Daniel Jeremiah is saying from the NFL Network is, the first tight end that could go here or that we could see would be he has the Chargers. He has the Chargers taking a tight okay. end. So uh, we'll see. I mean, he does work with the Chargers, but traditionally his mock is he doesn't want to be the smartest guy in the room. So sometimes he doesn't get the first round pick right on purpose. Who do, I think. Who do uh, Jeremiah? Yeah, yeah. For the Chargers, who plays he plays the game. Want, he plays the game well because then nobody gives him the information if he does it yeah, the other exactly. way. Who's the tight end for the Lions after they uh, got rid of Hawkinson? Traded away Hawkinson. Uh, give me two Rudolph? seconds and I'll find it. Hmm? Rudolph? Is it Rudolph for Detroit? By the way, uh, Cameron Dantzler why don't they was take signed. Another, why don't they take another running back? <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, Cameron Dantzler was signed by the Commanders this offseason. That has to kay. be the two skinniest cornerbacks in the NFL now with Emmanuel Forbes yeah. and Cameron Dantzler. No doubt. Uh, Brock Wright is their tight end, Detroit. So oh, of course. This might be uh, mm. this might be a, a spot here. Yeah. Is anybody working phones over there in Dallas? Can you see anything? Are they, are they they're scurrying around? Looking at, no, they're just kind of looking at screens, chilling. Okay. You think you, you think you're feeling good? You they feel, all look so calm. <laughs> you think you're feeling comfortable, Brian? You know, I'm okay. I'm okay because again, both the tight ends are still on the board. That's some, you know, we're we're talking about wide receivers are still on the board. Uh, man, I'm, I'm all the receivers. All the receivers are on yep. the board there. I'm kind of feeling good about that. Nolan Smith Nolan still Smith's there. Smith's on the board. Joey Porter Jr. still yeah, there. I mean, Brian Branch is still there. I'm 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 dandy right now. I'm having to I'm. Taking a pull off my Pepsi, and I am ready to go. <laughs> as long as you're not Sean Payton. Yeah. Uh, so, you guys, your level of surprise at the no wideouts going at this point at 18 is not huge. No, I'm not shocked. Well, I thought maybe one would sneak up there, but the fact that it, we're here. See, that's the problem. Shocking. I don't think anybody's figured this group out. Yeah. I think that's the thing right now. I think people are scared, and there's going to become a time where the value is going to be too much. And you got to go get Smith and Jigba or somebody like that. You're sure. going to make that call. And it might be Dallas. If you're at 26 and all three of those are there, would you not go get Jackson Smith and Jigba? Would Listen, you not go bolster what do you need your a wide guard receiver for? room? <laughs> what do you need a guard for? Well, you could throw the ball everywhere you want to throw the ball. Well, you need a guard now, all right, after Philadelphia. <laughs> Babe. Yeah. I, have been a, I have been a proponent. I know this will be unpopular. I need Bobby not to listen. I would like to uh, 
just keep building up the defense. Uh, I, I I I would like to nothing uh, wrong. I would like to, the defense. I would like to win in a more San Francisco way versus relying on this offense uh, and and quarterback to drop you know a forty burger, uh, thirty five every single game. Yeah, against so, forty burgers. Uh, I don't have you know, the, the term. name. Me and Bobby don't. I uh, mean, me and Bobby don't love the, the, I love the name of the term. So I'm like, hey, go forty burgers. Who, who's who's at the top of your board defensively? And are there any guys up front? We G- Miles Murphy, Joey Porter Jr. and Miles Murphy are eleven yeah. and twelve. Yeah. Okay. And eleven and twelve overall on your board. Uh, yes. Nine and fourteen on mine. I've got Porter Jr. eleven, Nolan Smith twelve. But I also like Brian Branch, and he's up there too. Yep. I have Nolan Smith at eleven. I have Miles Murphy at twenty-one. We okay. need to listen to her board. But Brian Branch she's is been up. right. <laughs> she's been right the whole damn night. Arthur. Elijah Cansey's still up there, Brian. Yeah, you Elijah like Elijah Cansey's Cansey like, from Pittsburgh? Yeah, but I, I I like Porter better. I like yeah. Murphy better. I'm, I'm there too. I'm, I'm just let me if I can pick those two cats off, I'm good to go. Who who would be your preference right now of everyone left on your board, Aisha? You've you've been nailing it so far for the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I don't know. I, Give me the top players wanna, on your board. You want to take Smith and Jigba, don't you? I don't. I. It's not that I don't want a receiver. I'm more concerned with the fact that like the offensive linemen seem like they're flying off the board. Yeah. The like the good ones are. So uh, I have DeWan Jones. You still have some linebackers out there too. They really like Drew Sanders. Oh, I hate that. Man, I. But they like Drew Sanders. I know they like Drew Sanders, but there seems like there's just too many other guys. And I know their board's probably way different than our boards. But man, to me, I, I I don't feel wiped out right now. No, I don't feel I don't feel I'm not feeling stress right now. How yeah. do you feel, Bobby? Uh, there's no need to move. In yeah. fact, if anything, like depending on how things look, you might be okay moving back a couple spots. All right, the Detroit Lions. Are they going to go ahead and get a tight end? Is Bobby Belts Zach run? Evans? That's your call. Yeah, it's close. Running back. running back. He's yeah. going to be the first running back. <laughs> He'll be, you playing with me? Yeah, he's no. playing. He's playing with He'll me. He'll be their second running back tonight. <laughs> you make me uh, sick. Probably not going to happen. They're going to go if, trade for Josh Jacobs. Let's, too. See, let's see who Matt Millen takes. <laughs> pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. The Detroit Lions select Jack Campbell, linebacker, Man. Iowa. I didn't see Campbell in the first round in a single mock. It is Matt Millen. I have a third round. I mean, he's not he's not a bad player. Like Jack Campbell's a good player. I just it makes sense for them though, because they're trying to get better. They're trying to get better at defending the run. That's what hurt them a lot of a lot of the leads that that offense was able to get. That defense couldn't stop nobody. And Jack Campbell's a linebacker. He's to me the maybe the most pure linebacker out of all the linebackers. Tampa Bay is on the clock. Then Seattle, Miami, and the Cowboys are creeping as well. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. Do you think Dan Campbell just got a Dan Campbell guy <laughs> named Jack Campbell? Yeah. Because I think that's what it fits as. I mean, that's a Dan Campbell type of football player. I yeah. agree. I mean, he's a heady. He's a motor ability. He's a, a sideline to sideline, p- pure effort. He hits hard. He packs a punch. A lot of Iowa in this first round. Yeah, the Hawkeyes being well re- represented. And they might not be done yet. Yeah, maybe, the, a, maybe a tight end. Yeah, from I there. think so. <laughs> the uh, I, I don't hate the pick or the fit. I just don't. Love it at 18 overall, just like I don't hate the pick at 12 with Jameer Gibbs, but I didn't love it at 12 overall. Uh, Tampa, kind of an interesting first round for Detroit. Tampa went quick. You think this is Levis? Le- maybe? Will Levis? You got got your guy to fall to it. This is the you? fastest I can remember picks coming in on on night one. I mean, it's 919. Yeah, that's pretty. And you're quick. happy about you're it through the top, top 20. <laughs> Thrilled. My wife just texted me, "How you doing?" I said, "I'm starting. I'm I'm cracking. I'm starting to crack a little bit." No, man, you're good. I'm starting to crack a little. You don't bit. want to stick around tomorrow and maybe Saturday. Man, I won't even be sticking around for this press conference. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'll be in the car listening to Jerry and Steven. I'll tell you what. 4 a.m. Wake up. <laughs> no, this Jack. You know Jack Campbell though. What six five two forty nine? Right. Is that what we're looking at with this cat? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I tell you, Aisha's right, man. This guy is a downhill player, physical at the point of attack, tackles well. You know, I, I mean, I, I, like I said, I had him as four, my 45th best player. But Aisha's right about this, too. These linebackers, it's really kind of few and far between. I'm surprised. You know, Simpson from Clemson kind of thought maybe a little bit better guy as an inside linebacker. But you know nothing wrong with Campbell. That that is a big physical guy right there. So my co, I got to represent the new school a little bit. My co-host R.J. Choppy loves the Detroit Lions before tonight. 
he's rolling in his grave over these picks. To take a running back and a linebacker, he's going to be furious. He is pulling the rest of his four hairs out because these are devalued positions in the league. Yeah, You don't go take linebackers and you don't draft running backs, so he's going to f- lose his mind tomorrow morning uh, with the Lions, what he would call prehistoric Stupid draft. And, and that's the new school thought. Yeah. Well, and Jack Campbell is not the Micah Parsons where you're saying, oh, he's an off-ball linebacker and he can maybe rush the passer if the you put him in the right situation. The closest thing would be Drew Sanders if you talk about the Correct. linebackers that can rush. And I think that's how they view him across the building, but we can talk about that when we get closer to 26. But I think Jack Campbell is more of your traditional off-ball linebacker that's going to come in and he's going to hit and he's going to plug some holes, make a lot of tackles, and, and show some effort. I don't think he's a pass rusher. He's not going to be, be built into a pass rusher. That's just not that's not on his 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 tabletop, but also it wasn't on Michael Parsons' tabletop coming out of college either. So who knows? No, and then you have a uh, what's the what's the the DN for them for the Lions? Aiden Hutchinson Aiden from Hutchinson last coming year. Coming off the edge, it's gonna make some things. Oh, okay. The Bucks are in. Let's see what they got to say. <laughs> in the twenty twenty three NFL draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Kalijah Kansi, defensive end, Pittsburgh. Is, Brought us. This is is this Warren Sapp? Is that is it, are, we, are we reverting back to uh, Warren Sapp when he came in the league? He was I thought a, it was Aaron Donald. Warren Sapp was I think 281 pounds when he came into the league for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If, if he's Warren Sapp, he better have gone higher than 19. Yeah, <laughs> tell yeah. us about him. True. I'll tell you what though, has anybody else got him that they want to talk to him about? I mean, I can pull him up for you guys real quick. I, I tell you what I do like about he plays on the other team's side of the, of the ball. He is a very disruptive uh, type of a, of a player. Uh, when you when you watch him, I'll uh, I'll finish up after we yeah. get back from the break. All right, y'all, this is kind of flying by, so do not go anywhere. Just to reset, Sean Sharif, Brian Broaddus, Bobby Belt, Aisha Morrison, Kyle Yeomans. We are set up at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, brought to you by Miller Lite. We'll go back to the Commanders at 16. They took uh, Emmanuel Forbes. The room seemed to absolutely love that player. Uh, Christian Gonzalez, back-to-back corners, goes to the New England Patriots after they move down. Jack Campbell going to the Detroit Lions. And Brian brought us, cover us on the newest defensive tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, Kalijah Kansi. I remember a draft when Warren Sapp was a part of it, and he was like 281 pounds when he came in. This guy, uh, Kalijah Kansi, is similar to that, 281 himself. He's 6'1 there. He's very disruptive the way he plays. He does a great job of getting the ball, finishing plays. There's some strength to his game. He's always playing on the move, relentless effort, desire. Uh, when he can attack the gap, he's going to get that job done. He's, he can work well on the edges. He'll chase the ball. He'll make his share of plays. Outstanding lateral quickness and agility. I think he can redirect. When he gets too far up the field, he can come back. He does got the ability to push the pocket with some power, but his best pass rush moves come with that quickness right there. He, when he Best when he can win, like I say, right off the jump. And then, But I've seen him have some snaps where he gets bounced around, where guys catch him a little bit. So I think he has to stay on the move to avoid that. So Seattle is on the board again at 20. These are my top storylines so far tonight. Houston and Arizona dealing. Jalen Carter to the Eagles at 9. And Aisha, your Will Levis take is looking really good. I thought that was Tampa's quarterback falling to him. They were going to get a gift. Will Le- Levis is sitting there rotting in the draft room, this poor what, kid. Could, could Seattle be the team now? Could Seattle Maybe. or Minnesota? Maybe. Seattle could. I mean, is this Minnesota's now? interesting, Bobby. We got Mac Jones, just what we did. This is like when Mac Jones was going to go three, and then he's like there in the middle of the first round. Well, you even talk about Malik uh, Willis last year. There was talk he could sneak into the back he, half of yeah. the first, and he ended up in the third round. I think you you look at Will Levis, and we were talking about it as a potential even up in the five spot for the Seahawks, right? We were talking about potentially you you like a pick, you like yeah. Anthony Richardson, got him taken away, but if you were that close to drafting a quarterback at five, I don't think you, you go away from it at 20 just because it's Will Levis, but maybe there's something there that we're not seeing. Look, man, you, put, I, I, you, you saw it. 
you put mayo in your coffee, you deserve to drop. I, I have said that before. <laughs> you that's, that's a knock on his draft stock for sure. It might be a first round pick. Maybe. See, I mean, I mean, we didn't we didn't talk about. I don't have him this high, but maybe Seattle's like, well, we kind of like having semi mobile quarterbacks, and they go hand in hooker. That's mm. man. That's a good call. He's not going to be ready until. Are we running off Geno too soon? No, because he has the. He just got a deal. No, that's Pro yeah. Bowl or Geno Smith. Too. Yeah, but if he wants somebody to come in and maybe Learn take over bit. and play similarly, yeah, better. He's thirty-two, actually, in my opinion. I think the thing. I think it's interesting when you talk about Hendon Hooker. I mean, because to me, mm-hmm. that that's a guy. He's a six-year senior. You know, I was talking about. Hey, how do I limit my problems with my quarterback? Uh, you know, with inexperience. And Hinden Hooker has played. He's a six-year. He's a captain. Uh, he's highly respected. He's played in some big games. You know, I I like what she's saying there. I mean, to me, I, I have Will Levis where, where he is. You know, and I, I was using the same argument for him. But Seattle, to me, is 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 the value of a quarterback now at twenty. I mean, is are we to that point where it's? You know, like, hey, we. And Bobby says I think they lost out on their quarterback, right? With yeah, Richardson. Richardson. Yeah, Richardson. Yeah. So maybe, maybe they say, well, let's. Who's the next one on that list? I don't. know. They might not like Will Levis, yeah. Le- but Hendon Hooker. You know, Let- she's right about Hendon Hooker. Who did I? Who? Are, what? Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's Go ahead. their needs, Kyle? Uh, for the Seahawks, Seahawks specifically, they need defensive line, and they may have had another pick taken out from under them with Cansey off the board specifically. Uh, edge rusher. They could maybe go Nolan Smith here. Safety, you could go with a Brian Branch. You just drafted a corner, so I think you're, you feel pretty good about your secondary right now. Or linebacker. They could go get an edge rusher linebacker combo and go draft the Drew Sanders here hey, let's, at 20. Let's reset this outlook for the Cowboys, too, right now. And let's go ahead and look at what's staring at you on the board and how good you feel about it. Who wants to be Will McClay? Go ahead. Let's give the update to the Joneses in, in that room. I have eight first-round grades remaining on my board, and I had more than the Cowboys were rumored to be have or to have on their board. And but they're I exactly have, eight picks away. Exactly. So I feel really good about where I'm at now. I would even start maybe – Brian talked about this yesterday. Start talking about the teams behind you. Get on the phone. Yeah. See what it's going to take for New Orleans to trade up or mm. Kansas City to trade up. Grab some picks here because you feel really good. You got eight first round grades just on my board alone, and you're you're less than eight picks away. You're at twenty right now. I think there's a huge possibility of maybe pulling the parachute here if the right situation remains. I, I just remember Stephen Jones coming on 1053 the fan and talking about when you start to talk about bailing, what am I trading away from? You know, is there somebody I know on my board I've 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 loved Joey Porter Jr. I'm not going to include Will Levis in this thing. Miles Murphy, Jordan Addison, those are guys that I still have on my board. Yep. But so I'm I'm gonna and those tight ends. I mean, everybody, you know, that's the one thing we've talked about this the whole spring, you know, tight ends. And and we were talking about was we Sam Laporta. We're talking we're starting this day with Sam Laporta. <laughs> yeah. We've got two of the best tight ends in the draft sitting there right now. Are we going to trade away from that potentially? I, I maybe I, I'm with Bobby. I sit. I'm with Bobby. I sit, I sit this. I thing. think I would sit too, but I'm talking about the prelude, the the conversations that need to happen before. Yeah, we haven't talked about trading back. I no. would I would worry about okay, I would worry about somebody trading ahead of me. That's the problems I have. Mm-hmm. I worry about the Giants or somebody the or somebody like that bailing out of there. You know, I mean, maybe there's somebody that's that's sliding to you, and now we have a chance here, and then boom, like somebody from behind us is moving up ahead. That's what I would worry. There's about. two, I think there's two tight end threats here ahead of you: Chargers, Chargers and Jaguars. Yep. I, I, Chargers are looking. Excuse me, Jaguars are looking for a corner. I, I've got connections in Jacksonville. There you go. I mean, so I'm gonna flex it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pat myself on the back for this one. Hang on, just I've got connections with the Chargers, and they said tight end. Yeah, yeah, did they? Yeah, but you text Kellen Moore. No, I wish. I wish I could text Kellen Moore here, but I I think okay, corner, (laughs) corner, outside linebacker, tackle, guard, wide tight end. There's your wide tight end. There you go. Inside pass rusher, corner, outside linebacker, tackle, guard, wide tight end. So if corner, if if a guy like Porter's still on the board, can you or Banks 
uh, you know, Deontay somebody Banks. like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can. I, I don't think if you're Jacksonville, I, I think you're. I'd, I'd rather take one of the corners than I would one of these tight ends. I think but, Joey Porter Jr. is in play at corner. Outside of that, I, I don't think they're as high on banks as they would be some of these other players that could be available. But Porter, I think, is very much so in the realm of possibility if he continues to slide the way he God, does. God, I love that pick if they got him. That would be awesome. If he could, tr- Maybe that's the trade-up scenario. I know they're really high on Drew Sanders, too. He may be the highest player on their board right now, not knowing what's going on. He's that high. So one of those two picks, maybe you go get him. I would go get Porter. He's a phenomenal player. Seattle on the clock again after the Devin Seattle Witherspoon. Seahawks are champions of growing the game of football at the youth and high school levels. Joining me on stage are local boys tackle football players and local girls flag players who are pioneers in flag football growth. These young men and women embody the NFL values of respect, integrity, resiliency, and responsibility to their teams. Congratulations on your accomplishments and your academic and football careers. Now to make the selection, please welcome Bethany Yoribe. Go ahead, Bethany. With the 20th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Jackson and Jigba, wide receiver, Ohio State. All right. Finally. Shout out Rockwall. Finally, wide receiver to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, give Geno Smith a little bit more help. How do you all feel about him falling down here to Seattle? Aisha, what? is this your number one receiver? Uh, you... Yes. Why? Tell us about him. Um, this guy's a route runner. This guy's a route runner. This guy knows how to get open on his own um, soft hands. He has a good understanding. He also has a good feel of how to sit in zones, which I think is really something that on a wide receiver scale is starting to be something that I, you look for in maturity. Um, he has a he has just enough speed to separate from people. I don't think that he's a burner by any means, but I like the player. And if you want a guy to come in and be ready to contribute right away um, in some way, this is a dude. All right, we're getting even closer. Don't go anywhere. The L.A. Chargers are on the clock. Is this tight end? Followed by Baltimore, Minnesota, brought us his Jaguar connections, the Giants, and then the Cowboys at 26. This is the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. Were you celebrating? Don't no. interrupt your celebration. No. We're still on. Mm-mm, We're no. still on. This, this is our friends. So that's the thing. The, the the radio side is a little buttoned up. You know, it's a little nice and tight. You got it ready to go. This is your friends that you're talking to here on DallasCowboys.com. <laughs> so what did you have to say? What was Beamer that? said you could use any cuss words you want. We're on. That's what he it. said. Yeah, he said that while you before you got here. Really, he said that. Don't listen to him. <laughs> He's Don't. trying to get you in Bobby, trouble. Don't listen Bobby to is so convincing, y'all. He is convincing. Yeah, he's, he's not a serial. He's like a, a true God. psychopath. He's a serial killer. Oh, All right. Uh, Chargers, Baltimore, Minnesota, or you want to talk a little bit more about Smith and Jigba? Yeah, talk about him. I'll tell you what. I, I think you actually had him right. I mean, you've, you've been on these players all day, so great job on your part. Uh, I think the thing with Smith and Jigba is that – to me, you know, you watch him, he does, he's a really, he's such a good route runner. And if you watch the Utah game and then from the Rose Bowl, you would have probably picked him first overall. I mean, it was one of those incredible games where he was just magical that night. And, but this guy, he tracks the ball well. It doesn't matter if it's over his head, right down the middle of the field, wherever. He knows how to work to find space. He does a good job of playing on the moves. Routes take him all over the field, especially good when it comes to making catches, dealing with traffic. He'll go get the ball. He's not afraid or shy about route running. Good initial quickness uh, with the separation. The longer he runs, the more likely he's going to get caught. So, you know, mm. he's going to catch it. He's going to go. and But he's very steady with his speed. I just wouldn't call him a breakaway type player. But he's always going to get positive yards after the reception and show some physical running traits with the ball in his hands. So I, I call the game of Jackson Smith and Jigbas in high school. Uh, when he was in high school, I was in college still. Played for... <laughs> Rockwall, he played against Allen. He had 15 catches for 252 yards and five touchdowns at 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 AT&T Stadium. That was the first moment when I looked at it at Jackson Smith and Jigba and said, okay, 
all right, this guy could be a, a special player. And he went on to, to Ohio State, flashed it, of course, with the Rose Bowl records and showed the route running ability, showed the, the yards after the catch ability. I think he's the most ready-made NFL receiver in the draft. It's the injury concerns that helped him fall to this point and go all the way to 20. Probably would have been higher than that if he would have stayed on the field. A lot of people last year were looking at Garrett Wilson and looking at what he brought to the table from Ohio State, and they were waiting on Jackson Smith and Jigba. Never really turned out that way in 2022, but this is a special player and a good pick for Seattle overall. That's going to be a fun Fun combination to see him run on the West Coast like that. All right, so now we're sitting here with the L.A. Chargers. What would Kellen Moore like to do? We're talking about uh, DeAndre Hopkins earlier today because Pac-Man went on Pat McAfee and said, according to his sources, uh, DeAndre was going to be traded within hours. People are looking at Baltimore, Kansas City, Buffalo. But Vegas has Austin Eckler as the number one name on the board to be dealt uh, today or this weekend, Dalvin wow. Cook, Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson signed his deal, uh, Josh Jacobs as well. Uh, so, I don't know. Is there a little gadget? Is there a little, another offensive know. toy for the Chargers to play with? It doesn't surprise me with if, if Kellen is coming in there as the OC. It doesn't surprise me. Well, that Eckler may not be someone that they feel like they can get a whole bunch of product. I mean, it took— Why? Because it took an eternity to get Tony Pollard the ball. Mm, was that and Kellen? There, and the similarities. I mean, we don't know that. We don't know. I guess we don't know that. But I'm just saying. I, I, I heard. I heard Kellen was a uh, was a Pollard proponent. That's what I heard. Okay. Well, maybe I don't know nothing. But. <laughs> oh, I didn't say it. No, I mean, it, I don't. I'm no. I'm just. I'm not surprised. But you think somebody? But, but you think she's wrong? I mean, I. Well, got I'm trying to gauge. We just met each other. Are you telling me, or are you wondering? Are you reporting? It? I'm just saying that. Eckler, when Kellen Moore went to, immediately for me, when Kellen Moore went to the Chargers as the OC, I immediately thought, oh, Eckler doesn't fit. Yeah. Because and that he see, could be changing his be, philosophy. Because the Tony fit. Pollard delay here yeah. definitely felt like it took way too long. I'm not disagreeing. Plenty I'm just of trying, hands were involved in that. Uh, okay, well, there, there's, there it is then. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay, is you can that, tell me. Is that McCarthy or was that Kellen? I don't know. I heard that Callum was a fan of Tony Pollard. So to me, that would be some other people maybe delaying Tony's involvement. Mm. That's, I, I that, got, that's I got, what I heard. I got in tr- trouble with Jerry Jones because I said, do you feel like you wasted Tony Pollard's career? Ooh. And he kind of looked at me and goes, I wouldn't consider it I wasted his career. No, I wouldn't. But they she's not wrong. They didn't get they didn't get no, him no, going I, quick no, enough. I agree. I was just trying to find the culprit. I'm new here. Y'all know better than I. <laughs> Right for the Chargers on the clock at number 21. 2023 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Quentin Johnston, wide receiver, TCU. Oh, I had him at 20. Shout out to 254 <laughs> Temple, Texas, baby. From yeah. Rockwall to Fort Worth, Jackson Smith to friend, uh, the best voice I know for Dagon Shore yes. in yes. this draft is Quentin Johnston. Finish a shout out. Yeah, he's got a he's got a future in broadcasting. And when I talked to him a couple weeks ago, I mean, just a phenomenal talent. You, you talk about a ready-made wide receiver. He he's right there too because he's the prototypical X. He's long. He's lanky. With some added weight, he would be perfect for the NFL level and, and push him outside. Let him use that sideline. Let him take the top off. He's got some deep ball ability. He tracks well. Uh, he's got a, a willing blocking to his game too. He's willing to get in there and get physical. I think the one thing that he wasn't clean in was the route running. We just talked about Jackson Smith and Jigba, who's very sharp. He creates that separation. Johnston's more of a contested catch guy, and I think he can work over the middle of the field, but he's got to find a way to get some separation. I'm surprised he went at 21 just because there were some murmurs yeah. that he yeah. could drop a little bit. Yeah. But he's worthy of being here. In, in terms of the rankings, I had him at 26. So right around where he could go here. The good pick by uh, by the Chargers. You talk about getting a, a weapon for Kellen Moore and Justin Herbert. There's your weapon. Aisha, why'd you have him going right around this range? Because I thought he fit with the Chargers. What I do, <laughs> and this is the type of this is he's literally almost a pr- prototypical wide receiver. Yep. I could be wrong about what the information you guys gave me, but when I saw Kellen at the, as the OC, I said this is the type of receiver the Cowboys would have drafted in the mm-hmm. Kellen type of situation. So. That was the conclusion I came to, and that's where I met with it. Brian, are we surprised 
And and I feel like not really, but this is a wide receiver class that has been classified as a shorter wide receiver class lengthwise. Yeah. Two of the taller top prospects just went back to back. Yeah, and it's because they haven't figured out how about the short guys yet. We'll probably see a big run on those guys tomorrow is what will happen there. But this thing with Quentin Johnston, I'll tell you what, man. he uh, They talk about a little bit of the drops and stuff like that. His quarterback, I thought, did a nice job of getting him the ball uh, this year. There's a reason why they were in the national championship game. This kid makes a lot of big plays. And so, you know, to me – I mean, everything you said about him, Kyle, is absolutely right. The one thing I saw with this kid, he plays like the game is important to him. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I mean, all those things you talked about, I'm watching him and he is fighting his ass off. They're in the games where they're they're down and he's having to make – Play after play after play, and he and he's answering the bell. So I, I think the Chargers did a really nice job. It, it keeps the tight ends on the board because again, if you're the Cowboys fan, and you're thinking about tight ends. The Chargers could have been a team that was looking for a tight end. All the tight ends are still intact right now. Uh, with Keenan Allen, how how long has he been in the league? Oh man, decade, Long time, yeah. eight years, Are there nine any years. He just got he just got voted off uh, dancing with stars. Uh, not dancing with stars. The the uh, what's the thing <laughs> where they wear the they wear the oh, the mass singer the mass singer. He just got voted off. The any similarities singer. in their game? I Johnston think, and Allen. They yes. both got so, great voices. A- Allen Allen's a much more polished route runner. I think, I think, Allen the, Allen's like a. a I think Johnston's God. faster. Yeah. I think Keenan Allen's a little bit of a slower guy. Johnston's just, like, explosive. Yeah, and yeah. The, the problem, I remember the first thing, I, I really liked Quentin Johnston, but I remember the one of the first things I heard from somebody was it should not be as difficult for Quentin Johnston to get off of press coverage as it is with his size. Yeah. That's, that's the problem that I had. He didn't have that separation against press, and... If he can classify and clean up the route running a little bit, I I think he's possibly the best receiver in the draft. But I just don't think he's there against Jackson Smith and Jigba. And I had Addison sandwiched in between those two guys, too. And I was nervous about that because a lot of corners, even in this draft, can press now. Yes. And press well. No doubt. So. So now there's a team on the clock. That we always say, oh, they draft the best. Oh, they do the man. best. The best players fall to them, except all the for time. receivers. Who's yeah. the best player on your board right now? Uh, well, I'm not gonna. You can't. Will Levis Porter. is my, in my best play. My, my number Joey 10. Porter Jr. to well, the Baltimore Por- Ravens. Porter's number nine on my board. Yeah. Watch it happen. So Baltimore is on the clock. Of course, they're very happy today because the Lamar saga is over. Five for two sixty. Uh, so Baltimore, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Giants. Cowboys. That's where we stand right now. Is there someone, Kyle, jumping out as a typical Ravens pick? Uh, Joey Porter Jr. I've got a little bit of Cowboys news. You want you want a little yeah. Cowboys news? Yeah. Uh, apparently, teams are calling. Teams behind the Cowboys are calling. Good. Kansas City and Las Vegas. Apparently, Kansas City holds the thirty-first overall pick, and Vegas is at thirty-eight. I would. And I would. They look both at- said no. They said no to both. Oh, oh! Yeah. So they like what's following. So they like what's happening. So there's your there's your indication on what's happening in the war room right now. There's conversations going wow, on. Wow, Kyle! I think I think they like where they're sitting and what the board has fallen to them right now. Now are they gonna are they gonna tattle for us? Because they didn't do it much last year. They wouldn't let they wouldn't bring the position coach in the room. You're gonna see Linda Wells pop up or Prince pop up or. So can whoever you, they should just bring in every coach and then surprise <laughs> hand one of them the phone. So just reset that one more time, Kyle. Uh, yeah, the, the Chiefs at thirty-one and the Raiders. We don't know compensation. We don't know anything. We just know they were on the phone, and apparently they were having the conversations to trade up to twenty-six. And the Cowboys said no thanks. Wow, that makes so. me feel good. If the Raid, I would do. I would consider doing it with the Raiders just because they've got earlier picks in the rounds. You know, up the top of the Past round. Past the, yeah, the yeah. second. Yeah. Kansas City's picks are all at the end of the round. It's almost like, oh, we'll give you a four. Well, it's really like a five. But you drop down further, so I get, yeah. I get both sides of it. Yeah. I think the best case would be the Steelers hold the thirty or the first pick of the second and the Cardinals, probably the Cardinals pick at 33 because they own some early selections throughout the draft. It would probably take something like that. The pick is in for Baltimore, by the way. All right, so I asked uh, the listeners with a – impromptu poll question on Twitter uh, at 1053SS who y'all rooting for right now with the pick and I got like 100 responses it's here. It's going to be Kincaid? Uh, I mean there's a lot of them. Let me know when Goodell's walking up here. Uh, Porter or Nolan Smith? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jackson, he just went off the board. Porter or Smith? Porter, Smith. 
trade down. Kyle just said they got two opportunities to move up. They were rejected. Uh, Nolan Smith or Kincaid. Joey Porter Jr. Johnston just went off the board. Couple couple non Dak Prescott fans saying, go get Will Levis. They're so excited. They're so excited. Tell Choppy to worry about his broadcast and not be texting you. Yeah. Uh, Porter Jr., (laughs) Nolan Smith, Kincaid, uh, Meyer, um, not a tight end. Trade back. Nolan Smith, Nolan Smith. Not a tight end. ton of Nolan Smith is coming in. Flowers, Porter. So these are from some of the uh, Cowboy uh, radio listeners. I thought it would be clearer the closer we were getting to 26. It's not. Like, I thought more of the people they liked would have been. I thought more of the people they liked would have been picked over and we would have gone, oh, okay, it's starting There's to narrow. you got to be happy, though, left, don't, don't you? Don't yeah, you it's, just, yeah it's just I, have no, I don't know who to. I, it's not, like, aligning for me of, oh, yeah, they're going to take this guy. I, I wish they would take Porter. I don't know if they would do it. Boy, we might we might see if Kyle's right that they have Laporta higher than those guys. Yeah. If all the tight ends yeah, are sitting there. Honestly, that, that's, we'll that, see that, it. Are you for real? Oh. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> oh, that was before you got Very good <laughs> intrigue. Goodell with the Ravens pick. With the 22nd pick in the 2023 draft, the Baltimore Ravens select... Zay Flowers. Yeah. Oh, that's a good wide pick. receiver, Boston College. Okay. There's a wide receiver run. So. Honestly, After. Odell and Zay Flowers together. Have fun. Maybe D Hop. Who knows? Make Lamar happy. Is Lamar happy? Uh, after this, Aisha, and if between, so, why? Between Lamar and Odell, they got two good knees. Stop. <laughs> it's Aisha, one full football. Play. Bobby's going to jail. Tell us about <laughs> tell us about Zay Flowers. Oh man, Zay Flowers are so fun. Change of direction, his speed, the 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 way he can stop on a dime and, and get up field. He can make something out of nothing. Also, too, just getting the opportunity to meet the player. Uh, the player is so passionate, so passionate about what he wants to be. The work ethic is there, but he's very focused on what he wants to do. And he he's not a huge guy. We know that, but he if he gets the ball in his hands, he intends to make the other team pay. And that's one of my favorite things about him. So yeah, he's heck of a player. You getting a coachable player. It's he's an exciting player, man. I am excited for him to be it for the Ravens to play for the Ravens. Yeah. Broadus, why did you let out that groan? No, I mean I was the the Ravens are always amazing to me. Oh, but, I'm sick. But the but the Ravens are a team. I mean they can't draft receivers. Yeah, the receiving core has been and them maybe, and them and Belichick. Maybe they're in, maybe this maybe this changes their maybe this changes their opportunity. You know for, but Aisha's right about this kid. I mean you, you watch him play. He's a really fun player to study because he's not as big as a minute, but he makes every <laughs> single play that's thrown his way. He's got rear start stop quickness. He can make defenders look silly in the open field. He's going 100 miles an hour, then stops on a dime. He has a keen sense for how to play in a very small spots. Outstanding balance, body control as a player. Hard guy to get a good shot on because of that quickness. And that it looks movement. like Tyreek, what yeah. I'm looking at right now. For I mean, like for a guy that lacks height, he will make up for it with his reach. Seriously, this guy goes and gets the ball. So, uh, I, outstanding finisher. I mean, he, he always, like I say, he appears to have fun playing games. Because he's always messing with people after on tape. You see, he'll catch a ball, get up, and kind of yeah. have fun with somebody afterwards. All right, so we have. By the way, the New York Giants were really looking hard at this guy. Yes, they were. Zay Flowers was a guy that they were really on. Let's see if that Addison, when we get to him, if Addison, the receiver, that might be their pick. They're hunting for a receiver here. I was I mocked Flowers to the Giants last week at 25, and Addison was already off the board. I think if Addison would have been there between the two, I think they would have taken Addison. Over flowers, so he there's, went where I thought it was. He yeah, there's. A, I had him at twenty three. Yeah, that's that's a, a good player going to Baltimore. Next time you need to send me your notes, please. Yeah, can me? you just tell us who's uh, who you have at Minnesota and Jacksonville? <laughs> I have no idea, y'all. I this is just Brian has been teaching me how to do my stack and talking to me about it, and I did it today. I did it today because uh, I feel like all the information is fresh. We have more conclusion, sure. so I tried to do it today and. Here we are with these humans. All right, so I like that. You know, I, I love Kyle's reporting on the Chiefs and the Raiders trying to move up. Cowboys saying no. But, but do you think that's just at this moment we're yeah. saying no because right. we're going to wait to see? And if we have four options, then we'll go ahead and make a phone call back to you guys. I don't think it's out of the question. It may be the preliminary phone calls that we were talking about, too. That, hey, just so you know, we're here. 
We're here if you want to bail out of this pick. I, I, I mean, I'm about to tweet it in a second, but names that before the draft that were on the board for the Cowboys and that it, they were looking at, Drew Sanders from Arkansas, Mozzie Smith from Michigan, Sam Laporta from Iowa, Dalton Kincaid from Utah. Then you add Joey Porter Jr. and you add Nolan Smith into the fold. Those are the six names, and at least – Two or three of those are going to be on the board, right? Yeah, it looks like Stephen Jones is he, when he leans over to Jerry and's talking. He's he's looking at his trade calculating chart. points. Yeah, they're looking at points right now. Todd Williams, well, I think, just floated. Todd is director of administration, so football operations and stuff. He's responsible for the trade sheets and stuff like that. So maybe Stephen is there trying to explain if they go back. This is what they can, uh, what they potentially can look at. So he's trying to explain to Jerry uh, how the points are going to work for a particular trade. Maybe a call they like that they want to, uh, they want to take a peek at. This is my favorite part: just trying to play body language observer and see who is in the Ooh, room. DQ's in the room, and the drama that's playing out. So Dan Quinn is lingering in the background. Uh, meanwhile, on the national broadcast, Will Levis is suffering in the green room. Uh, so we got all of them up. Now, look, Minnesota. Is this the end? Is this is this the final spot for Will Levis? You think, Minnesota? Ask the uh, ask, ask the expert, the QB whisperer. I don't know, y'all. I just didn't think he was that. I thought he was you a second round player. <laughs> <laughs> well, why is Minnesota? Let, let's bring this up. Why is Minnesota blowing it up? We, we're hearing about Dalvin out. Cousins replacement draft. I mean, Minnesota in a in a in a in a Cowboy category or like a little bit less. I, I grouped like the Titans over the years, the Vikings, the Cowboys. You know, I, I put the Cowboys ahead of them. But why are the Minnesota Vikings blowing it up? I don't know. It feels similar. It kind of feels similar to the Cardinals. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It feels similar to the Cardinals. Is that they kind of made a run at it, kind of sorta, and then after that. They didn't have success with it in the last couple of years. You've seen them be competitive, but at the same time, you just knew they weren't going to be successful. Am I tripping? Did you feel like they were going to go far in the playoffs or at any no, point in time no. this season? You felt like they, they, had, had, the they fluky, had hit a ceiling. Yeah, They had the fluky one-score thing like the New York Giants did. Sure. Like everyone knew they were getting eliminated early on. But I mean, blow it up with Cousins? Start over? How long is it? He's been there. For, how long has Kirk Cousins been a Viking? Yeah, six years, yeah, something it's been like a that. While it now. just goes by. It just has gone by fast, I yeah. guess. But it's been a minute. But to answer uh, Brian's question for Levis tonight, Minnesota. We know Jacksonville's a no. We know the Giants are a no. Cowboys are a no. Buffalo, Cincy, New Orleans is a no. Philadelphia, and then Chris Collinsworth mocked Hendon Hooker to Kansas City for some reason yesterday at number 31. But, Brian, I think you're right. Unless someone moves in at the end, uh, then Will Levis will be looking like a day two quarterback at the very least. So let's see what the Vikings do here. Um, but they, they, seem to, they seem to be hitting the eject button as of late on their plan. So the Dallas Cowboys are talking. Uh, we got Mike McCarthy next to Jerry. And Jerry looks like he's studying something. Were they doing math earlier? I think Brian's spot on, by the way, on, on talking points in terms of trade back. I think they're talking about it. Why trade back and not oh, trade? Oh, not trade. It, it, trade in general. Just okay. the trade charts. Yeah. I don't know if you had another report. No, I don't, have, I don't have anything else, no. Okay. Uh, so that's where we stand right now. The pick is in for Minnesota. And then after this, we're going to go full Cowboys coverage. Just a reminder, uh, because of the awesome access we have, we're going to get the player first. As soon as he's drafted, we'll get the phone call. That's secret draft audio. And then the Cowboys press conference after what they decide to do tonight and setting you up for tomorrow as well. Big surprise so far. Any big shock? Just to recap, round one. Yeah, how many trades there were. Yeah. people. I think people were getting a little – they had an idea that they needed to move around to grab some guys. I think – so Are we at seven? I think – well, yeah. I, I, seven I, trades? I didn't count the trades all up here. But uh, I know what Houston made two of them, right? <laughs> yeah. Am I right about Arizona that? Arizona trading? The Eagles yeah. trading? Gibbs going 12 is the biggest I think Gibbs going 12 and then also the Will McDonald at 15. Mm. I think was Campbell. Jack Campbell at 18. Nah. I didn't see those coming down the pike. Uh, Devin Witherspoon, that was at four? Five. Yeah. Five, yeah. five? Five? At five? Yeah, like that That was the biggest surprise to me. That, that was a big surprise. That was a surprise. 
I think Jack Campbell going that early was probably – oh, and, and let's just say the Lions in general because they take Jameer Gibbs at 12 and then they book in that with Jack Campbell at 18. That one-two punch I think was the biggest surprise for, for me specifically. And the wide receivers going three straight after falling to the 20s. You go bang, bang, bang like that. What about a surprise of no tight end drafted? None. Yeah, and this that's might, surprising. This might I thought actually, at least one would This fall. might actually play out for Dallas if that's the – and I'm now interested to see if, if Laporta is see, on their board higher than the other tight ends. Yeah. Okay, now that's the second face you've made when Laporta's name has come up. you got to explain why now. Oh, man, are we going to get the interruption like yeah. of Roger Goodell? We're going to get you on DallasCowboys.com <laughs> side. Explain that. Uh, Goodell with the pick from Mini. 23rd pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Jordan Addison, wide receiver, USC. Brought us his number one receiver. Uh, we will have that on the other side. And the Dallas Cowboys are getting closer. Don't go anywhere. 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com continues. All right, brought us. That's the fourth straight wide receiver to go. That's wild. There they go. Smith and Jigba to Seattle. Uh, Quentin Johnston to the Chargers. Uh, Zay Flowers to Baltimore. And then now Jordan Addison. Uh, so I. Why I, was he your number one receiver? Well, I'll tell you what. I The thing with Jordan, and he had, the, he had one of the best quarterbacks in the country throwing the ball. I mean, you watch this. He was blessed. And there's tape, there's tape at Pittsburgh where I think you watch him playing with Kenny Pickett, and he looked pretty good doing that. But the thing about Jordan, he's one of my top, he's one of the top receivers in the country, and it, he has been. He's he flourished in Lincoln Riley's system. He's physically not the biggest guy, but he plays with no fear. He's dynamic with the ball in his hands. Aisha, you got something over there? Or you just reading your phone? Oh, the Giants tra- traded. That's, that's what you're. Go ahead. No, no, you go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go Aisha, go ahead. Um, yeah, they just traded um, pick 25 and 160 for pick 24 from the Jacksonville. The, the Jags. So they moved up. They're flipping with the Jets. They saw that run on receivers. They got scared. And they're getting nervous, I bet. This is Jalen Hyatt then? They scared. You think this is Jalen Hyatt? This, they go five straight? They were, they were hunting corners. They were hunting corners. But the corners they liked was Banks. They liked uh, Forbes and Banks were the two guys that they really liked. So they got up to Jackson. Maybe they're worried about maybe they're worried about Dallas taking one of these corners. You know, uh, uh, but they're they, ahead of Dallas. Well, I, 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 I yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was, but I was, I was thinking of a team trading ahead of Dallas for something. But yeah, that's the. To me, I, I know talking to them, and I'm sorry, I was lost my train of thought there. But they were looking for wide receivers, and they were looking for cornerbacks were the two areas that I was thinking about. Uh, so apparently, this is not a swap. The the Jag, the the Giants are going to pick at twenty four and twenty five is what I'm hearing. Is that it? Is a swap? Never mind. I okay. heard a difference. So you must be on my crazy train. Yeah, I, like, I, I I was just there too. Late. Yeah, no, yep. it, it's cool. Uh, but but getting back to Addison, I mean. I would not call him a blazer, but he runs fast enough. He's got body control. He's got awareness along the sidelines. He gets his feet down quickly. He's always on the move. They use him on screens, on sweeps. He's a finisher with the ball in his hands. I think he's got some Odell Beckham Jr. into his game, oh. the way he plays. All right, so Jordan Addison to the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I'm just looking over the – I'm trying to see as we're getting closer to Dallas. I'm just looking over the board trying to figure out who are names that we're still connecting here. Miles Murphy. From Clemson, yep. Obviously, the tight ends: Dalton Kincaid, uh, Sam Laporta, um, Michael Mayer. You've got Joey Porter Jr. still there. We they've been interested in Drew Sanders, the linebacker at Arkansas. There's just there's a number of directions they could go here. So when we came in earlier in the pre-show at around six, Sam Laporta's name was heating up a little bit. Aisha, what is your scouting report of Sam Laporta? I don't listen. Don't do me like that. I, I, I don't do me like that. I don't have a whole bunch of problems with uh, Sam Laporta. My 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 problem is just the fact that the rest of the league is telling you that tight end is another. Don't freak out about it. I guess at twenty six you can still take a guy. So for you, I'm it's a not. positional value thing. Like you can wait on tight end. Well, it also too, we talked about it on the draft show. Is it depends on what you feel like about the Cowboys' tight end room right now, yep. and what you're adding to it, and how that person is going to come in and be productive in this tight end room right now. And like 
for a first round pick, you would assume you want them to come in and be productive right now. So are you expecting for them to take snaps away from Peyton and Ferg? Is that the competition important to you? Laporta to me is a, is a steady he's a steady tight end. Um, he also has a he has some yak ability also too. I feel like he's displayed the Iowa offense. Brian, we talked about it a number of times. It wasn't nothing, wasn't nothing special. Mm-hmm. I guess you want to say like it wasn't always explosive and stuff. But he's a steady tight end that understands he can high point the ball. He understands angles. He can slip some tackles. He's just he's a steady tight end. Like we I tell you, about. there's there's an injury history with this guy. Though. Well, thank mm-hmm. you for that. Yeah. And there's like in 2017 he had a left meniscus surgery, in 2019 he had a stinger, in 2022 he had right meniscus uh, surgery, wow. in 2022 he had left ankle bone spur surgery, he's had a right hip uh, right hip impingement that could uh, flare up later in his career. So Brian, this kid's a little banged up if you want to say that. Brian, why would you let me say anything about him and then you was gonna list out the fact that he is they, that, but, bionic but, or something? But, 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 He's, true. he's telling he, he's telling you that yep. they like him. They love Despite him. Despite everything about him, he he probably a red tag guy on their board. I have an interesting point off of Aisha's and, and kind of the positional value with tight end when we come back. I've, I've got something to kind of add on there that I think could throw a wrench into this whole thing in just a second. Ooh. All right, y'all. It is almost showtime. We are at pick number 24. The New York Giants have moved up. We're about to find out why. But Quentin Johnson. They're ahead of the Cowboys, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure of that. <laughs> Quentin Johnson, TCU receiver, went to the Chargers at 22. Four straight receivers after Jackson Smith and Jigba went to Seattle. Jackson. Quentin, Zay Flowers to Baltimore, and then the Minnesota Vikings went Jordan Addison, brought us his top receiver out of USC at number 23. The Giants are on the clock, then Jacksonville, then the Cowboys at number 26. Finish your point that we had in the commercial. Yeah, we were talking on the DallasCowboys.com side, and Aisha brought up the fact that there has not been a tight end taken, and we're sitting at the 24th overall pick. You have Dalton Kincaid still available. Michael Mayer is still available. Sam Laporta is still there. Every tight end still on the board. The league is telling you right now, and Aisha, this was your, your point specifically, but the league is telling you maybe you can wait. Yeah. Maybe you can wait until the second round and still nab a top-notch tight end. So I, the more that these tight ends are on the board, it looks like, yes, you have options. They may not go with a tight end at all because this is a deep draft. We talked about the Tucker Crafts of the world, the Luke Schoomaker from Michigan, the Darnell Washington from Georgia. There are names on the board outside of tight end. Maybe they don't even remotely look at that position right now as much as we thought they would initially I still think they like all those guys, but yeah. now they feel like they can wait. We, and we, I mean, we've seen Dan Quinn walking around the uh, yeah. the room there, and Joey Porter Jr. is still on the board. Nolan Smith is still on the board. Miles I mean, there Murphy. are options there. Deontay Banks is another one that you can maybe look at here at corner. Well, I'll tell you what, Banks would be – he'd be a nice player. What are they talking about right now, uh, Brian? Buffalo the- just moved up in front of Dallas, by the way. Uh-oh. Buffalo just took 25. Here's the giant selection. They leapfrogged you. The Jacksonville Jaguars have traded the 24th pick to the New York Giants. With the 24th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Deontay Banks. Defensive back. There we go. There goes one. So, but who does Buffalo think Dallas was taking? So this is no doubt in your mind, Buffalo did this to jump the Cowboys. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. Bu- Buffalo was right behind and we Dallas. talked about this on the draft show. You have to be worried about somebody coming from behind. That was something that we talked about, that maybe one of these players, like Porter's there, one of these tight ends are there. They might go, you know, they might not, you know, Dallas might not like Mayer as much as others. You know, I mean, we'll see how this thing plays out. Buffalo. I love the pick, by the way, by the uh, Giants. Why? I just I think this kid is extremely tough. When you watch him, like the cover stuff that he's able to do, he he is he's super impressive with the way the movement, the toughness, and all that. People were kind of kind of getting on him a little bit about maybe he doesn't carry things from the field or from the board to the field. But man, he's got a physical side to the game. I mean, this playing style. He's not afraid to come forward. He's not afraid to tackle. He sticks his nose in the action. He does a great job playing press coverage right there. He's sticky. 
sneaky when he plays man to man. He's got a feel for how to position himself. The Giants got him a guy right here, six foot one ninety seven, good looking physically as a kid. Really good ball skills when you watch him play. I'm nervous right now. Do we have the war room? Yeah, we're getting the highlights here. Um, so. What did Buffalo think the Cowboys were doing? So the needs for Buffalo are offensive line. They need some offensive line help up front. They need a guard. They need a center. They need an interior defensive lineman. Those are all positions that are in play here for Dallas. You could go get – I mean, the, the offensive line's pretty dry. They still have Osiris Torrance. Matthew Bergeron is there. Steve Avila is there, even though I think he would probably be a late day two guy. And then on the defensive side of things – they don't really need a linebacker, but you have Drew Sanders. They don't really need a corner. They could use a corner, I guess. But I'm just throwing out some of the positions that Buffalo could be looking at here to, to jump Dallas for. You would think would it would have, have to be a, a big name. But with all these names we've been throwing out, would they have a – I mean, it's not necessarily to, like, get one over, like, take the Cowboys guy – it's just to secure their own, right? Like, to, unless they had a really good feeling on who the Cowboys wanted the pinpoint. At the, I mean, if they think they're picking from the same position as the Cowboys, yeah. Like, if they let's say they both wanted, like, the Bills want to get a tight end. If they feel like Dallas is going to take a tight end, we don't know who they're going to take, but we got to get up there, right? Yeah. They may not know. They just may have had an inkling, like, we got to get ahead of them. We can't risk. All it. right, sure. reset y'all's overall boards, please. Stevens on the phone. Uh, Joey Porter Jr., Brian Branch, Nolan Smith, Dalton Kincaid are my top four that are still available. Yeah, I Andrew got, Sanders is top five. Yeah, I, I would go. I would go with Porter at nine, uh, Murphy at the, from Clemson at fourteen, Mayor at eighteen would be my uh, my guys. Uh, I have Nolan Smith. Uh, I have uh, Miles Murphy, uh, Brian Branch, and Joey Porter Jr. Okay, if Buffalo took blank. You'll feel a little deflated. Porter? I would be me personally because Porter's my ninth guy, and I think it would definitely help you. To, you still have some questions at cornerback here, maybe long-term big picture about what you want to do. Porter, to me, has got length. He's got range. He's a big guy. He's physical. He's got great bloodlines of his dad uh, as player. I think he's tough. I, I think he would be a really nice fit here. Why, why is he Nolan? here? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Same thing with Nolan Smith, though. Why are they here? Nolan Smith might be in a situation where people feel asked a team, what's the deal with Nolan Smith? The response that I got was that he's a little bit hurt and he's a little bit undersized. That's why they, they feel like that he might be sliding a little bit. And these, and these Porter rumors – are, are proving true, right, Bobby? We talked about it this morning of why why is he falling? Why is he dropping? Right. We had heard recently like he was sliding a little bit. I don't think we thought he'd get all the way down here. No. But so, by the way, a Buffalo's pick is in. So Dallas is on the clock right now. There you go. It's wow. Up. All right. Reset your tight end board. They're all there. They're all, all there. They're all there. Dalton Everyone. Kincaid, Michael yeah. Mayer. Take your pick. Luke no, in, Musgrave. In, in order, though. That is in order. Okay. Dalton Kincaid, Michael Mayer, Luke Musgrave, Sam Laporta. That's not their order, or at least it seems like that might not be their order. What do you I, think? Dalton, their, what do you think their order is? I think it's Laporta, Kincaid, Musgrave, Mayor. If I had to put it out there, okay. I think that would be their. What do the Bills need? The offensive line and corner. They could use a tight end. They have Dawson this is, Knox. This has but got to be a tight end. Why, you, why be, are you to jumping? To be doing all this extra, yeah. To be like, doing like all this if extra. You, unless you just. That's the thing that everybody has been chattering about Dallas could take. They got to think they got to get ahead of them for that. So, look, correct me. That's been the rumor, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but as, as, as a fan following y'all's draft coverage, sometimes when a name comes out of the blue, Tyler Smith, Travis Frederick, we have a negative reaction because you're, you're not yeah. used to it. We're excited about Kincaid because he's the down the field threat. We know yeah. Michael Mayer, we hear the Jason Wink comparisons. Am I wrong in thinking that a Sam Laporta selection would feel initially disappointment with the fan base? Yeah. Oh, we, Kyle, we, you just put him as your fourth tight end. With the way, yeah. with the way that, that now, again, we the way that we rank tight ends, yeah. we would be disappointed. Yeah, correct. They can give a rat's butt sure. what we think, <laughs> and they've been proven. Will McClay? I mean, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. go with whoever Will picks. Yeah, I'm just trying to come at it from a fan reaction standpoint because Laporta is kind of a brand new name. Uh, that we weren't talking about near as much as the other tight ends. We didn't think that we would. We thought there might be one tight end on the board. We've got all of them. 
Yeah. We've got all of them. Now, if you want to move back, if you can move back and you still you know, want to grab Laporta, feel free. But you got every tight end. If you're, if you're holding on tight ends, yeah. you've got four of them on your board if you, want to, if you want to dance out of here. It's just what, what's your flavor of ice cream. Yep, that's, that's it. it. You got all the flavors. You got all the options. Could we go back to the trade-out scenario, depending on what Buffalo does here? If you're if you're hold, if, if you're holding on tight ends, we got them all. Let's go. We can go if you want to go. Oh. Pull the parachute and get out, yeah. Bobby. Your take on Laporta? I, I think Laporta's solid. He's a, a good all-around player. He wouldn't be my top three tight ends, but let's see who Buffalo jumped the Cowboys for right now. The Jacksonville Jaguars have traded the 25th pick to the Buffalo Bills. With the 25th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Dalton Kincaid, tight end, Utah. Well, the league's about wow. to go. There you go. Wow. Did they yeah. have a read, they or f- did they just didn't want to risk losing Good him? Good call, Bobby. Probably, did, it's probably just didn't want to risk it. They knew that Dallas was in on tight ends, and they didn't want to guess where they were at. This probably doesn't bother Dallas if, in fact, Laporta is their number one tight end. Well, it shouldn't bother him. Not at all. If he wasn't the number one tight if end. If he's not their number one tight end, this yep. shouldn't bother them at all. All right, let's go around the room. The pick is yours to make. Who would you take? And then we'll get into what we think they're thinking. Who wants to go first? I would take Joey Porter Jr. I would take Joey Porter Jr. too. I would Jr. take too. Joey Porter Jr. I just I think big picture, long term, you know, you've got that contract with Diggs coming up. You know, yeah. and, and is that gonna, you need to protect yourself about that. Yeah, I got him as my ninth best player. Okay, I'm, I'm going to admit probably dead balls wrong about him right now, but I'm just saying he's too good of a player not to. I would rather have him than one of these tight ends. And I've got Mayer at 18. I don't think they're going to get a tight end. I, I don't. I think they're out on it. Why? Because I, I think they think it'll fall. I think it's the same thing. This this class is so deep. Are they? I don't. I don't think they're going to take a Laporta here. Uh, so they may take. They may take a Joey Porter Jr. He's there. Can we see War Room Cam? I yeah, want to see who's nice. lingering. You have been staring at that a hole through it. They'll, I know. Put it up it when matters. they put it up. Just wait a because second. Because it matters. They'll, 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 they'll put it up. They're, they're showing us the highlights of the tight end we could have had if Buffalo didn't jump us. Uh, but when when we were going through needs, I had corner much higher than a lot of people. Miles Murphy, by the way, is a guy, too, that I would consider. Tell tight. us about him. He's the edge rusher from uh, from Clemson. And, you know, to me, you know, they, they, they don't. They, they they act like that they, you know they always adding these edge rushers yeah. and and I I kind of feel like that Miles Murphy is one of those guys he's my 14 I go you can't draw this guy up you can't draw him up any better looking than this guy perfect build to play the position in the NFL outstanding length power is one of those guys that gets off the ball in a hurry is in attack mode right off the snap makes things happen quickly when uh, is on the blocker before he knows it has the ability to get up the field and redirect quickly he can find the ball he's a finisher in the pocket. Pocket. Be a couple snaps where you see him run too deep, and then he has the balance and the body control to get back on target. His length, his length gives bro- uh, blockers problems, and you see him fly down inside quickly to make a play. That's the only time you kind of see him kind of take himself out of a play. But this guy right here, he he he's going to make a ton of plays in the pocket. Six five two sixty eight. I mean, he's a good-looking player. Are you looking at Mike McCarthy here, Bobby? Yeah. I mean, he is he he's, is he's awful. selling. Definitely debating something. He's here. selling, but there's no clue. Zero with an assistant coach in the room. Man, they're not talking quarterback here, are they? Brian, don't start I just, that. I don't Boy, think so. I, I, I will. I will not go to sleep tonight. I will stay up to the press. Some of the names that I, I I really thought they would look at early, and I tweeted these out earlier that are still available: Drew Sanders, Mozzie Smith, Sam Laporta, Kincaid is gone. But then you have the additions of Joey Porter Jr. and Nolan Smith. Oh, yeah, but, but Y'all, they're having a debate. You, Mike McCarthy's a Pittsburgh guy. He's a Pittsburgh guy, right? Am, 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 I'm not wrong about that. Yeah, you're right. Could he be talking about Porter and that, that Pennsylvania kid and all that stuff? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you this. Jerry is listening. At, so Jerry is listening in the middle. And look, and McCarthy is making his point. Oh, he is. It's going back to Steven. Now, McCarthy, it's back to McCarthy. Steven's laughing and joking with him. Go ahead, Bobby. No, I'm just going to say, yeah, Mike McCarthy's a Pittsburgh guy. Here's one thing that I don't know what the pick will be, but I'm just going to say this. Mike McCarthy's a Sam Laporta guy, too. Yeah. Yeah. 
You think about the way he stood on the table for uh, Trey McBride last year, the Colorado State tied in in the second round. Yeah. Didn't get him. You got Jake Ferguson in the fourth, but maybe he's saying here, maybe we do need a tight end. Okay, Will McClay's over here on the far right of the screen. He's now making a point yep. on his end. This is fascinating. Yeah, he's countering, or he's either he's trying to help Mike or he's going against him right now. Because Minute 45 left. Because the pick would have already been in. They're, they're all. Oh, no, make, this is a legit debate. They're all making their points right now. They're still tipping this pick. I can tell you right now, nobody knows what this is going to be. Wow. Will McClay might pick up the phone. If Will McClay picks up the phone, the pick is going in. Yep. But he's he's on that right side. Jerry's now going to have to make the call. Yes. yes. So here we go. So and we've talked about this before. The draft that actually is happening is about what a minute behind. Yeah. The actual draft. The clock on the TV right now is one fifteen. So how much time do they have left? They here? got the Five consensus. Wow. They got it. They got it. They're not. They're not moving out. They're making a pick. Let's look here. And here come the high fives and everything. Do we think Mike McCarthy, Stephen Jones, or Will McClay ended up winning out if they were on different pages? So, wow, that that was as much debate on the clock as I can remember here in a long time and doing this. Added Dirty years. just popped in and gave a hug to somebody. No. He's the defensive line coach. This is, this is, is it Mozzie? Murphy or Mozzie Smith? I would or, or Nolan Smith? Could be Nolan Maybe. Smith. Maybe. Yeah. Could be any of those guys. Would you guys have a preference amongst the three? A major preference? I, I, Miles Murphy would be my guy. If you're going defense, or if you're going, I mean, if you're going defense on the defensive if, line, Miles Murphy would be my guy it, over over Nolan Smith right now. I have Nolan Smith as a higher rated defensive lineman right now, but if you're talking about fit for a team, I think Mozzie Smith Mozzie fits Smith. this team. Yeah, good very but well. Yeah. I have both Murphy and Nolan Smith ahead of him. So I would rather have one of those two guys, but if you're talking about need and fit, that's that's where it would be. And look, I don't mind defensive line either. I, I I really don't. Give me give me your DNs up front. We're always talking about tackle around here, but give me your DNs. Uh, Tank Lawrence uh, is getting longer in the tooth. You had a nice year out of Fowler. Uh, of course, Micah Parsons is lethal. But what what names am I missing on the current defensive end chart? O line, D line, O line, D line. It's like pitching in baseball, right? You can never have enough. So I just, I just felt like all the talk and focus was about tight ends and receivers. I, I wouldn't have minded a cornerback, but yeah. maybe they're looking at defensive line right here, Aisha. Yeah, the way that Brian Baldanger just came at the Cowboys for yeah. not having a solid DT. Yeah. We'll Mozzie mm. Smith makes a lot of sense there, if that's the case. Makes your defensive line better, man. Yeah. Let your he was the best run defender in football. He and this is a team that has struggled to stop the yeah. run. All right, but are we thinking it's Smith? Or are you thinking? I'm thinking it's Mozzie Smith or Miles Murphy. Yep, yeah. one of those. Why not, no, why not Nolan Smith? Because of what you just said. Same I deal. Just, uh, Miles, Nolan Smith, to me, is just like, he's tweener. Okay. Yeah, just for me. Like, yeah. I mean. Well. Pick is, uh, Pick is definitely in the high fives all going around the table here and like that. They evidently got the guy that they wanted. So. They're taking advantage of this being America's team on the TV side. The Cowboys ran it all the way down, and now they're drawing this out uh, as long as possible. A reminder, we will have the player on the phone first. Here it is from the commissioner of the Cowboys pick. As promised, the Cowboys pick. With the 26th pick. In the 2023 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Mozzie Smith, defensive tackle, Michigan. Ah, they took a Michigan man off the board. Mozzie Smith, wow. All right, let's get the profiles and everybody's scouting report. Defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, this is uh, Mozzie Smith. When you watch him play, and everybody was talking about him earlier on the build up there. It was about power and all this. He plays as a really as a true one technique. Stats, numbers are not going to be super flashy, but he does a good job of handling the dirty work for the defense. I think he's got rare athletic ability for a man his size, 6'3", 323. When he comes off the ball, he can be a load to handle. Uh, you know, he when working one on one, he doesn't have many pass rush moves, but he does show plenty of power. He can be disruptive inside. He can be a hard guy to move just because of his strength. The ability to push the pocket from the middle. He plays with a great deal of lower body power and strength. He's able to shed his man, find the ball. I could have seen a little bit better finish at times with him when he, when he got there with an opportunity, but he does have a little bit of a burst. He could get down the line. He could get outside the tackle box. 
He's really good when he has when he can work straight ahead. That rare size athletic ability. Uh, he had a gun charge against him in October, but that everything should be cleared up by by right now. He was dealing with that when he was at Michigan, and it seems like that's all past now. So last year at the combine, I was told, "Watch out for this Tyler Smith cat. Watch out for him to come up." I, I never really thought he would be an option in the first round. I always thought he'd be a second round option or early second round as a trade up potential. Then you get to the draft day, and he was a selection. This year at the combine, and I, I'll go back and I'll clip the the thing. But Aisha and I were at the radio row on the combine, and who did I say? To look out for. Mozzie. Mozzie Smith. Didn't think he would be there at 26. I thought he'd be an early third-round player. I had him in the 30s in my board. I still think he was the best run defender in football last year in terms of a defensive lineman. Bruce Feldman had him at the top of his annual freaks list. He is an absolute freak. Great strength. His lateral quick quickness. You combine to, to really put together a prototypical one-technique build that's able to take up multiple gaps and allow for players behind him to play freely. He's never going to blow back an offensive line. He's not going to be a huge pass rush contributor, at least early in his career. But you talk about stopping the run, jumping up, and being a considerable force to move in the middle of that defensive line. Mozzie Smith is that guy. I think this is a, a, a fantastic fit. I think this is a guy that they had their eyes on for quite some time. I didn't think it would be in the first round. I thought it would probably be an early second round grade, and he wouldn't be there, probably going in the 30s. But this is a, a pick that they felt like they couldn't wait on, and they went up and they got their guy. I, I respect that selection. It's a new day. A DT in the first round. Right? You're absolutely right. What? What's absolutely. happening? Absolutely and, right. And Brian made such a good point about him not being some flashy guy. You got to watch him. You yeah. got to watch the impact yes. that he makes Um in, in the run, against the run, and just obviously being a tone setter like we talked about, the battle between him and Steve Avila, Avila was actually one of my favorites yeah. to watch this year, just how technical Steve Avila is and Mozzie and him battling. I think Steve Avila got was, Yes, it was, it was a battle. Fun. It was a battle. And just to see, and you made a good point about his length, Brian. Like yeah. He's not super long. He's not super long, but he's definitely going to make a play. Make um, He's going to punch. He's going to make plays on the ball when he can. But if you brought the guy in here because you want to stop the run better, and he's probably going to make things easier for your edges to be free and do what they need to do. Also, too, you got Jonathan Hankins here for a year. You might need another guy. I I, I love it. Uh, I know fans have been clamoring, and I'm not just saying this because we're on the, on, on the broadcast. I felt like this team, run defense-wise, could still be run on in crucial points and times in a game, and fans have been wanting – a, a run-stuffing defensive tackle. People went crazy when they traded for Hankins last year. All right, And that's not even the biggest name that was out there. And now you go and draft a guy and invest in it. As you said, Brian Baldinger, NFL Network, uh, kind of you know killed the Cowboys for not freeing up Micah Parsons more. It would surprise me if Micah was not doing backflips over oh, he's this. He's already tweeted. Has he? Yeah. <laughs> what do he say? Welcome, Mozzie. Pretty much that's it. Okay. Oh, but it's a bunch of exclamation points. We'll get Mozzie on the phone. All the reaction. Uh, the front office is going to talk about this in the post-draft presser. And we still got more picks to get to. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys have their new defensive lineman out of Michigan. It's the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network at DallasCowboys.com. All right. I, What's the reaction? I, I, I'm looking at it right now. A lot of people don't like the Michigan helmet that he wears. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't like it. Taco this is taco, taco memories. Let me let me put it this way, since we're all friends here on DallasCowboys.com. Well. We are. We're all friends. <laughs> this is not Taco Charlton. This is a different player. This is somebody that's going to come in, and he's better than Jonathan Hankins right now, and I will put that out there, and I am very confident in that. Mozzie Smith at 330 pounds can bend better than Taco. Absolutely. <laughs> so stop comp stop that right now. Stop it. Look at me in my one shot right here. This is not Taco Charlton. This is not Taco Charlton. This is Mozzie Smith, completely different player. I like the pick. I really do. He wasn't the highest-rated player on my board. I would have done something else. I would have taken another Smith, taken Nolan Smith. Yeah. However— Good pick. You got your fit, and they like him across the way. It's kind of like what you talked about, Bobby. They've earned the right. They've earned the confidence here. I like the fit overall. Exactly. He's the best run stopper on the defensive line on the roster now. Right now. Right now. 
Yeah, and that's even with them re-signing Hankins. He's the best run stopper on the defensive line. And look, if you need improved quarterback or linebacker play, part of improving your linebacker play is keeping your linebackers clean, and he'll do that. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. So where was he on all y'all's boards overall? 39. 39. He was at, he was at 45 for me. 45. Second round grade, but 45. 40. 40. I'm trying to get there. Okay. Uh, so the Cowboys stuck in there at number 26. Yeah. And look, if it's a lack of guys at that position, then here's the pick from Jacksonville. 47th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Anton Harrison, tackle Whoa. Oklahoma. Why that reaction? No, he went a lot higher than I thought he was going to go. Aren't uh, you? I, got I thought 40 you were a fan. Se- I am. He's the 47th best player on my board, so uh, I am. But I, I, I didn't think he would – he went a little bit higher. I thought he was more of a second-round uh, type of a player uh, for me. But that's where we are with these – I mean, you're getting down to the – if you're trying to find these offensive linemen and stuff like that, it's uh, – you know, you're going to have to squint a little bit. But – I do, I do like, uh, I do like Harrison, and I, I'll tell you why I like him. He was a starter left tackle for the uh, for the Sooners. He's six four. He was three hundred fifteen pounds. I don't know if you'll see a better foot athlete for the position and for this this guy. I mean, he is a great foot athlete. Super light on his feet. He's active. He's always playing on the move. You see him rarely on the ground. There's some snaps where you see him get somewhat off balance, and then he rallies back into position. He always plays in a two-point stance. The team is very pass-heavy, so plenty of snaps where he's in pass protection. The ease of movement off the line into his blocks. He's a slim-looking tackle but who lacks a little strength, but you see rushers kind of be able to break him down a little bit, but he'll do his job. You can use him in the running game as a puller. He plays well in space. Running and moving, not an issue. Uh, he will get into his man and just run him out of the play. So I, I see no wasted movement with this guy. A little lack of power, but he checks all the boxes for everything else. I really do like him. Where did you have him? I had him at 47 Okay. overall. Got it. For Mozzie Smith, by the way, just going back to him real quick, for his size, he might be the best athlete that I've seen in the draft at that 330 pound size of defensive tackle in years. Wow. Like, I mean, he, he is a fantastic athlete. He's very explosive. He's bendy. He's powerful. There, I mean, there's going to be a lot for Dan Quinn to work with. But didn't one of y'all say he's not pushing offensive linemen back into the backfield? He's not a pass rush product on film, but I mean, we've seen that before that he can he could grow into that. He could develop it. I I think he will develop it. I think there's a ceiling to this player that has not been hit yet. All right, guys, Mozzie Smith is your newest Dallas Cowboy. It looked like there was a pretty intense debate taking place inside the war room. We are right down the hallway here at the Ford Center at the Star, brought to you by Miller Lite. Sean Sharif, Brian Broadus, Bobby Belt, Aisha Morrison, and Kyle Yeomans. And the Cowboys, as you said, Aisha, new day with a one-technique run-stopping defensive tackle that it felt like they were allergic to for a long time. Well, yeah, um, we've talked about it. We talked about it on Girls Talk, Boys Talk. It's it's interesting that we're seeing this flip here that they went for a guy like you guys were just talking about. There's not a lot of pass rush ability there that you, that has been showed on film yet, but he does have athleticism and something to build up to. But it's interesting, too, because when you look at Dan Quinn and how they've drafted DT since he's been here, you've gotten guys who've had – the ability to get up field also as well and to kind of shy from that I think it's I think it's a good awareness by the coaching staff to say, hey, we've drafted multiple guys at that three tech position that we have come in that wanted we wanted them to be pass rush and stop the run, but that served you problems. So going for a guy that just stops the run is a, a good step in the right direction. Bengals pick. In the twenty twenty three NFL draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Miles Murphy, defensive end, Clemson. Wow. All right. Wow. I love it. What, what's that look, Bobby? Micah Parsons' quote on that live stream. You know what he said no. when they picked him? No more quarterback sneaks is what he said. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Little message to Jalen right. Hurts and the Eagles. Brian, <laughs> you love Miles Murphy? Yeah, I, I read him earlier when we were talking about the possibility. He was my 14th best player on the board. I, I said this. They, look at these highlights. This – this cat, they don't. This is this is how you draw him up right here. This guy right here. Look at the redirect. That's a big boy too. Yeah, mm-hmm. redirect. 
Uh, he is one of those guys, the ball doesn't – look how long his arms are and stuff like that. Watch this. He's just going to come right back to you. Boom. Slap that ball. Yeah. Try and get at it right there. This guy closed. There's your offense, uh, Aisha, that Wake Forest offense. You like that moves in slow motion. But, uh, <laughs> but looking to break down the tackle there right there. Boom. Just top right on top of the quarterback. I really love this kid. And you know what? Hey, I am I'm a fan of Mozzie Smith. I was hopeful that, that – I'm surprised this guy was sliding. I really, really was. And it, it was very late in the process. But I think the Cincinnati Bengals, they, they've done a good job of getting these defensive linemen. And uh, this, this kid is going to be all right. Do you think it might be because he's a little bit of a tweener? That maybe that's why this he, guy is 6'5", 268. Yeah, hey, look at I mean he's, he's he, big on the outside. He, he is he is a he's just good looking and you know like I say <laughs> the, the the run right at him he he can extend because he's got that length and he's not going to let blockers get into him like that you know and let him push on him and but look at that you know taking a tackle with him to make a sack. Uh, I don't know man that that cat I, I I really do like what I saw of him on tape. Brandon being the Bills general manager is giving his press conference right now and he said that if Dalton Kincaid was not on the board they were going to trade out and so they specifically went up to go over Dallas because they thought the Cowboys were going to take him and did the oh we have Mozzie Smith on the phone right here on your home of America's team Mozzie congratulations man how does it feel man uh it feels crazy man I ain't you know, this first first for everything and the last for this one, man, it's, it's crazy, you know. What was your interaction with the Cowboys throughout the process, and when did you think, if you ever did, that this could be a reality? Oh, uh, I spent some good time with them uh, during the, the combine. You know, we had a formal, and um, you know, caught the vibes and, you know, talked to, uh, talked to everybody and got to meet everybody and, you know, left feeling good. You know, and, and kind of didn't talk to him as much until, you know, we uh we got on and I came on a on a private visit, a private thirty visit. Yeah. And uh and uh then got in the facility, got to meet everybody, got to meet Mr. Jones, got to meet Coach Quinn, Coach uh, McCarthy, got to meet Coach D A. Everybody and um, just get a good vibe and they got a good feel for me and you know, a lot of smiles, a lot of laughs, just. So good, you know, talked about being great, you know, and, and what it's going to take, you know. Mozzie, Kyle Yeomans here. Congratulations on, on being the selection and on being the newest Dallas Cowboy. What has been sure. the, the biggest inspiration for you up to this point and your football journey, your journey in life that has led you to this point? And where do you pull your motivation now heading into the NFL? Uh, you know, I ain't never – or I say like this. And every team I've been on, I've been I've been a, I've been one of the players that was gonna help win the game, um, and that that got to continue. First off, you know what I'm saying, um, and I got to put the work in to become that, and uh, help this team win. Um, but the driving factor in my whole life, I always just wanted to be a dog. When I when I got on the field, uh, it's all about being a dog. It's all about you know making that man across from me remember me, you know, um, and that's that's kind of my driving motivation you know i don't want to be getting tossed around no way you know the field is where i have fun at so mozzie go blue and uh yeah so i you know I, when we watch you play on tape the one thing we notice is you are always on the other side of the line of scrimmage a lot of power yeah. in that body a lot of ability to find the football and stuff like that if you kind of had to say, hey, listen, coming into the league, I, I want to work on something. This is what I might need to get a little bit better at. Is there something mm -hmm. you kind of have in mind that you want to really improve on when you when you get here? Um, you know, first and foremost, I got I got my first job is to you know become an elite run defender and um, make sure that I, I you know plug up them gaps up front, make sure I'm making plays, you know, and stopping that run. Um, but one thing I do know that I, I got to get better at and show up more um, if I want to become a complete player is uh, pass rushing and working edges. You know, I think during, you know, my time at Michigan, you know, I spent every game pretty much focused on the run and, you know, wanted to just do my job well for my team and help us win the game, and that's what it was going to take. You know, but everybody know the league, a different type of league. The league throw the ball a little bit more, so um, you got to be put yourself in a position to affect the game and help the team. So... Mozzie, what comps did you think were the most accurate for you? Who was a guy that you tried to emulate your game after? Uh, I'm not. I, listen, I don't really listen to those comps and stuff. You know, 
I just look at big guys who who physical and who who play the game the right way. You know, first person that come to mind is Jeffrey Simmons, and um, the, another person that comes to mind is Deron Payne. Those are two guys just got uh, you know their second contracts and and um, two guys that have been playing the game the right way. You know, since they've been in the league and uh, they just. They, I've always watched all their tape. You know, I watched their college tape, watch their NFL tape. You know, those two guys that I, I look up to pick, pick up uh, pieces of the game. Newest Dallas Cowboy, Mozzie Smith, joining us here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Uh, Micah Parsons has been talking about you and sending some messages out there <laughs> on social media. Ha- before I tell yes, you what sir. he said, have you interacted yes, with, with Micah here as of late? Have you heard from him? Uh, not, nah, not that I, nah, I ain't heard from, uh, Mikey, a dog, though. He a, he a dog. <laughs> All right. As a dog. Here it is. You should like this. Micah Parsons texted Dan Quinn earlier in the day that he wanted you, and then his exact yeah. quote, I hope you're ready to be part of the best D-line in the NFL. I'm going to help you get sacks. You're going to help me get sacks. Let's yeah. get this Super Bowl to that. You say back to Micah what? Everybody eats, man. You know, we're gonna make the we gonna look we're gonna make the inside of this defense and we're gonna make the front of this defense the teeth. You know, just like this. So I'm excited to get to work, man. I ain't no stranger to no work. Oh yeah, and he said no more QB sneaks either. No more QB sneaks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he know he. Hey, I, I know what he's talking about too. I know what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, is that little code? Is that little inside code? No, I'm just laughing at how hard he was laughing. What was the family reaction inside the house? What was the What was the get together like this evening? Man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I just really kept it simple, just me and my mom, man. And uh, you know, we just we just sat down and and waited and just hugged it out, you know. And, uh, and I thought I was gonna cry. I ain't cry though. You know, I cry when I, you know, when I put that helmet on and hit somebody. You know, not not out of being soft, but just. Happy to be <laughs> yeah, we got you. Man. <laughs> hey, man, go enjoy the moment. Congratulations! Thank you so much for the time, and we can't wait to get you here in DFW. Yeah. Congratulations on the dream. I appreciate it. There he is, man. He yeah. sounds composed. Oh, he sounds composed, and he sounds together, calm, cool, and collected. Until he needs to get violent. All right. uh, (laughs) Let's continue. Let's get caught up with everything that's happened. Close this thing out. Yeah. uh, Miles. Oh, secret audio we're going to go to right now, Sean. Throw that at you. All right. Let's hear the secret audio that uh, made Ozzy Smith's dream come true. Yes, sir. This is Miles. The cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're making it happen. Mozzy, I'm telling you, it's our thrill to uh, be able to call you this Jerry Jones. And yes, uh, I'll tell you, we just turned your card in. We're drafting you for Thank you. Uh, be our oh, yeah. big part of our defense. And uh, But yes, I want sir. the coach to say to you, everybody's wanting to say hello to you, but congratulations yes, on your uh, career and for working as hard as you have to get there. And, yes, uh, but, uh, boy, we're excited about having you come in here. We're excited about the team, but the defense you're playing on as well. Yes, sir. But Thank here's you your so head much. coach. Here's your head coach, Mike McCarthy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Mozzie, how you doing? You having some fun? Uh, yeah, I'm great. Yeah, I'm great. I'm doing great. Where are you right now? Are you home with your family? or? Yeah, just with my mom. It's me and my mom. Okay, that's awesome. Hey, congratulations. Enjoy this time with you. Obviously, we'll get to work when you get here, but can't tell you how excited we are to have you. You'll be a phenomenal fit. You crushed it in your, your visit here, so you're you're at a great place, young man. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. All right, Mozzie, enjoy yourself. Hey, I'm going to pass you over to Dan Quinn, our defensive coordinator, okay? All right, bet. Yo, hold on. Hey, Mozzie, this is Coach DQ. Yes, sir. What up, what up, big dog? What's up, man? How about this, huh? Yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Dude. Yeah, well, you did it, bro. We can't wait to get you here, man. We, uh, we yes, can't sir. wait to get rocking with you. Yes, sir. Yes, All right. Sir. Yes, well, uh, I'll give you back uh, the call, and uh, the guys will get you rocking to get going. Yeah, All right, thank congrats, you. man. Yeah, thank you, Coach. All right, so there's the secret audio. we got to come back with these selections. The Eagles are on the clock. This is the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. Nolan Smith's still on the board for Philadelphia 30. No. Yeah. What happened before this with the Saints? That would Brian be uh, Brian Breesey, yeah. Okay. The, from Clemson. The quarterback, Brian no, Greasy? No, no. no. <laughs> Brian yep, Breesey. That's the one. <laughs> Breesey, the, the defensive tackle from Clemson. Okay. Is, Former number one overall recruit in the country. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so Philadelphia, who we were talking about with Nolan Smith potentially at 10. Yeah. 
right? Now here we are. I mean, they, they've kind of, whether it's been, you know, maybe undersized or people think that maybe he might be able to have a little bit more of an injury history or something like that, this is a guy that they really, really liked that we were hearing. So uh, don't be surprised if, in fact, uh, now maybe they're thinking about moving back or maybe they're wondering what the heck happened, why is this guy still here? kind of a situation so they're probably you know probably talking to each other about it but it's amazing that if they were thinking about him at 10 and to have an opportunity to get him at 30 that kind of just tells you the way this draft has been so far you know it's been some surprises along the way that that have allowed some of these players to get to where they needed to be all right let me ask you a couple of uh, questions from the fans on the selection of mozzie smith while we wait for the eagles to pick again would he have been available and where would he have been available in round two? N- not very long. I don't he would, think, he would I don't, not have gotten to no, I don't if, think he would have even been If you would have made the trade back that you were talking about maybe with the Raiders, that tra- it had to be an early it had to be an early in the round. I don't think you could have gone too much. Like I said, I had him at thirty eight or thirty nine. That's kind of where I would have thought he could have maybe been. Guys with that size, that athleticism, like regardless of their lack of polish or whatever, like they're not lasting very long. He wouldn't he wouldn't have gotten out of the 30s. All right. You you asked the question, Sean, when we got on the air. You said, coming into today, who is Tyler Smith of this draft? Mozzie Smith is Tyler Smith of this draft. Because mm-hmm. you think about it last year, what happened whenever the Dallas was on the clock? They had teams calling up trying to come and get Tyler Smith. And they figured that out. They got him to kind of tip the pick, and then they hung up the phone, and they said, we're picking our guy. I don't know if there's a team that actually came up and wanted to go get Mozzie Smith. I doubt that's the case. However, they wanted this guy, and they had they had a debate. That's what our homework's going to be. Who was the debate over? I think I think your head coach is arguing for that tight end he liked. You that's think he was what, arguing for it? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. what I think. So that, do you that's going to be the homework, You though. think things got thrown off when Kincaid got taken? Or no, not, I don't not, think not, not, it, not if Kyle's right that that's their that was their top tight end was Laporta. Do you do you, do you think that Mayer was even in the consideration there for the for the no. in the argument? No, no, I don't think he was. You in feel it. you feel confident saying Laporta was their top tight end? I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I'm, it, I, I would, would I would put eighty percent on it. So I have an eighty percent confidence that that's the case. I would have felt like earlier today it would have been Mayer, but just the more you hear. Talking to folks and how yeah. things have developed, it's like no, it sounds like Laporta. Was I thought last week it was Mayor, first round pick, no doubt about it. But the, like you said, the more you have these conversations, I think Laporta's up there. Well, that makes me feel better because that tells me that their top tight end was there, and they felt like they got the better pick, the better player. Now, look, a lot of people, and I wrote down y'all's board rankings as I'm trying to keep an eye on Goodell announcing Philadelphia. I got you. Go I'm ahead. not Go in the mood. Yeah. For, <laughs> Nolan <laughs> Smith. for Nolan Smith? It's be yeah, Nolan they're not, Smith. they're not going to. Yeah, they're going to take him. Like, it, Well, and how about this? They've got a corner. I mean, do they take a corner? they still got Porter on the board, too. That's interesting, too. Yeah. Why I, Why is he still here? That's yeah. the, my that's, big that, question. That's, that, that needs to be tomorrow. That's my mission to figure out what... what when, you're port- in the, when you're in the room, does that ever like legitimately scare you out of yes. a pick no it doesn't scare you but you're just like you know you passed a guy and you're you know they had the reason for drafting mozzie smith and i don't i don't i don't i have no problem with what they did with uh, mozzie smith uh, they, they need, need the fit they need they need somebody everybody yes. i can't tell you how many twitter questions i get during the year like we can't stop the run yes we can't i mean yes. you know it's like oh well hey well how about how about bohanna how about it took it took making a trade uh, making a trade with the Raiders to get a guy that can, act. and when he went out of the game, what happened? They actually they couldn't stop the run. This guy, I, I, this this was the right thing for them to do. It really, really was. All right, here comes Goodell with the Eagles' second selection of the night after they had Jalen Carter fall to them at nine. Joining me on stage now are some very special guests, oh. content creators who you That's know Mama from Kelsey. YouTube. Do perfect. <laughs> And Jason They're from and Travis's mom, Donna Kelsey. Oh, They're from Dallas. Dude Perfect lives in Frisco. Why are they announcing Philly's pick? Money. That's a good point. He's <laughs> playing in a game on TV at the same time. Right. Hey, Travis is there. Jason's there. How in the world do you decide which game that you're going to watch? Uh, man, I don't know. That's really tough. I don't know. It's just tough to choose. <laughs> we had a feeling that would be the case. So we cooked up something a little bit special for you to help you break the tie. 
Here's the deal. We've got a custom coin with Travis and the Chiefs on one side and Jason and the Eagles on the other. If you're both that explains playing it. at the same time, all you have to do is flip it and it takes the decision out of your hands. Should all right. we try it? Let's okay. try it. It's Travis and the Chiefs! What explains it? They shouldn't be up there for the Eagles pick. Well, it's Travis Kelsey versus Jason Kelsey. They're in Kansas City for the Philly pick. Decision. You can watch both boys at the same. We're doing bids now. You ready to do this? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's see who's going to be joining Jason in the Philadelphia Eagles. With the 30th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Nolan Smith, linebacker, Georgia. I mean, oh man, that one hurts. Aisha. Mm. I'm not. In the, I just told you. It's, I'm not in it's the Georgia of the North. Jordan Davis. Yeah. Then you got Nolan Smith. They got the other linebacker. And then you got Jalen Carter and Nicobe Dean Nicobe from last Dean. year yeah. too. Yeah. The Philly Bulldogs. Wow. They like that Georgia defense. You got. You got to an NFL defense. You got to make us feel good about this one too. I'm I like. I was feel not as better. High, I, I'm not as high on Nolan Smith as other people. I think he's tweener. Like, I mean, he is the. He is between linebacker and pass rusher size and. I mean, he's a good player. I just, I and again, number former number one overall recruit in the country. Yeah. Yep. I just, I think that there are questions about how he's going to play at the next level just because of his size. He had a trouble. He did tear a, a peck in uh, November first, and so he was done for after that. But he lines up in a couple different spots for the Bulldogs. He's a pass rusher edge. He can play linebacker. I didn't think he particularly drops very well. So he's going to be, for the Eagles, hand down, go for the quarterback and all that. He's got a feel for how to work the edges. He puts the blockers in very tough spots. He's got very good quickness. He's explosive off the snap. He gets in the blocker pretty quickly. He can dip the shoulder underneath by working to the quarterback. He can avoid blockers. He's finishing at the quarterback. I think he's got a little power to his game, and I think he's physical in the way he plays. I don't think he's afraid to take blockers off the size because of the lack of his bulk. I think he stands in there. He's got some pop. Uh, but, you know, he plays with two-point stance with his hand on the ground, and I thought he could really cover some ground when chasing the ball, get across the field in a hurry and finish. He was the 21st best player on my board. Yeah. So that's kind of where I had it. I had him at 12, so Philly ends up with the number two and the number 12 player on my board. That's a pretty darn good first day. Wow. No, but you, you mentioned the injuries, Brian. That's probably why he kind of— yeah, I think I, I think people were I think people were worried about like Bobby's saying the the tweener aspect of him. I just to me this was very when the Eagles all the mock drafts and stuff like that, all the mock drafts had him t- going potentially to Philadelphia at ten. I mean that yeah. was I, I remember when we were working we first started the mo- uh, started the drafts or we started the draft show. He was a guy that everybody was mocking at Dallas at at fifty eight. Yeah. And then it's like, damn, he became a 10th overall player. Well, probably was drafted where he should have been drafted. Maybe not at 10, but at 30, you know, is you know, the spot. I know for me, 21, maybe 10 was a little rich. But maybe to you guys, I don't think you, – you guys think he was a better player than that. Yeah, I, I liked Nolan Smith a lot. I think the speed off the edge, you saw that at the Combine, ran one of the fastest defensive lineman times in the 40 as in, in recent memory – I think he's he's going to be the team speed paired with the team power that this Georgia defense has had the last couple of years, and now they all kind of have it back together. The band of Bulldogs up in Philly is going to be interesting to stop. I, I have something to add on Mozzie Smith. Same, same person, same source that told me about Kansas City calling initially, Kansas City and Las Vegas calling. Apparently Kansas City called back after the pick happened. And they said we're gonna we were going up to get Mozzie Smith. Oh, so at some point they were trying to go up and get Mozzie Smith. So you compare it to the Tyler Smith situation from last year. It's very interesting. I'm glad that you brought that up because a lot of Cowboy fans were saying you should have taken that Kansas City call, moved back, still gotten Mozzie. That was their target. That's what that's what it seems like. All right. Yeah. So the, my other follow up is you guys had Smith on your board at 39, 40, and 45. Cowboys took him at 26. So my immediate reaction is, oh, you reached. But because of the lack of D tackles, does that justify it? Because all of a sudden you drop off a cliff in terms of run stuffers in this draft. Where's your next Mozzie Smith type player come in at on your board? Oh, wow. Out of curiosity, uh, if you could work on that. Because to me, Dexter from Florida, 52. Okay. Okay. 
that that would be my next. I know I like Benton from yep. I like Benton from Wisconsin. That would Wisconsin. be my next guy. But I, I don't know if Benton I, Benton might be more of a three than a one. And so, but Dexter uh, Ika from uh, Siaki, Baylor, yeah, Kansas, like yeah, Ika, Siaki, Ika he's at, he's at sixty-two. At, I have at seventy-three. So Dexter from Florida, big guy. I think he's three hundred and nineteen pounds, three hundred eighteen pounds. That's a big guy. And then Ika would be that. 330-pound guy uh, at the one technique at that. But I had him at 73. He's my next guy, too. Ika. So so what do you think about the thought that, hey, because of the drop-off or my next D tackle that fits this need is maybe 10, 11 picks graded later, mm -hmm. let's go and get him now. I have three second-round grades. It's Brian Breesey, Mozzie Smith, and Keona Benton. So – out of the three second-round grades that I have, and I had two first-round grades, Kalijah Kansi and Jalen Carter, out of the three second-round grades, two of them are already gone, and one of them was Mozzie Smith. Right. So I think there is a drop-off. I think there's a considerable drop-off from round one to round three in terms of interior defensive run stuffers, and Smith fit the, the, and, the and billing. If, if you're grading them just on being a run stopper, exactly. not just overall grade, it's a bigger gap than even that. No yes. doubt. And that's the that's the biggest thing is like yeah you could have not waited but some of these guys are pass rush are more upfield pass rushy guys than stopping the run it's evident that they wanted to get a guy that's gonna stop the run. All right, Kansas City. I mean, there's a lot of names that you guys Will have Lutz. gone over <laughs> that 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 are left here. Hendon Hooker, according to Chris Collinsworth. What is the deal? Who? Porter. Yeah. yeah. See that that that's that's my mission on the way home to try and figure that out because. I, I just look in because what I did was I took Dane Brugler's board and I put his his top top 300 with my 210 and Daniel Jeremiah's. Daniel Jeremiah, I, I have him at 9, Dane at 16, Daniel Jeremiah at 23. So something something's not quite right. Uh, there, there with uh, with Joey Porter and what's going on. Maybe, maybe there's some kind of medical thing that we're not. Yeah, I don't know paying. what it is. I mean, we definitely had been hearing buzz he was falling, and I don't know. It doesn't make sense why. Before, did we anticipate it to be this far? Well, I, I did. not me, not no. me. I mean, I never thought he would even make it to 26. Before we there. get to Kansas City's pick in this presser, give me your day two names. And possible day two car, uh, targets for the Cowboys and some positions that have a lot of depth still remaining that they could take advantage of, like tight end, tight end. corner, or the others, Kyle. Uh, Brian Branch, Joey Porter Jr. are the top two names on my list. Drew Sanders, they really like a lot. Uh, then you have the two tight ends, Sam Laporta, Michael Mayer. I have Mayer graded higher. We've talked about it extensively. We, I, I think Sam Laporta is higher on their board. Dewan Jones from Ohio State, if you want to talk about an offensive tackle with some size. Uh, Trenton Simpson, linebacker from Clemson. And then Osiris Torrance and, and uh, Steve Avila are still there, too. So Steve Avila, yeah, th those are up there. You've still got the Tennessee receivers are there. Jalen Hyatt, Hyatt and, and Cedric Tillman. Tillman. Yeah. I think there's going to be a run on those short receivers tomorrow when we start. Well, Tillman's this thing. not that. Yeah. Not, no, not Tillman, but I, I just throwing the short receivers yeah. out there. How do the quote unquote short receivers fit this Mike McCarthy West Coast offense? Well, I think that people would argue with you real quick, Bobby. I think people would say, that's you got Brandon Cooks. Why do you need another short guy? That's what, that's why I think they would argue with you about that, or they would make that point to you. Uh, I mean, Mims is still there, and that's a guy who I think they would think could play inside and outside. So Marvin Mims from Oklahoma is still there. I mean, there, there's likely to be some sort of tight end pushed down to you at this I, point. Right. I could absolutely – we keep bringing up Laporta. Laporta's going to be the pick at 58 if he's there. If he's there. I, 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 if he's I, there, I, yeah. But, yeah. I don't, but I don't know that he gets there. Well, that's they what may saying. go get him. Well, there, there's, there's these tight ends. How many him tight ends are Sanders. still on the board? I mean, you got Musgrave, you got Washington. Well, someone else might view Laporta like them and take – take them before they do i think the league is that crazy no i think the league thinks highly of sam laporta too i don't think the cowboys are alone. give me give me a description of his game real quick we got 40 seconds uh i mean he's an he's an all-around player i again i've talked about mayor specifically i think is a better player uh as an all-around tight end but you talk about sam laporta he was the offense for iowa yeah. uh he led the team in in receptions in 21 guy. and 22 they ran behind him they had a willingness from an offensive standpoint to let him lead the way both on outside blocks and on the inside zone runs and i, I think there's a, an ability for him 
to, to get better as uh, an athletic tight end. He's not that overly athletic guy. But, man, as a blocker, he would be the best blocking tight end. He'd probably be the best receiving tight end that the Cowboys have on the roster, too. And just to close out this hour, Clark Hunt is taking the Super Bowl trophy out there uh, for the Chiefs selection. Let's hear it. Mm -hmm. How about it, Kansas City? With the 31st pick of the 2023 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Felix and Udike Uzama. Cowboys post-draft presser coming up. This is the 2023 NFL Draft on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com. All right, we good on Cowboys.com still? All right, we're still on Cowboys.com, so we had to get out on the radio side. Yeah. Uh, who did the Chiefs just select? Took a defensive end from Kansas State is who they took. Kyle, you're really good with these. Felix, Felix on Udike Uzama. That there was zero it. chance Brian was going to say that. There's no <laughs> chance. The dude's a hell of a football player, though. He really, really is. I know I say that a lot. But when you watch him, uh, 255 pounds – and let me get to my notes here real quick, unless somebody's got it pulled up, uh, ready yeah. to roll. Go ahead there, um, scout lady. Super high motor. Um, he can slide across the defense, and uh, he has a. I think he has a pretty open toolbox. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he plays with a lot of effort. He uses his arms well to create separation between um, between the offensive lineman and himself. And also, too, he fires off the ball pretty fast as well. Um, he's he's an athlete, athlete, athlete. I had him and had him early second round, but. Go ahead, Chiefs. Go off. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. They, they, I'll tell you what. That Nice job by the Chiefs. 6'3", 255. This kid never stops. No, he doesn't. Motor. He's crazy strong motor in the way he plays. He never gives up on the play. Super active, relentless in the way he does play. He does a great job of coming off the ball. He attacks blockers on his first step. Explosive ability to work underneath the blocker and close the quarterback. Shows the skill to quickly redirect on the play. He get up the field, work back to close. He'll knock the ball out of the quarterback's hands. You see a share of double team blocks during the game. I, I, he has a feel for how to split those double team blocks in order to get to the football. I don't think he plays like a slight or a light player at all. I think he's got some power to handle the runs right at him. He's not going to get knocked around in the running game. He really hustles to make plays. He'll chase the ball from the other side of the field like Aisha was talking about. He can line up. He can play either side as a rusher and still make things happen. I love the bend and the effort. I think he's a really tough kid. He had a 21% pass rush win rate. That's that new analytic stuff for you from PFF. But 21%, that means a fifth of the time he won his battle and he won so in a big way. So I, I think in the backfield, I, a little bit of a reach for me, but if you want a fifth-year option on a motor-heavy edge rusher that you feel like can add some some leverage to your defense, then go for it. I, I'm, I'm right there. Go off, as Aisha would say, <laughs> in terms of Kansas City. Go get your fifth-round option. So the highest-graded players I have left as we head into day two, Joey Porter Jr., mm -hmm. which something's off, uh, Will Levis, Luke Musgrave, Brian Branch. By the Drew way, Sanders. let me say something. Aisha, great job on Will Levis. You know, you you, you had an idea where the guy really should be, and I, I, you know, I know myself. I put him in the top ten. I, you know, Dane had him at fourteen. Daniel Jeremiah at twelve. I think there was maybe a lot of hype there for the kid and all that. I still think he's a tough kid. He's played a lot of snaps, but congratulations for you for having a vision of the player and where he potentially can end up on the board. That's what you got to have. You got to have scouts that are willing to step up and say, "This ain't a first round cat. He's a, he's a second round cat." And you did a good job with that. You really did. Thank you. What's up, Bobby? Porter Levis, Musgrave, Branch Sanders. That's the top of guys I have left. No, oh, actually. Mine's about the same. I have Brian Branch, Joey Porter, Dewan Jones, Drew Sanders. I'm going to say Porter, uh, uh, Will Levis we talked about. Meyer would be my next guy right there. Brian Branch, Jalen Hyatt, Drew Sanders, B.J. Ojolari, Osiris Torrance, Luke Musgrave, uh, Steve Avia, Trenton Simpson, the linebacker, and Darnell Washington. I'm kind of getting down right now to about 38, uh, 37 on my players right there. Yeah, I have Porter, Levis, Musgrave, Branch, Sanders. They're all kind of clustered together, and then there's a pretty steep drop, and then it's Ojolari. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. All right, so we are standing by. I think the uh, 
the front office is about to give the press conference to explain what happened. I can't wait to hear what took place if they, I mean, if they indeed had a debate back and forth. Dan Quinn was in that room early. Yeah. And then we saw McCarthy, Stephen, McClay, and then we saw the defensive line coach, yeah, Arden Dirt, come in. Yeah. Dirty. Dirty? Dirty. Dirty. Adden that, Dirty. That's even better. Dirty. Awesome dude. Dirty. Uh, so, look, uh, you guys, fantastic. I'm not going to be here tomorrow, throughout the rest of the weekend. Uh, Let us know how that brisket goes. You snatched that tie <laughs> off, huh? Heck yeah. You said I couldn't take it no more. I know more. Kyle I said, you want to stay uh, until after the presser? I said, what? Are you at your I'm mind? All about, you I'm crazy? all about content. I'm sorry. I want what's best for the fans. <laughs> a snack. Well, you'll be here. No, I'm going to write an article But instead, no, in all so seriousness, you are machines. Uh, I tell the wife throughout the rest of the weekend, just go, take the little man, and I put up DallasCowboys.com, and I just watch it over the national coverage because you localize it, tied to the Cowboys. Uh, you've done all the homework, and uh, you all deserve the praise for it because – You've, uh, I, I really think it's been revolutionized from a local radio standpoint and brought us. You're the one most responsible, along with whoever started it here in the building. Derek and Eagleton. You just keep and, growing yeah, them. Yeah. You keep growing all the future scouts. Yeah, Ed Cahill. Ed guys. Cahill's watching tonight, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Ed, thank you for everything. David Hellman's Ed, watching tonight. Yeah, I love you too, Dave. You're oh, a big part you, of the team. You suck, Dave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, by the way, Sean and RJ need you in the morning as a guest. Uh, the, <laughs> in but, two hours. Let me say this, though. And, and, you know, I know you're with us on the first night. Thank you for coming in a quarterback yeah. and did a great job. And uh, we'll pick up uh, Kyle Yeomans. Kyle Yeomans pick up. So here we go. Let's go to the presser. Just to start off, uh, what did you like about Myers? It seemed like you had a number of options. We thought you had a number of options there. And what tip the scale toward it? Stephen, why don't you lead us off here? What's that? Why don't you lead us off here? On Mozzie? Yeah. Yeah, I think we were, uh, we did have options. And, uh, you know, we had a bunch of players rated, you know, right at, or not a bunch, two or three guys that were rated the same. And so we had a really good debate over who was the best guy for us. And, you know, we, you know, mainly between big men, but Mozzie obviously brings, you know, an element to our run game, stopping the run uh, that, you know, other than Hankins, we don't have. So we just felt like a great fit for us. And, uh, you know, really did something that, uh, you know, makes us a better defense at the end of the day. Michael Gelkin, Dallas Warren News. What impact does Mozzie have on the rest of the defense when he can give you more early down success in terms of feeding into the strength of your defense, which is your pass rush, more opportunities that come from stopping the run? I mean, really clearly the focus when you look at, you know, when you go through evaluation postseason, it was clearly that, you know, we wanted to, improve our run defense. So uh, it was a focal point, and I think this clearly clearly does it. I mean, we love everything about Mozzie. He was here on the 30 visits. Um, you know, personnel guys, everybody had high grades on him. He's a great fit for us. Um, but this, you know, strength of our, one of, one of our many strengths, you know, we take the ball away, pass rush. Um, we just want to get better on earlier downs, and we think this is an excellent fit for us. Todd. Todd Archer with ESPN. In the past, you guys not taken defensive tackles if they didn't have pass rush. What was that put him over the top, and does he have the ability to have some pass rush? I think that's a correct uh, difference in uh, uh, philosophically. Uh, this defense, the way we've got it structured, uh, a key player with that much lead, uh, that much base, that much strength, uh, that much. Uh, 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 disruption just from the uh, from that standpoint, as opposed to let's say the number of uh, sacks he gets, uh, that kind of thinking, uh, you wouldn't have seen that from us uh, ten years ago, nine years ago, and uh, but uh, this isn't something we thought of on the draft board of tonight. It's something that has been in the making for, uh, frankly, well, a couple of years, and uh, so because of the structure of this defense and Mike's uh, uh, really philosophy with how we want to uh, uh, handle our complimentary football, as he says, uh, this pick uh, became uh, the, the player and the style play and the way he plays became more valuable 
I'm simply comparing it to if I'd been sitting there 10 years ago for the Cowboys. Calvin Watkins, Dallas one News. Obviously, you guys get phone calls all the time. Teams in the division made some trades. How close were you guys to maybe moving up or even moving down? Well, I, I, we had to tr uh, turn down well, uh, right before we picked after having the discussions regarding uh, 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 the player and just uh, going over, you notice we took all the time. And the main reason was that uh, for the full time we were talking, we had a trade that we could take, might have taken, hanging uh, with uh, a couple of rebuttals to that as we were getting. So as we made this pick, we had trades in works. Will, can you go into detail of just Bossy's traits the strengths that you see here here well I think is uh, we've set up here you know Mike's talk when he's come in here he's talked about building a bigger stronger faster football team uh, we've continued to do that and when you look at Mizi you have a guy teams run the football now as you see things change and you look at our division a guy that can stop that a guy that can add that value to our defense as well as I think there's ability for him to be able to rush the passer you watch the Michigan tape he's playing the flat stance doesn't get after the passer well you change things up you put him with Dan and AD and within our defense not only can he stop the run but we feel like there's upside in rushing the passer as well and you know being a disruptive force how much did you consider the tight ends? I know you, you know the Porter and Meyer was there, and then you said the edge rushers, I think Bracey and and uh, Brace and Nola Smith were there. How much did you consider that? And and, and you came back to this one style. Uh, that's there. tactical for uh, with tomorrow ahead of us and the next day ahead of us. So I'm going to be watching what we say here. Last year I showed you the damn draft board. And <laughs> I, I barely got back in the building by training camp. He's I was barred. I was, I was barred. I was barred from the building. So, uh, uh, so much for that. But uh, so I'm not going to give you the draft board this time. Here. Right, but it was an opportunity to to, to to make an offensive pick, and you went defense here. Just. Again, you know, this reinforces what you guys are talking about. Yeah, and 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 let's be a little uh, uh, careful there. Uh, uh, the that wasn't the angst that you might have thought it would be as whether uh, offense or defense with this pick. It, it uh, 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 we've done we did a lot of defense in the past. I mean, the last two years, but still, that uh, was not an issue of. Offense or defense, it got down. Fortunately for us, player to player, player the specifics of a player. Mike or Stephen, you might yeah, want definitely. To I, I know. I know. That. When we went home last night, even again this morning, we we were right where we wanted to be, as far as who we were talking about the the body type that we were looking for. So, this is an excellent, excellent pick for us. And I do believe depth that you know other positions play into your strategy too. Yeah. Uh, the last time y'all drafted a defensive tackle in the first round was Russell Maryland. Is this something that you feel like it, and obviously that kind of helped jumpstart a couple of Super Bowls there? Is this the kind of thing you feel like it do it again? Well, I'll tell you this, pretty fair with Russell Maryland. He played there at Miami at the time. And uh, so, and we used a number one pick on him at the time. And uh, got a lot of flack for over, over picking at that time. Russell was undersized at the time and uh, of course he had a great career here uh, may I don't know that he's still number one in character and quality and he's turned out to be that way 33 years later but uh, hopefully we got a player of that kind of uh, quality or the, those kind of characteristics there this uh, uh, Russell's different a different guy Russell's uh, uh, was a gapper gapper type player and uh, uh, in that sense as far as the the type of player these guys are uh, but uh, uh, we uh, we were walking out the door uh, yesterday uh, I had him and he goes Ozzy yesterday so um, we this was kind of some things that worked that way for us Pat 
gentlemen, Patrick Walker, DallasCowboys.com, and this question is for any and or all of you. How exciting is it to be in a position where only a few months ago you guys needed to upgrade your run defense, but now sitting here today you have both Jonathan Hankins and Mozzie Smith going for I think it's a great point. I mean, I think it just clearly points in a direction and the vision that we have, and, and uh, th th these acquisitions have been right on time. I mean, it, th our defensive – uh, deep, you know, our defensive production last year was outstanding. Um, I, I know when you look at the way we take the ball away, we, you know, we just felt as a whole we just wanted to improve in that area. And, uh, and I think we've definitely hit the target. Uh, guys, I know you're here to talk about Mozzie mostly, but uh, if you're remiss, I didn't mention the Eagles draft tonight and picking the two guys on the defensive line. Just curious what your take is on that and how that stacks up against the division as well. And for any of you. Good, Will. It looks like something. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think they. I mean, we pick them. You coach them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've never personally. I, you know, I, I've never really sweated with the other teams. I mean, you know, we all recognize players that we like, and you know, coaches and personnel uh, guys. Uh, we we fall, you know, we fall in love with a lot of these guys. So we, you know, they're good picks. The other teams, but yeah, I, I've never really sweated um, with the other guy. With the other guy that takes. Michael Parsons, there was a video of him jumping for joy after this pick was announced. How is this going to help Micah take this leap, uh, not just for the near future, but really the long-term impact of his career? Yeah, I mean, I, you look at our pass, our pass rushes. You know, we we feel we have an elite pass rush group, and you know, just the fact of the matter, when your run defense improves, obviously you got some longer down the distances, with, which you know tilts the field, you know, towards our pass rush. In Dallas, Stephen, there's always that talk about drafting for need slash going for what you have on the board. You guys have talked about the board being the most important thing leading up to it. Did you kind of feel like those two things aligned in this that you were able to address a need while still sticking to the board and, and your top player available? Absolutely. As I said, we had you know three or four guys there that were in discussion at the top of our board, and they all fit. They all matched up, and you know it worked out well. As we said, we were talking about Mozzie at length all week as a guy who would be in that range and Mike could be there when we pick. So, you know, I, I do think it aligned. I mean, there's other, you know, a lot of things go into the equation. We had other other players that were in the mix, but there might be depth in the draft at that position. All those things come into play as you ultimately bring your consensus together to, you know, make the best pick for our team at that point. Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com. Um, what were the conversations like with Dan Quinn coming into the draft about Mozzie Smith, and how fired up was he about the pick? Uh, Dan, and I mean the whole, you know, the defensive line. I mean, you know, everybody's fired about Mozzie. Mozzie made a huge impression on all of us, you know, on, on his thirty visit. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, like I said, there's there's some anticipation on this selection, so everybody's ecstatic. I'm sure you'll have a chance to talk to Dan at some point. Well, where do we have uh, Mozzie on our board? I'm not going to give him the damn good board. <laughs> he was on the board in a position for us to pick at 26. Uh -huh. Okay, 14. 14. <laughs> <laughs> now we're I think he was 13 or 14. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Yeah, right there. Right there. Just because you said it don't make it so, right? What? Just because you said it don't make it so, right? Well, I didn't give you the draft board. <laughs> <laughs> but he was. He was, uh, he was not that high. Was, it's 13 or 14. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Man, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> really, really, we got him. That. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, Michael, you can see tonight. Can you go into a little more detail about that 30 visit and what the impression was from getting that time? Well, I, I just think like anything. I mean, you know, I've been I've been around the league, you know, a few different organizations. I, I think Will and the way, the way it's set up, um, the interaction that you have not only at night when they come in and the individual meetings that each each coach has, and I mean, they 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 run. It's a car wash now. I mean, it, every every one of those guys <laughs> that come through here. I mean, it's as detailed as a as a as a visit that I've ever been a part of. So, but yeah, I mean, you can see the character, and we have. 
chance to talk through the, you know, the things that he went through in his career. I like everything about him. I, I like the way he was coached. I like where he's coming from. I like the way he plays. I think this guy is an outstanding fit for our, for our locker room and for our run defense. And we know everything, everything, everything uh, about uh, his background. And uh, I mean, that's part of the deal. And so everything, and we wanted it. All righty. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!